Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're watching around the world. Welcome, my friends, to the second day of the PUBG America Series 3. My name's Toffees. I got some new faces here. We changed them out from last night. I got Porosaurus over there. And for the first time at PAS, Nobody cares it about is me. Gibson. I, I care about <laughs> you, but not as much. They kids do care about the Gibbs. The Gibbs, you've asked for them. We have delivered. Gibson, welcome to the show. What are you excited about tonight, my friend? I'm excited to be actually on camera now so you can't haze me anymore. I've been hazed horribly over the over the last hour and a half, but it's just good to be here. You know, as someone who's been watching the America scene for the last two, three years, to finally get the chance to bring the action means a lot. Well, I mean, we like having you here. I'm excited to hear what we get into once the games start. But before the games start, we got to run through all the housekeeping, all the stuff that you need to know. But I can tell you, the first game is going to be starting in about 13 minutes. So if you hate our talking want to grab a drink, that's fine. But if you'd like to stick around <laughs> and learn what's going to be happening today, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to show you the formats. Those are all be up in a second. But I'm going to start by asking Poro. You got to watch a little bit yesterday. It's day two of the tournament. What are you looking for, for from these teams? Or what are you excited to see in game today? Uh, I mean, I think yesterday was the story of the... the uh, the teams that we weren't expecting a lot coming in, you know, we're expecting you have the teams that you, uh, it's like the recycled rosters of a whole bunch of players and like, maybe it'll work this time, maybe it won't. Well, yesterday it seemed like it was working pretty well. Uh, and so some of our big name teams that maybe we we're expecting to come in and just jump out to a big lead didn't do it. So it kind of opens a door here for B and C today to really, especially B to really kind of cement themselves uh, a spot. That's a great point, Gibson. When we talk about the B, A, B, C, this idea of running back-to-back mm -hmm. -back for B, do you see that as an advantage for them to go ahead and get it all out of the way, or do you think this is a big disadvantage that they have to sit there tomorrow and just watch? It depends on the mindset of the team. For the Group okay. B teams that started well yesterday, they cannot wait to get back into the action today. But if things went badly yesterday, you're thinking, hmm, maybe we wouldn't mind a night off to decompress, to watch back the VOD, to see what we did right and what we did wrong. But I think that... It is rough, like it is going to be a nervy day tomorrow, particularly for those teams that are sitting around that cost mark when you can cannot impact the game whatsoever. But as a professional player, you know that if you go out of any tournament, it's on you. It's you're the, you're the guys that left all everything and left some stuff out there. So look, just go do your job today. And if, the, if you do your job well, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. It's a conversation we've had a million times with players who are like, that last circle, we got screwed in the last game. And you look at mm -hmm. them and you say, any point during the previous 11, you could have picked up something somewhere. Okay. That said, I that. think that B, what did you say, boss? Oh, I was going to say, they know that. They, they, yeah, I mean, they do. I think they're just lying to themselves. It's not so much the players as it is the the, the fans. But yeah, like the, <laughs> the, 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 the players know. Like, there's uh, You get 12 opportunities, right? Or however many opportunities 18 opportunities 18 opportunities and so and the upside of the format right now we'll go over with you guys is this is the group stages the top eight teams they advance to the grand final boom done dusted on their way congratulations now the bottom 16 that doesn't mean they're out of it they go to the last chance qualifier because this is such a big event whoever the top three teams are coming out of this get bits not one but two global events mm -hmm. they need to have that chance to perform so we believe that last chance qualifier will open the door for some of those teams to sort of get their feet back under them and maybe see a future option for them that said whoever gets through those will go to the grand final uh, where it will be three days 18 matches as Poro just said of absolutely barn burner America's PUBG action which I think we can say Gibson it may be some of the most exciting or at least fun to watch PUBG out there in my opinion honestly any PUBG where you've actually got the risk of elimination is always the best type of PUBG and the America's teams do it really fun I always feel like the teams from South America, when you get into those last chance qualifiers, are the ones that kind of throw caution to the wind mm. that little bit more because they've got this real sense of, you know, continental pride. Like, they do mm. make it very much South America against North America. I think, though, that next weekend is going to be a lot of fun because you know it as well as I. Some mm -hmm. teams are just a little bit complacent on the first weekend because they're like, hey, we've got two lives complacency but there's also that aspect of some of them haven't played for like four months right so there is that rust shake off uh patina is not good when it comes down to PUBG esports now let's talk about the points if you're new and you're joining us for the first time it's relatively simple uh 10 points for first it goes down from there and then you get one point per kill yesterday poor i was fascinated we didn't see as many denies as i'm used to seeing we saw players really going for those kills like richard bisler could have done a deny and went for a kill instead and cost 
gave two points to an opponent. Do you think that's just because of the complacency, or do you think some teams just have that killer mentality where they don't want to deny points? Uh, I mean, I think it's a little, it's a little bit of both, but I think right now, I, I think you'll definitely see it start being more of a thing towards the later rounds. But right now in the group stage, throw caution to the wind, man. If you think you can get an extra point off of it, if you think you can maybe pull off the highlight real play, especially if you're a guy like Richie B, uh, you know, the, go for it. Why not? Yeah. Right? It's the group stage. If, if mm -hmm. things don't work out, you at least have the last chance qualifier still. There's true, and some teams will argue that the last chance qualifier, if you believe you can get the top eight without a problem, it's nice to be less like off game when you go into the grand finals. We'll see what happens. To prize pool, it's what they're playing for. $12,000 for first place at the end of this. But for me, Gibson, the biggest takeaway is those PGC points. With less chances to get them this mm -hmm. year, especially if you don't make it to the globals, everyone, every single point is going to matter here in regionals. Yeah, it's the PGC points. If you look at the end of the year, these teams are like, yeah, we won PAS. But the main thing is we had a chance to play at the end of the year to become world champions. I know as a player, I wouldn't even look at the prize pool. It would just be those PGC points. Mm -hmm. And I think for the more experienced teams, you know, the likes of STK, the likes of SSG, Sonics, Falcons, they'll all be focused 100% on those PGC points. Absolutely. Uh, Poro, I mean, you've you've gotten to watch the PAS I in the past many, many times. See teams that maybe slow start those PGCs. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's kind of mm -hmm. weird this year, though, with only the two regionals. Is there a lot of places for teams that don't make the top three to pick up additional points? I mean, it, it, look, you got you got PAS three, you got the, the Esports World Cup, you got mm. PAS four. The, 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 the problem is, is that you know right off the bat if you don't qualify for uh for uh pgs mm -hmm. three and four your year it's like half of your year is gone yeah right so it's like you know they're, they may not be feeling the pressure of it just yet but once that lcq hits and once the grand finals hit man that that's where it's really gonna you're really gonna feel it like if we don't get where we need to be we we're gonna be sitting at home again for another couple of months yeah, and I think that that is, has been the feedback that I have been getting the most from players over and over that didn't get to PGC is that break was brutal. And that is, it's almost like the punishment for not making the cut is that you have to somehow drive yourself to be willing. And I know you've watched scrims, so you might recognize a little bit of this, Gibson. They have to they have to motivate themselves to be there every night and, and play like it's a competitive match because sometimes the wheels come off and scrims definitely are not games. You know what I mean? Oh, it 100% is. Like, teams go in there looking to practice certain things. As I was kind of saying before we started, the real thing that scrims teach you is which players are on form. But when it comes to macro play, teams are going to go out there and try different things. So you cannot build the picture of the year based on scrims. Like, I'll, I'll give an example. Before Sonics went ahead to win one of the PGSs last year, they weren't performing overly well in scrims, but they won the whole event. So mm. you cannot take everything off the back of that. But... As you pointed out, the big one is going to be that break. If you yeah. don't qualify for P PGS, the next two of them, you're at home for months with mm. nothing to look forward to whatsoever. And the big thing I want to point out is if you're with an org, that org might not hang around. You've already seen right. GG have left already. They didn't qualify for PEC. They're already out of PUBG again. Mm. Like it is cutthroat if you don't make it the esports wild west but let's take a look at the groups we'll get more into what's going on with the teams individually in just a second yesterday we watched a and b take the field that's why they have points over there for those of you who might be joining us for the first night b and c take the field today so i will warn you as you watch the live feed today you are going to see that scoreboard on the left side it's going to feel like some of these teams are not very good because they don't have very many points, but give them time. I expect them to climb those lawyer boards very, very quickly. And let's get into teams that maybe, let's start with one that climbed yesterday that looked really, really good. And I'm loving what I'm seeing from this sort of cerebral team. It's Gas Cans, Poro. Talk to me about these guys. Yeah, I really like this new roster from Gas Cans. Uh, you know, you, you throw in the fact that you got Adam uh, and Penta back together, mm -hmm. and also the fact that they got Adam's brother Dids uh, mm -hmm. over there coaching, you know, uh, Faze Dids for the longest time. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a guy who knows his way around. But then you throw in, uh, you throw in Richie B, who is uh, one of the, I think, a fantastic young guy. Every, every mm -hmm. tournament I see Richie play, it seems like he gets, he gets his head around the meta 
more th- uh, to, to catch up with his mechanical prowess which is obviously just pretty nuts but um I- i'm really excited to see how gas cans continue to play this out to see if they keep that aggressive posture if they, they keep that aggressive stance uh, because I, I mean they looked really good yesterday obviously they really really did now let's talk about group c for a second gibson what team do you think you- have you been excited to watch when it comes to group c taking the field today I think the whole world is looking at STK in the Americas and I can't wait to see what they're going to do. Like you spoke about Adam and Penta. They were part of the STK roster, which Mm -hmm. you can openly speak Mm -hmm. to them about. They will say that was a failure. So I had a long chat with them. Believe it or not, Luke 12 and Sparking came at the same time. They didn't have Luke and then Sparking fell on their lap. No, they spoke to both players, got them locked in. And the reason why I'm so excited about STK right now is what sparking brings is mm-hmm. that old-fashioned esports entry type player when kurt needs someone to make a play when they need to make a push on a team you can guarantee that sparking nine times out of ten will get that opening knock that you need to up the aggression mm-hmm. and i'm gonna lie like kurt's playing like a like a 30 year old now instead of a 65 year old like he is so Shoot. you know we're, ha- we're happy i don't, for I don't know why i got ageism up in here old man gibson <laughs> uh, i will also say i talked to sparking last night and he asked how he's feeling he said honestly the thing he's most excited about is that he doesn't feel like he's been able to truly play competitive PUBG the way that he wants to in a while and i think that he feels agree with that mm-hmm. exactly and he feels great with this team and so that to me is what really could be the turn up when you've got a player who has the skill and the pedigree of sparking and is now excited and hungry because he's sort of been in this weird sort of bench float i don't even know what's been going on it, that is big news to me also i think luke being able to cut loose and just do luke things is going to be Quite a bit of fun to watch. So I'm looking for them today. Now, what else we're going to be looking at is the map rotation. Remember, it's not just Miramar and Arangel like the old days. We're adding in those wild cards of Tego and Vikendi. And on top of that, something not on here is that we are rotating servers. For the first time ever in PAS, every other game we played on a North American and a South American server to make it as fair as possible for the teams coming from different regions. It didn't seem to have a massive impact yesterday, but it is definitely worth telling you guys about because there has been some discussion of how does this affect it. For players who are maybe, you know, let's be honest, Poro, half of the players for some of our NA teams are coming from Europe, uh, and that Mm -hmm. can be a pretty big ping disadvantage if you're Northern Canadian going down to SA, so on and so forth. So we will keep an eye on that. I don't think it's going to be a huge impact, but it is unique. Schedule-wise, 5 p.m., we're kicking off uh, today here at Match 7, and then we're going to be running through Match 12. So six games all in a row, and then our final day of play will start tomorrow. Our first game kicks off in about a minute and 30 seconds. I'm pretty hyped about that. We're going to get you guys back here on the screen. Now, I want to go into a little more of a dig about maybe teams that some of our uh, America's viewers aren't as familiar with or maybe have some new branding. So, Poro, as you looked at the list of who's taking the field today, is there another team that you're keeping your eye on or you're interested in telling our viewers about? Yeah, so I I definitely want to keep my eye on Bestia. Uh, mm-hmm. So this is your your uh, South American. Uh, they they kind of they didn't have to go through the open qualifiers. They got the invites in be, uh, based off of I think it was old work with the Fiumba, I believe, is uh, Draft King and uh, and Pippa, uh, and then they brought on Sills and they brought in Sharp Shot, which I thought was really interesting. So Sharp Shot, look, man, this is the book's been written on Sharp Shot in america for a very long time right like it's it always felt like we were always expecting more from him and you know he would he would show on some highlight real plays and he would put up some crazy numbers and then just disappear for long periods of time and it's always it just keeps feeling like like obviously he's a great guy to play with right roth played with him for forever and he stays on teams but it's just whatever whatever the mix has been of players around him has just not worked out for him mm-hmm. up until this point so i'm excited to see if maybe if if bestia this this roster with pippa draft king and sills and uh which are all i mean mm-hmm. crazy good players in their own right if if mm-hmm. adding a sharp shot into that i, I want to see what they bring to the table that's going to be real fun to watch this is i think you're dead on with sharp shot and this is what i love about sharp shot he is even keeled you know what you're going to get with him. Uh, he doesn't seem to sort of flip out or get mad at big personalities. He just kind of mm-hmm. sits back in his chair and does his job. And I think 
the biggest problem that we saw from that bestia roster in their last iteration is there were just a lot of personalities and they even told us at one of the events like we just we're gonna try to make it work because we know we've made it work in the past and when a team starts with that mentality i think you're going to a bad place so Bringing in a player like Sharp, who's super even killed, I think is huge. And now we're going to bring you guys into game hey. number one of B versus C. It's the Dusty Dunes of Miramar. We're about to get underway. The drop is happening. And I'm going to stay with you for just a couple of minutes while we watch the drop play out because I wanted to have a chance to talk to you, Gibson, about maybe, for new viewers, a team that you should keep your eye on that could possibly have some big upsides or could at least be very interesting. I think Rats will be a pretty good fun, uh, pretty fun team to watch, right? Despoon, Grant Lantis, Gats, yeah. and Shun. Mm -hmm. They they qualified pretty easily through the round of 16. I think a lot of people have seen the clip of them denying to get another team kicked out on that <laughs> final day. But they're very, very dangerous, right? When you look at the players they have, I've been waiting on Grant to make the next step for a long time, and he finally has. And when you've got someone like Gats in there too, who's got that killer instinct, they're going to be aggressive. That aggression will catch them out sometimes, but they're not the type of team that'll go, oh, wait, that's, you know, that's Elevate or that's Falcons. We're not going to take the fight. They don't care who's in the kill feed. If they think they can win, they're going to push it. I like that. And I think that that's what we, it kind of works in the groups is this idea of taking those fights and pushing them early. That's what I saw watching yesterday a lot, Poro. It seemed like teams were really focusing mm -hmm. on, and, and this makes sense, right? Getting those points early when you can, maybe losing one if you knew you could pick up three. Uh, some good risk management. Is that just a group unique thing or is that something that you generally see all the time? I mean, I think that's that's something that you see specifically in group stage, right? Like you can get away with a lot more right now like you you can take try to take those high risk high reward plays and uh and chances are they'll pay off for you right in, in this in this particular phase just because it's a you know comparatively to what we're going to see in the grand finals a weaker lobby right so but the question is do you do you try to do you get too used so used to doing that stuff in this and then whenever you try to do it in the grand finals get punched in the mouth you got to have a response right so you you have to have you know you have to have an idea of what you're going to do just in case that first thing doesn't work out but we'll we'll see what they what they come out with though I, i'm I, I think all of these guys like you said everybody in this lobby's been here forever man yep <laughs> Now, somebody who's not been here forever, as we look at the Falcons, Gibson, I, people asked yesterday, why aren't, why weren't the Sonics trying to get this yesterday? They seem like they were off a different direction. Are you hearing, like, is this Falcons' new spot? Are they going to try to do this internationally? Is this just a well, weird one-off? I am yeah. so happy that you asked me this because I know the answer 100% because yeah, I've spoken so to I. both teams. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> basically, after the way the last few years have gone, Sonics wanted to change things up, right? Team 17, teams like that, they're going to hot drop Sonics all day long. So they decided they wanted to take Minas. So because they're a global partner team, they went to Falcons and went, hey, we want Minas. And Falcons, because they're not a global partner team, had to kind of bite their tongue and say, mm -hmm. okay, because they cannot take the risk of ruining their event to hot drop with Sonics. Like, it's not worth their time. And do you know what? The best thing is... Flood's actually saying that with Mime on the team, that Falcons are really loving dropping inside of Picado now. Hmm. That's good. I mean, that's the insights that maybe uh, you get from a team that's been there for so long. Uh, did you want to add anything to that, Poor? I, I know that you have a special spot in your heart for the Sonics. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that they, I think that hopefully they have something other than just meanness. I mean, I think talking to Gunner, even back in the STK days, they, they, having a set drop spot going into international competition all the time is a bad idea because you just never know who you're going to have to square up with you never know who you're going to have to fight for it if they're going to leave you alone if they're going to troll you uh you, having the ability to have multiple drop spots all over the map uh, and be able to play from anywhere is something that you absolutely have to do if you want to have success at international level and gunner understands that he understood mm -hmm. it with stk and he understood it with sonics so I, i'll be interested to see if they actually do stick with uh, that oh, no. uh, all the way oh you hate to see it it, well, it he recovered and then it's it fine. It's fine. yeah he's yeah. good i mean he's that's good. He's good. It, it all works out. STK, uh, the new roster. Uh, my hope as I watch them is that the changeup has removed the circle Teflon from this team. And maybe they can catch <laughs> a couple of shifts uh, and sort of make that play work for them. As we check in with Ace's crew, it looks like we might have our first contact with Zelot doing a little bit of scouting here. 
Yeah, you can just see Psycho in the distance for 55 esports, and Zealot's a player that I think is, is going to go has gone under the radar a little bit over the last 12 months, but he's a very good player. you got Finna in there as the IGL. But they're scouting out this compound, but they got to be careful because I just spotted STK are rotating in right behind them as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious as to what STK is going to do here. This is, uh, this is a team that likes to spread out or has liked to spread out in the past, but it looks like they're playing it pretty close to the vest right now, especially since they're dead center circle. Uh, I think they realize that they have the opportunity to get some really high value terrain here. And uh, and looks like that's what they're going to focus on. So future, a little bit spread out as well, but it sounds like uh, it's mostly just shooting long range, peacocking maybe a little bit, Gibson, just letting everybody know where they're at. Yeah, it's like the, you know, beware of dog sign. You make as yep. much noise as you possible and people stay away. I think still so for be a future. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, sometimes they're the scariest ones, right? Like, sometimes. Let's be, You're let's not be wrong. real. Your ankles, will get, your ankles will get all bloodied up and you, you don't even know <laughs> yeah. what happened. But future need a better day, right? Yesterday's three points. It it was rough if you're a future fan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what it, it's everybody has those days, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, oh, unfortunately, you know, three points in one day is, is not a, not everybody has days that bad, but everybody has bad <laughs> days, and you have to try to you have to try to recover from it. I think that's all you can do at this point in your future. And just keep in mind, hey, we still got the LCQ. You know, we're we're not out of it yet. Let's try to see if we can fix uh, the problems that we had yesterday. Yeah, get some momentum going. Bestia rotating into the circle as well as they come from the north, past Cantera. Again, I agree with you. I think this is going to be one of the most exciting teams to watch. They got rid of Capitan and Emmy, which it was to me was a shock. That's but some when big you... players, man. Yeah. And look, they were you could argue they were right because the team that Capitan and Emmy moved to didn't qualify for here, and they did. Yep. Can't argue with the results. Shots coming through. Luke's going to go down. Sparky gets taken low, but he will find Denimon. And uh, again, the problems for Aces. I know Aces crew was... Uh, a big name that kept coming up with Cammy and Godspeed yesterday. A little bit surprised at uh, how poorly they were doing. Well, Jam's going to come up, though. He's going to find Sparky. And now STK, remember how we were talking about how they were right on top of each other? Looks like Kurt and Alo should be there to provide support before the flushes come through. Yeah, it's a 3v2, but it's all about how quickly STK can get aggression going. Kurt, I've always said, is one of the best players in the world when it comes to utility usage. They're going to smoke out Sparking. Luke 12, in my opinion, is a goner now. He's put a good timer put on him. Sparking has as well. And that's a oh, great lead by Finna. I don't know what they were thinking going for that. You can't smoke that out. And you got to know that you're going to get naded. I mean, it's just... That's the easiest nade that Aces crew have ever had to throw. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 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 a curious decision on uh, on the part of STK right there, sending both alive guys down there. I would have thought you know one go for the res maybe, but one stay on that high ground at least to try to distract them and not give them the three or the the free nade. But well, that's how that's how it plays out. And STK, given all the success they had in the open qualifier run, they come in here and fall a little flat in game number one. Game number one, no points for them, but hey, they've got plenty more to go for. They're in Group C. They've got time. tomorrow as well. Time. Aces crew, though, they needed those points. That puts them up to 11. And being real, the cutoff is probably well into the 60s, maybe even 70s if you want to qualify through. 55 Esports, though, I'm looking at this team. And obviously, you can't take scrims as the Bible, right, when it comes to performance. Mm -hmm. But they have had some very up and down moments like i feel like they're a team with a high ceiling but they really need to raise that floor power when we've had a lot of teams in the americas in the past that have had that problem yeah i mean that's that's you know, the running uh the running narrative really is you get these uh teams filled with journeyman players that, that are looking for that right combination that right recipe to find success and all they really need to do is find success for one weekend maybe two and all of a sudden they're in it so you know it's it's going to be interesting to see which recipe in this lobby uh, or in these 24 teams at least work for the longest yeah, so maybe we're, 55 we're... can do it who knows hey you got to start somewhere we're getting ready for that first zone shift to pop though i know a lot of people in chat are praying for the island circle it's but you you and i chat. know it's not it, it ain't happening we know that the shift will happen and it goes towards Ooh. that center field and look at bestia they currently have 
three of the best positions in the circle already with X Games, with the compound that Peep is in. And it looks like they're going to fall back to Sharp because he hears spam coming over the ridge line. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm definitely going to have eyes on that. They're sending Draft King over there as a solo support, but I don't know if they know that they're getting full five, four man crashed. So they might, they might just come over here, save Sharp Shot, get the heck on out of there, but they might actually have done enough Peacock to send spam away. So they'll try to see if they can hold on to that 2 2 split. Meanwhile, Falcons with the high ground. Flood just feeding all this information over to the rest of the boys, letting everyone know exactly what is taken as they just kind of hang out on the south side of the map. Yeah, that's. There's a lot of teams rotating as well. I'm looking at Panella. They're rotating in from the very south side of the map too, through Los Leones. You've got a couple of players. So not Panella, but OG. My bad. Old Guard are rotating. Panella, good. I was speaking to some of the teams, right? Okay. Some of the. Oh, never mind. We'll pick up on that in a second because Falcons have just rocked up on Snakers and Sam Crow has been dealt with. He says, Gibson, let's let's not listen to you. We're picking up a point. Yikes. Well, that's why you have Flood up on the top, just re feeding all that information. He said, hey, this guy, this guy's all by himself in here. You want to go uh, get a free point? And they definitely did. So Frogman, that's the frogs don't fly very well, but apparently this one does. He's going to stay alive, at least for now, for right now. It's a little bit of a uh, little bit of team on team action there for 55. He's, he's not flying. He's falling with style. Falling, not, there you go. Yeah, falling with style. I think, <laughs> I, I think I read about that in the in the Bible, uh, frogs <laughs> coming from the sky. It's, it didn't portend uh, very good things for everybody else in the server. Uh, <laughs> so no, he almost got in, man. Justice had the last shot ready for him. Uh, oh well. Yeah. He felt like everybody at the lobby was shitting at that one as well. <laughs> <He> really was. <laughs> Gatos Chicos, they want to go for this flush, right? But it's a bit of a risk if you want to extend out without putting down that smoke wall. But we're early on. We've already lost five players. We've got biblical references in there. We've got oh, a man. sandstorm going through as well. Like, Oh, God, that's another one. Yeah, ex this exactly. Is, this is too much right now. It's too much. It's, it's, already, it's only Saturday. We haven't even reached Sunday yeah. yet. Which of these teams is the four horsemen, though? That's the no real boy. question. That is that is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you make of Pichao's roster, by the way? You know, Nateo, Yakuz, Santa, Biel, Moncalmo. Are you impressed with kind of the little that you have seen of them? You know, I've, I've always kind of... Uh, I don't know why. I've always kind of enjoyed watching Biel Calmo. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it feels like Biel has, has a little something. Yakuz as well. Uh, I've always felt has a little something. Oh. And... Uh, and uh, well, of course, I say that he should be all right. I think he's he was going for maybe a uh, yeah. I think they were trying to finish off that kill, but uh, he's in the dip. He should be he should be resible. But yeah, nice shots though from Sills and there's uh, that Bestia two two split. It's a good thing that Sharp Shot was able to get that support from DraftKings and keep spam from crashing right on that compound the first time because that two two split is really nice for them right now. Yeah, Marl, we, need to, hold it, though. we need to stop saying players' names because the three players we highlighted during the I game know. have all been knocked already as the zone shifts. And well, that, when I look at that shift straight away, look at how greedy the Bastia split is, right? They're 2-2. Two, two. Oh, do they, they, do they want to stay greedy or do they consolidate? Because rats are making a play for that X game as well. Yeah, I... Uh... It's 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 gonna be interesting to see if if somebody does decide to crash them It's gonna ma all it's all gonna matter where that what side they crash them from a gas cans is going through there rats good eyes to take over this uh, Once they saw PCH take off so uh, Ecos and they, they, they had to leave to go and get the res on the BL But that's gonna leave uh, rats with the jump which is also a nice spot to play around dead center of the circle as well gas actually pulling up into the ditch just to the south of sharp shot and draft king as a uh, oh, nice shot from frogman through the smoke we'll find danamon and aces problems kind of continuing here a little bit yeah elevate crashing spam as well and elevate have gotten this crash with all four players up that's the most difficult thing to do as vegas begins peaking that's a little bit of a third party as back monster finds the knock onto brisa as well and this is even better for the members of Spa, or for the members of Elevate who are making this push. Punage comes under heavy fire, and that's a great nade and combo spray from Kerak as Punage and Shinboy are going to get knocked. 
Yeah, this is all getting overseen by, I mean, you got NAH off in the off in the distance, off to the east. You've also got gas cans that got a knock on here. So Elevate, we're in a 4-2 push. Shipboy and Poonage immediately end up going down. And now it's it's really, it's just looks like both teams are wanting to see if they can maybe reset. But you can hear the shots just peppering the buildings around them. Balefrost just making sure nobody leaps out of that window. Shimboy is going to try to make his way around the tractor. Hopefully maybe get that res. But spam, you can see back on three, uh, three strong. They're pushing out. Yeah, there's a reason why I've heard this compound called no win before. And you're kind of seeing that for both of these teams. Vegas's head's exposed, but Karak unable to tag it. The blue zone will will prevent them from flanking, but Vegas steps inside oh. and Vegas will fall. Elevate losing players, and this is huge for Spam, as that'll be Poonage wiped as well. And Elevate are down to just two players left. I thought he had him, man. I thought Vegas had him. Karak again, come through, boy. He got the whole team. Nice play from Spam as Elevate just gets dismantled. And now Spam, I think they, they, yeah, they keep four up if they get their reses off here. Rats as well is kind of holding off a little bit of a push from Legacy. Be able to get Grant Lannis back on his feet. But do you stay here, Gibson? Do you still hang out in this ramp? I mean, it's a very strong spot. It's dead center circle. I, I think you stay. It's such a good position because everybody That's else is technically providing you covering fire. Because if anyone True. wants to push you, everyone else in the lobby can see it. I'm looking at Future and 55, the one oh you're screen goodness. right now. Lopez are going is going to obliterate Future as we lose our 14th team. They got a push to get some reses off though, because Ace's crew definitely might think about closing these players out. Yeah, I was looking at the map. It looked like Aces might have thought about it. Uh, but then the, maybe they just didn't see enough kills in the in the feed coming through from 55 so being a little bit trepidatious about pushing over there although it looks like they might be considering it now anyway falcons now right on bestia's door so oh pippa no pippa, yes yes you're better than this Rello, no, not. You're better <laughs> than this. do it do it what is going on oh, well there you go ace actually came over at the perfect time with the grenades and found all of 55 so what do we know <laughs> It's what we expected. Pipa, though, was ready with that Panzer. As I would say, is it a Panzer in his pocket? Or is he just happy to see another team pushing his way? Mine gets the opener because it is prime time, of course. It was Here Panzer versus Panzer. We'll take down Pipa saying, you know what? I've got a Panzer of my own. <laughs> and well, Bestia, that's the problem with being greedy with these two two splits because a team like Falcons will go through you like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a timer in your head. You have to know, like, how long are we going to pull this? We have to realize that eventually somebody's gonna run out of room. Oh, I'll get there, Rello. Yeah, uh, he's... yeah, it's not happening. Oh wait, oh, they are pulling right up there. Okay. Oh no, he got him again. He's got a two-piece with the Panzer right now. Rello, the noob tube specialist, coming through. Now Meow, all down to about a half HP. Big grenades coming through, not finding it. Justice gonna get taken down by Rello as he continues his campaign of terror. On Gatos Chicos. Oh man, Rell is on one with the explosive. There's a nade that gets himself another knock, and that will be that for the Gatos Chicos as they are wiped out. Falcons up to six kills already in this game, and they've secured a little bit of safety on that side. But look at Panella. Good. Now they're wrapped in a little bit of a dance. They've got Legacy here, and they could get backfilled from the south as well. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, this is going to be a real interesting fight for that. Oh, LFP going to go down to the blue zone grenades. Nicely placed there. Oh, Penella good. And the rest of Legacy just kind of working around the edges. But they're they, they're fe they're afraid of getting shot in the back from Spam uh, or from, from NAH off in the distance. And maybe even Rats. If Rats sees the kill feed, they know exactly what team is just off to, the, uh, to their east. They could get aggressive onto this if they wanted to. But right now, it's just... Bella, unfortunately, like I said, wait, what from behind? No, this is what you go. What's going to happen when you got Peach out behind you? BL, Santa all combining to deal with what was left that of took, Penella Goods. That took seconds. Efficient. It was done in seconds. They're efficient. What can we say? Goodness. Almost as efficient as Toffee is getting through the run of show. Like it's, it's just the good Clockwork, thing to man. see, right? Clockwork. <laughs> Yeah. Circle <laughs> shifts though. And what do you think of that one, Poro? Okay. Um, it sucks. Uh, I mean, it was like one, I feel like we've seen this before where, where spam just gets to, you know, free stay in the compound, uh, till, till late game. Uh, we'll see a lot of fights on the, obviously on the West and on the South. 
uh, NA, I keep calling them NAH because I can't remember their full name. I'm going to go look at a, a hobby. Not a hobby. There not we a go. hobby. Because well, this not ain't a hobby, bro. This is real. This, this is job. Is, this is this is real life. Well, uh, they're going to they're going to have to real life find themselves a place to play here that is going to be safe from the uh, the eyes of spam and from legacy really legacy getting a little bit of a reprieve from that push by pch but now pch has once again got to get back on the move looks like they're all inside of a vehicle about to send it og meanwhile right on the other side of the ridge line from the remaining 2-2 from bestia oh, this was, this was send. it's not working <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a great fire back away from Santa, though. BL is still alive, but I feel like we tell me that Rello is extending over. Look, look at this. Falcons have sent Mime over to this fight now as well, because they know they have control of the south. So Pichal are eliminated, but here come Falcons. The spoon is down. Tune is going to push up over that ridge line, but this is that cutting edge that Falcons have found in the last few months, and they were waiting for that fight. I um, mean, it just played out right in front of him. I mean, as easy as you could. Tune gonna get spotted out by Mime as well. So, Falcons uh, will have that south side. See if Sharp Shot can hold the line. He's got that bullet hose ready to go. Just in case anybody peeks that door. That is the most dangerous door in all of, Mar uh, of Miramar right now. Is they've got two guns aiming right for it. Falcons, they, they are just rotating around the edge of this this is this is like this is like old oath used to play where they would just find they would find a spot on the edge and they would just continue to push in it be hyper aggressive completely no respect for any team that might be around them because they just know they're better and it's like a battery too they charge up more and more the more fights they get in the more energy they have but i think they've realized that they need to push up with legacy Making the way here as well. Spot out, there you go. There's Gats prone and Flood should get this knock, but he doesn't with the first attempt, but Gats is in a lot of trouble now. And here comes the nade. This should be that for Gats. Oh, not Rats, Gats. Oh my oh. God, the bounces. <laughs> <laughs> right in his face. The first one didn't get him, the second one definitely would have, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Rats, Gats is gone. And, uh, and Falcons now have that dip as well. Uh, you can see again spam just get to hang out. This is gonna have to move now. Yeah, they're gonna have to move Okay, Falcons have that ridge line. They're sending three to see if they can take care of legacy And they're pushing it nicely here on the south side Meanwhile, everything off to the west is gonna have to come to a head gas cans obviously in the best position here We'll see how long OG takes to get rid of these final two from bestia and if they can do it clean They might have a shot here yeah, and you know the gas cans are going to push as well, though, off the back of that. Flood steps up towards Legacy, who are top of the leaderboard as things stand. He's up to nearly 600 damage already, as Gizera is going to get knocked. And let's not forget about Jam, Jam. who's not too far away here either, Poro. Mime gets another one, and Jam's just going to play the snake. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't blame him at all. I mean, why would you? Why would you try to move? Right now, you got every. Oh, God, the shots from Snakers. Absolutely disgusting. Falcons coming in looking fresh. But look at this. OG taking two knocks from Sharp Shot. As now Gas Can's trying to hold over there, but Snakers just not letting him have any type of uh, comfort at all. Just constantly peppering him. 13 kills for Falcons already. Unlucky for some, and it's certainly been unlucky for all the teams that have crossed their path so far. Adam gets the knock on to Kerak as Gaskans keep an eye on what's happening all around them, but they need to force their way into the zone pretty soon, as do Old Guard. But Snakers is doing a great job of just keeping an eye on everything that's happening on this section of the map. Oh, oh Jam. <laughs> oh, Jam. Not like this, Falcons not like this i mean look you can't you can hardly blame falcons for having no idea they have been just traversing this entire map they've been on the move non-stop how are they supposed to know that there's going to be one solo snake just hiding in the grass over here we'll see if jam can get the knock and the flush as uh, gas cans still trying to take care of og on that western side jam just has the blue right behind him it's slow mm. it's like watching a horror movie there's just some teams, right, that always seem to get caught out by a player sneaking in from the edge of the zone, and Falcons have it. Kai well, Shen will go grenade. down to the blue, gets a nade from Voxic, but 
Is he going to hit the target this time? Old guard eliminated. Adam will pick up here. Green. He falls. And now we've got a four. It's a four v four v four v one. And Jam is still staying hidden. Oh boy, Jam. And they're pulling away from him too. So Jam has that whole backside of himself. And Falcon's going to think that is completely free and clear. Spam. They were at least able to send it away from their compound. Find a place to play but it feels like their backs are very much against the wall. Brissa, one HP, maybe, as uh, is getting taken very, very low by Rella. I think getting taken out just yet, as my mind will be the one to do it. Yep, Blue Zone Grenade will do it. And now uh, you go. Falcons get the favored circle on that southwestern side. But they are being super aggressive here at Gibson. Man, I'm actually so impressed. So Snakers is watching gas cans, and he knows they can't push that way. They've locked out gas cans now, and they're pushing. Flood is going to get that kill. They're up to 15 now. There's another knock from Flood as that MK will bark. And people like to say a dog's bark is worse than its bite. Well, that MK it bites just as hard. Richie B goes for the res, but Falcons, barring Jam being a nightmare for them, should win this. I mean, uh, my, my question is, how many kills are they gonna? Are they gonna get all all twenty two? Why not? I mean, At this I, point, I, why not? I don't see anything that says they wouldn't. I mean, Gascans is just pressed so hard right now. I mean, they're just struggling for any cover they can get. Flood is just absolutely obscene with this Jesus, MK. Flood. Over one k damage now for Flood to go along with his two kills. 17 for the boys and Snakers wants to get right up in there with the AUG. He's gonna find one. Can he get the Bizzler? Bizzler's trying to run for it. I don't know how much longer he's gonna stay alive though. Well, who, like, where are they going? Falcons are a predator. They're oh, an apex right predator. Jam. Go on, Jam. Get your one. Go on, oh, Jam. No. Get your one. Don't get it, Jam. There we go. <laughs> He gets this one. It kills for Ace's crew. They have doubled their points from yesterday as well. Oh, good break. Can Jam hit it? Wonderello. Oh, I'm so close. You know, he was he was actually, he was probably mad about the fact that Bizzler got all the way over there. He's like, man, I, I was able to sneak this whole time. They had no idea where I am. I guess I'll just take the point and uh, and see what I can do. He's already got the knock on Rello, so well, maybe... Maybe we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll see Jam pull off. No. Oh, oh no. Oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Jam. Go on, Jam. It's a one v two now. This is so winnable for Jam. He's got it smoked off. Mimes knocked Stop. below him. Relo's Stop. down on the side. <laughs> Honestly, I but look. I believe Come on, Jam. Come on, Jam. Come on, Jam. We're all rooting for Jam here. <laughs> we we all know Falcons are qualified. Like, so let's, get, let's a, get this crew. They've got twenty kills. Come on, guys. So we're, I'm rooting. I'm, 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 uh, oh, man. Come on. Oh, the smokes are dying, though. He's going to be in trouble. Well, Flood and Sink is on the other side. He's got a little bit of a little peak battle he could get into here. Snakers. That's, <laughs> the flashbang's coming out. <laughs> Come on, Jam. Come on, Jam. I hope it denies at this point. Wouldn't it be great if he just runs into the blue? I feel like... Come on, don't, don't deny, please. Oh, we got there, the kill. Let's get another one. Oh, man. Ten points. Let's go. Yeah. And look at what Ten Falcons kills. are doing. F Flood's waiting for... Oh, go on. If that pain is. Oh, God, I was praying. Come on, jam, jam. Nope, nope. A little, a little short. That was awful. That was terrible throw by jam. I'm not going to lie. It was nowhere near... Oh, through the wood, through the wood. Jake, you got this. If anybody's going to do it, it's. EU this is the never. longest end game ever for <laughs> a 2v1. <laughs> but I'm all for it. No oh, way. Go on, Jam. 1v1. Go on. Snakers is on the high ground. If Jam pulls no this shot. off. Come on, no Come shot. On. Just he's blow got, the he's, car up. He's got. He's still got a helmet and uh Oh, that high ground. That high ground's too hard, That's man. Sick, oh no. Well, Falcons <laughs> will get your first game win, and Jam the hero of the four aces will get second. What a what a way to start the day. <laughs> oh, that oh. is. That's a dream. That is a dream for Jam. Ace's crew needed something big. They got second place, a bunch of kills. But how about Falcons? Look, it is Paddy's day for me.
it, terrifying. It, it, yeah, it is Paddy's Day, and they are wearing their green, so you know they're Let's going go. to get they're going to get the luck of the Irish for the next 24 hours. Well, they didn't need much luck, man. They were just rolling, just everybody. I mean, it, it, the timing on everything was just perfect. It feel it, it feels like every single fight they took. I don't even know if they took a knock. At least the ones that we saw. Like they they just they just rolled. Mm -hmm. And they're a momentum based team. Like once they start rolling, they're gonna be hard to stop. And it's crazy how many points they were able to get in the end. Like we're watching them, they rolled up on Pichao here, they rolled up on rats. They just have a really good sense of what's going on around them at all times. And it just seems like they timed every single fight to perfection. Absolutely. Which one was your favorite of the 21 kills from Falcons, Toffees? I, my favorite moment is when <laughs> Gibson said, Jam can do this. And you just went, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I died a little bit. I, I mean, my makes this play. We're probably going to see it here in a second where he jumps the car and I am happy for them they signed with Falcons I feel like it's a good group to be with this is why because they not only are having a wonderful time and they're really at the peak of their game but they give the fans what they want like they're doing things that are fun that you know a sponsor's gonna be like I love that you did that mime that was super cool to see but also these guys are playing insane gas cans ran away from them Gibson like they like, literally ran away I, I, I honestly I'm the, that right there, Rello, right there, I, that's the first knock that mm -hmm. I've seen Falcons take this entire game. This is absolutely obscene. Uh, they they just, it was a very strong game one performance. Let's let's leave it at that. How about that? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crowning okay. them the victors of the tournament or anything. I mean, like, but what the heck? 31 mm -hmm. points, though, and let's be honest, only 60 kills jump out of the airplane, right, that you can actually get. Yeah. <laughs> and they mm -hmm. took 21 of them. That is yeah. bananas. I, so kudos to them. I mean, and again, we brought, I brought this up in chat. They are, for all intents and purposes, the best team in North America if you go by PGC results. And it looks like it coming out here in game one. Played very, very, very well. Worth noting as well, though, Poro, Ace's crew more than doubled their score from six games <laughs> yesterday, due in large part to STK getting stuck in a dip. But still, uh, that jam play at the end was awesome. I mean, yeah. They, 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 you had the, the good fight against STK, which is, uh, that was pretty free, uh, all things considered. But the, the game, I mean, it played out pretty nicely for Aces. I mean, they had the, they were down to two. They came in uh, over the top and got the full team, wi uh, full team wipe on the 55 when they weren't even looking. So this, I mean, it was, you know, it, it just goes to show you how crazy PUBG is, where Aces crew can have all day yesterday and get, you know, what was it, four points? And then they, they come into today and just eight kills, actually um, damn near all 10 of those kills that they got just kind of fell right in front of them. Man, gosh, that was... Okay, so I'm glad to see them do that. Uh, but I think to me, the standouts are Gas Cans, again, good game. Mm -hmm. Falcons expected comes out uh, puts up a good game and in a lot of ways the rich continue to get richer or the teams that I expect to be rich but after one game Gibson with 31 points the Falcons have made the cutoff it's nuts isn't it 21 point <laughs> it's but I think That's the one efficiency you see right there man. right look we we thought that Le that Legacy and Mercy had a great day one but Falcons are about to maybe blow that one out of the water I remember covering an event at the start of the year where they won five out of six maps on the first day. Yeah. And this was a lobby yeah. full of like tier one teams from Europe and NA. And they have that in them. And yes, Mime coming in is definitely going to help. But my God, are they just firing on all cylinders? And it just seems like they have not taken a break since PGC. Yeah, yeah I can no tell you that see. they haven't. That, we I, got, that's we the... got five games left, though. Mm -hmm. They've got five games left to play. You're right. I. We, we're not gonna we didn't we didn't write the sonics off after game one yesterday we're not gonna give falcons the championship after game one today there you go. but it it looks pretty good uh right it now does look pretty good <laughs> that's all we could say <laughs> it looks very very good uh so as we go down that list remember for those of you who are just joining us there are teams that are gonna have less points than others you can see that right side of the leaderboard and with the exception of future most of them have only played one game so Keep in mind that just because your favorite team isn't looking great right now, that's because they may be back if they're in group scene, didn't have a chance to play yesterday. We're going to come back because there are five more games to play today. And when we get back, we're going to game number two in the Dusty Dunes. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome to Update 28.2. Join us for our 7th anniversary celebrations, an all new SMG experience in the arcade, and finally, the recall system update. We've got lots of surprises in store for you to celebrate our 7th birthday. Erangel's school will be transformed into a festive 7th anniversary venue. Plus, keep an eye out for throwable cupcakes and surprise gift boxes scattered across the starting island of each map. We've been hard at work balancing the SMGs to offer a more unique experience and accommodate various gunplay strategies. The arcade is all set for you to try out these changes, so get that early feel and let us know what you think. And there's more exciting news. Based on your positive feedback, we're expanding the recall system to include Vikendi and Tago. Check out the patch notes to discover all the details of this update. Lastly, this patch also includes weapon mastery updates, world bug fixes, and performance tweaks. Be sure to dive into the patch notes for all the details. And we'll see you on the battlegrounds. Welcome back. It is time for game number two. My name is Toffees. I got Porosaurus. I got Gibson. And we gave you what we like to call the greatest first game of the day. Uh, we started on time. We gave you big action. We have a lot of fun here in NA. And I got to be honest, that game, I thought, Poro, when I saw the circle shifts, because let's be real, circle four, there was like some compounds and no transitional cover. Circle five was like, <laughs> what? And then it turned into one of the best game endings that I've seen in a long time. Mimi, to be sure. But there's no way that anybody expected that. I mean, like, they, they played uh, it. It played out how circles kind of around that mm -hmm. area. It, it, it goes one of four ways, right? It either hugs the, the compound that that, uh, that Bestia was in. Mm -hmm. It plays towards back towards the, uh, the ramp or it plays up towards mm -hmm. where spam was, right? Um, it, it, that's kind of... Uh, that's one of I guess three cardinal directions that it could have gone in Fair. but uh, but uh, yeah once it gets there uh, you, you kind of have to be on your toes uh, if you're holding down one of those positions those strong positions in the late game and know like okay if we have to move it's going to be bad because we've just got an open field and hay bales to kind of hide behind so we have to have kind of a plan and uh, you know you saw spam <clears throat> had a plan immediately left that compound found the ditch yep. or were able to work that gas cans maybe a little bit less of a plan uh they they kind of try to slow play it a little bit and use their vehicles as cover and they ended up just getting pushed uh, pinched out by an ultra ultra aggressive falcons team so i want to talk about both of those teams in our in our sort of lead up here i want to finish with spam because you just brought them up gibson spam team wiped elevate in a like it was like nitrous in their veins and not to take away from spam because they've been playing well but elevate is four very good players who should i expect to win 1v1s on a regular basis is spam even bigger and even better than we think they are i'm gonna add a caveat to that uh, kerak wiped <laughs> wiped elevate yeah. <laughs> he did it yeah. he did it all by himself i think that they underestimated spam a little bit in that crash kerak's a fantastic mm. player i see it 
He's one of the players that in scrims does well. And as I said, you can't judge a team on scrims, but you can certainly judge individual players. And Elevate won't make that mistake again. But I think you two would agree with me, right? This Elevate roster, Poonage and Shinboy have played together for a long, long time. Inconsistency has been their biggest problem. Mm -hmm. And that gunfight kind of highlighted that. Like, when you crash and you keep four players up, you expect them to get a knock or two and make a push, but they just never really did anything, even when Spam took a knock from a third party. I think yeah. it's it's a little bit from me. I'm like, I'm trying to give Elevate a little bit of credit for that because it wasn't all Spam. They were, mm -hmm. Elevate was getting shepherded by shots from gas cans. They were getting shot uh, by, from uh, not a hobby. So they, they were kind of being forced to play it from certain angles. Now, mm -hmm. the one thing that I will say is that, you know, if elevate maybe could uh, we're thinking it through a little bit more they could have had that smoked off in such a way mm -hmm. where they could have given themselves a little bit more time protected from the back know that they're not going to get uh, at least free farmed from shots from range uh you know and, and then maybe it could play out a little bit better but i mean give spam credit i mean they they kind of put the brakes on the push and uh and unfortunately for Elevate, you know, it's just kind of got nickel and dimed until they were death. And Carrick, yeah, like you said, just big individual plays will always win it. Let's talk about Falcons for a second as we watch these guys loot. They look good. We talked about at the end of the game. I wanted to point out that Rollo managed in that last game to get a kill on one team with a Panzer and then a gun and then a grenade. So, like, they're not even limited to just one weapon type. I think they're playing well. Also, I got a comment. I saw so many Panzers in that last match, Gibson. I it, Like you said, is it just happy to see me? Because it seems like the players need to just get comfortable with the fact that Panzers mm -hmm. are going to ruin their lives on a daily basis. It's the ultimate entry tool, right? When you watch any team with a Panzer, if you run into a building with the first player with a Panzer with a mindset like, hey, I'm going to fire this thing even if it's one foot in front of me and I get knocked because I know that I've got my teammate right behind me who's going to be able to swing if I lose. So... That's why so many teams use them. They're really effective at clearing buildings. I know that some players don't like it because it takes a massive element of, I don't want to say skill out of it, but it kind of does. Like you don't even have to be accurate when you're breaching a building. You just fire it towards the nearest wall and usually you get a knock. But when you're, when you're able to use them effectively, like Falcons did, you can just see how difficult it can be to play against. I like that. Did we just see rats yield to one player, Pachow, hiding behind a wall? I, like they were just so like too strong. I think, yeah, I think BL. I, maybe they they thought that BL was there and they just mm. couldn't find him, or they they crashed into the compound, saw the doors were open, and just decided to dip on out. Uh, and you, I mean, you saw that they were moving as a group, so, mm -hmm. uh, but they were also pushing as a group with a bunch of submachine guns so i think maybe they were just looking at it and be like yeah let's just get out of here and go loot up we're we're not sitting that great so maybe maybe we like get a bonus kill the... if it's not easy just walk away yeah just uh you don't feel like taking the time to really dig this guy out especially when the circle's all the way down south mm. and that is a very tough circle i don't always talk about circles at the start of the match gibson but it's barely touching the plane path which means there's just so much extra rotation space for those teams coming from the north uh never east west the northwest side right like they have just there's a lot of ways in, I suppose. Yeah, with the flight path that we had, and this essentially just about touching the flight path, all these teams will know that when you look towards the east, that is probably your cleanest rotate in. So you'll see some teams do that. You spoke about the last map. Could STK get rid of their, you know, their zone Teflon that they had? Mm -hmm. Well, the very first, or the very second circle of the game is slapping in the center of Los Leones. And they have extended out of Los Leones because they know it's easier to get into a city than it is to get out. So they'll play the edge for a little while. But and I can't help but notice they're not standing in a trench right now because that seems to uh, have not worked great for them last time. They doubled Ace's score in, in basically an instant. Uh, but again, you can't, I can't, you, can't, you can't write it off on that one. That was just a really unfortunate high ground yield that there's nothing you can do at that point. Uh, we'll see if that continues throughout the day. And I, I, my hope, though, is... You, you know these guys pretty well, Poor. You've known them for mm -hmm. a very long mm -hmm. time. Are they prone to tilt in situations like that? No, no. I mean, there, there are definitely some teams that are, that, that I would say, I wouldn't say that about. But I, I think Shoot to Kill, like, the, these guys have been, Kurt and Alo in particular, uh, Luke as well. I mean, they, these guys, 
they they don't tilt that's just not something that's in their in their nature they'll they'll shake it off they'll move forward uh i'm sure sparking is uh, spark has always seemed like a pretty level-headed guy to me as well so i don't think uh, we have to worry about anything from the sdk side there now something that i am worried about is this elevate team we kind of talked about them a little bit and sort of how they didn't stand up to spam but gibson again that's just a pedigree team young guns but it does feel a little bit like maybe you've seen it in scrims it feels like they just were like hey let's it let's just do opens and see what happens and i feel like that's the the sort of play style we're seeing from them i i worry that that's not ever going to translate out of the group stages i think that they are one of the biggest they're one of the teams mm. with the biggest discrepancy between their floor and ceiling right and i i always talk about i always use that analogy but the teams that qualify for international events are the teams that have the smallest gap between the two and we all know what that roster is like we all know shin boy we all know Poon. we we know that they've been kind of is cinder could you even call you can call them the cinderella of qualifying for international events right they've been so clear the bridesmaid even so many times that they've not just made it but they've made two very good additions they've got the backing of an org now and when you're backed by an org it does come with some expectations as well right you the org expects you to perform sure yeah, I mean, I I expect Elevate to perform as well. I mean, I mean, I've expected them to perform every year, and and you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's it's just it, like you said, it's all about finding that consistency. I'm I'm hoping that this build every year that passes, that's a team that gets more mature, and I'm hoping that this will be the uh, the time in the year where they get the most mature. Is Frogman? Yeah, that was okay. Rats took way more rounds to get that kill than i thought it was initially going to but uh in the end comes through all the same look parl a kill is a kill a point it is, is, does, that's it all doesn't that ma matters exactly they're getting a point off of this future have uh they got to think about their future a lot because their present ain't going the best right now they'll be playing next weekend i'm almost sure of it grant gets his kill on the board but it's it's a warm-up right it doesn't matter how that first kill comes. If rats start building them, they, they can get a bit of momentum going. Yeah, the interesting thing is I don't even think that rats was expecting to find them. I think they were looking for uh, for BL uh, and the rest of that uh, that gang because uh, you know from from way early whenever they found the uh, the first compound, so they pushed in a little bit ahead. They came back down. They camped out a little bit. Unfortunately for uh, for uh, for FT here. They uh, were the ones that were spotted out. So we'll see if they get any more away. Oh, aces. Are they doing a little campy here too? No, that's just Finn all by himself. Okay. Yeah. I, I like how he waited till they got far enough that they couldn't turn, then started <laughs> shooting at them. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta, now, the, the only problem is, you know, he, he sees heads in, the, in those chairs and he knows that that is not the full team. So maybe get on out of there before the trailing duo catches you yep he's gonna do exactly that old guard uh where are they at right now yeah they're just kind of hanging out on the western side of los leones i i'm i'm curious uh, i i ex i gotta be honest with you i expected to see a lot more e pickups in this circle coming from the north and uh they just i guess didn't find them or just decided not to take them i'd say it's a little column a little column b right yeah. you know some the teams that maybe wanted them didn't find them and the teams that didn't want them probably saw them and rotated in i think that they know that there's a lot of playable area in the circle too it bounces back Oof. towards los leones and now the ro the rush is on did you see how quickly gas cans 180 well, they were they driving sure towards Los, <laughs> and they hit that handbrake and they've gone straight back and there's a race on right now for the compound that aces crew are going to between them and 55 esports Tokyo drifting and unfortunately Slabby is going to get spotted out by Damon as aces uh, they're very split up as you said but they were trying to go for the same compound Slabby going to get stolen well stolen away by Finna but uh yeah that's still one taken away now from 55 so aces knows this that was the compound I think that everybody was kind of looking at towards but now Damon might be in some trouble he's getting pinned down by gas cans as you said gas cans taking shots but spam now creeping up right behind them so they have turned around so uh like you said a number of teams on this northwestern side uh just running into each other they have to make quick decisions here that's too free of a kill to leave though isn't it 
Yeah, I don't I don't call him Danny Mon, though. I call him Danny Monster because he can he can really pop up on the kill feed. The smoke, you know what? That smoke Ooh. bloom might just get Oh, it's gonna be Glock from 55 Esports getting some revenge. As Danny Mon will get knocked. And uh, I think it's just a choice now of who he wants to give the point to, right? You can crawl towards yeah. 55 and give it to them, or you can give it to gas cans, and that's exactly what it was. Penta will say thank you very much. And kill stealing is something that Penta has always been good at. He's got a oh, great yeah. idea of where he can pick up those points. Yeah, he just had to, he had to bide his time for the smoke to die out, and eventually all was revealed is the spoon. This little spray on the Gabir, he's not really gonna do anything to him, but that's spam. That's a trailing member of spam here. So Brissa actually kind of coming over and looking off to the north to see if he can maybe assist his teammate, but now not a hobby getting involved with aces. Yeah, Again, not still split aces. Yeah, not a hobby played really well again here. Spam, Gaberry will fight with Gatsu drops down to 16 HP, but he will stay in cover as Brisa has the off angle. But there's Gaberry with a beautiful nade that will get that knock on the Gats, and Rats will be minus one. I'm looking at the map feed, and if you don't have the map feed open at home, make sure that if you have a second screen, you keep an eye on it. But the rest of the team are pretty far away, and Chun is close, but he, the rest of the team's getting held by gas cans. It looks like Chun got sent down to maybe oh, no. provide some support and yeah okay shaft will hit those <clears throat> i'll get the knock and possibly the flush nobody's stealing it away from him just yet but yeah this is rats just kind of getting pulled in a couple of different directions and and they'll kind of losing everybody in the process ft uh future kind of sweeping in at the same time shoot to oh. kill Nicely done. We'll find Mime. So Falcons, if they're going to go on another killing spree this time, they're going to have to do it with only three up. Uh, losing Mime's a big loss. Well, he brings the X Factor. There's Grant Lantis found by Terrazoka. The spoon will hold him out. Terrazoka hits him for eight damage. Oof. And there you go. That's the end of the rats as future. Yo, you know revenge. They got as many kills there now against rats as they got all day yesterday. So yeah. that's impressive. It's the little things. Well, you know, I don't know if impressive is the right word, but you know what? It's it's revenge. It's, it's revenge, <laughs> if nothing else. Uh, you know, rats got kind of bogged down dealing with spam, and Future just happened to come over at the exact right time and take advantage of them. And uh, it's unfortunate for rats. I'll have to sit this one out for the rest of the wait for the next game here. But now we'll see if Future can actually get something done. Ace is, looks like Finn is going to be able to rejoin the rest of his team. I'm actually kind of surprised that aces only lose one in that whole uh kerfuffle that took place there in the first part of the circle yeah i'm with you on that i think they, they definitely could have lost more but they pulled back they stayed quiet they've fallen back to this position and they've actually got an okay spot right now because not a hobby they're not going to leave the position there right so they're holding their no, flank no. but i'm looking at legacy right top of the leaderboard now with 70 points they got rid of you know sparking left that roster that's a big player to lose, but they're showing that they don't seem to mind it too much. But let's turn our attention to Besh as they're about to crash on the spam. Okay, this is the team we were talking about that's crashing into the 2-2 split. The free fire from RDS is huge. We're going to go ahead and take that one. Doesn't get the flush. Well, that's following up the flashbang. It gets he's anticipating the push to come in from the rest of the squad. So doing everything he can to kind of slow them down. Sills and feeding him a little bit of information. They're gonna find Karak. RDS just holding the line. Can he slow this down a little bit more? The Molly will be put down. He's gonna have to just take some blue zone damage, but he's got the backpack, Gibson. So it's gonna be pretty safe for now. Yeah, and he's going to turn up the aggression. He knows there's a player knock, but he turns to the left, not to the right. He doesn't know. There was freebie sitting right there. And now DraftKing gets in position now as well. Bestier pushing the solo. He's tucked behind the door. The first player goes past, but DraftKing checks his corner. And that'll be RDS eliminated now as well. As it's not really going how Spam would have wanted, but that's a good clear by Bestia. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's super unfortunate that they get caught in a 2-2 split right then. I mean, Gabiri and Bressa were still up on that north side, just kind of keeping track of future. And uh, unfortunately, they just did not catch that crash from Bestia until the very last minute. And they tried to slow it down as much as they could. But in the end, Bestia very, very thorough and quick 
dealing with the issue. Now Gabiri and Brissa, they are all by themselves and they are turning their attention over towards gas cans. Mr. Richard Bizzler hanging on the roof right now is going to have to be careful. Yeah, Richie B. They've got the angle though. He he knows that they're nearby because he would have heard the vehicle. So it's mm. just a case of holding them out for now. Zone's going to do a little bit more damage than Gabiri would like now as well with the fact that He's in there, we're in phase three, it's about to become phase four, and oh my god, Paro, that is a violent shift towards the west, and I'm going to say Pichao are loving that, and look straight away, BL is going to go play on the other side of Tuma Church, and the other two will play the 2-2 two -two split. This is really, a really aggressive but smart move, if BL can get across the road, that is. He did it. Uh, Carl, have I lost you? Oh, my bad. Uh, yeah. cough. I had my, my cough button. I just forgot. Yeah, I was, I was, that. I was, was my fault. Where, where, where but yeah, no, no, I was gonna say PCH. They, they, they're the I think you're absolutely right. I mean, they are hugging that western side, right? But both of those compounds that they're holding are not compounds that you would expect anybody to want to crash in this circle, right? You're not expecting any full four man. Uh, crashes onto any of that so you can afford to do two two splits one 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 splits uh, gain a lot of information about what's going on towards the center it looks like they are going to pull everybody back together and just play from those ridge lines it's meow no justice picked out of the air and 55 gets a freebie i'm starting to think that the gatos chicos are actually cats because you don't justice think so? went down he went down in one life. He didn't get back up again straight away. So I'm starting I mean, to think that they yeah, might not fair. be cats. That is fair. I mean, it depends. Like, I mean, is it, is it uh, just nine lives in one game or nine lives over the span of the tournament? Because if that's the case, they get like 15 or 16, right? So. We, we wouldn't know, Paul. We're dog people, right? That is true. That yeah. is true. I don't know what, <laughs> what crazy physics cats are working with, but uh, but those are some gatos chicos for sure. And uh, they at least have a compound right on the side of the road. Back monster will win that spray down with kill demo. I, you can maybe come over there. Uh, doesn't feel like back monster is in the best of spots here, but he's got the rest of the boys coming. Bestia also trying to pull it, and they're going to have Penella Good right on their doorstep. Yeah, Latino tossing nades as he dips back into cover, realizing that maybe he wants to play it safe for now. Alo will get Snakers down and out as well, as STK are having a better game two than game one, that's for sure. And they're sticking it to Falcons, who had that big win. Blood's trapped in a shack. STK, no where he is. He's going to start the dance, and I think Luke 12 will get him. Man, he does. Falcons fall in 15th place, and this is more like it from STK. Raid boss down, I guess, but uh, yeah. OG also going to get taken down by Back Monster himself and STK finding the success where Falcons found it in game one. They're getting a little bit more for themselves here this time around now. It's not really playing out. It doesn't seem like the circle is playing out in such a way where they can just kind of do what Falcons did in game one and just kind of wrap around on the edges and just clean up everything that was left after uh, after fights on the edge. But we'll see. That's They're sticking shift. together. That shift again, though, right? Everybody Everything, who's just made man. it inside from the east has just gone. Are you kidding me, man? Do we got to keep running and getting out of here? So they're hunting kills at the edge of the circle. Draft King finds that opener on to Luke 12. And Luke will fall back. It's a good timer to put on as well. Kurt tossing nades, but Luke has been confirmed out. Sparking gets. That's one over onto Silzen, and that is Brazil against Argentina, so he certainly would have enjoyed that. But Sharp takes down Alo as Kurt drops to 1 HP. Draft King takes down Ooh. Sparking, and STK are eliminated as Bestia. They lose 1, but they're up to 6 kills now, and now they've got to deal with Legacy on their way into the circle. I mean, beautiful timing on the part of Bestia, though. Coming from that uh, the north side over by the road, just pulling up right as STK was coming out of the blue, just taking a lot of blue damage and uh before they could even get a chance to heal themselves beast you right up on top of them so very very well played on their part we'll see how they go from the rest of this game on now i've got those chicos they leave their compound but they've got a big problem in png pushing from that eastern side they also have brissa oh don't forget about brissa well oh, brissa got spotted out though yeah and he's got not a lot of places to run here either gas cans 
Pestle got the split that you can see. Refresh stepped up, gets his confirm onto Latino. Maybe he can get one onto Daryl. Is the rest of Penella good? Come this way. There's one, there's two. And the Gatos Chicos. Look, he's running for the car. He wants to keep it because they don't have one. He's like, whoa, stop. Back. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please stop. Right, well, well, don't forget, Brissa is still there, though. And I don't think Gato Chico's ever actually took shots at him. And he's going to find the knock on a Keegan. Can he get another one on a Hooligan? Okay, Hooligan will finish him off. But Draft King now, he's uh, after finding success against SDK. They're sneaking up on the side of Legacy. They don't even know they're there. Two big knocks for Draft King. Yeah, Bestia are actually starting to get warmed up, but they've got not a hobby flanking this direction. You can see that Elevator pushing this way as well. Gas cans are making their move as Refray is going to fall and the Gatos Chicos are dealt with. So the eastern side of the circle is starting to thin out a little bit more. But Bestia, as we said, they're fighting with Legacy who have Elevator looking their way and that'll be that back monster gets five kills now for him as not a hobby are on a roll now too. They're up to nine points and down go Legacy. Yeah, you got to get involved here now if you're not a hobby. You need to get some more points. Elevate, I, I loved what they were doing. They're playing more aggressively, trying to get out here and get involved in that fight, and they do end up getting a few kills for it. Now they're getting pinned from range by the future. You can see the shots coming through. I'm not finding any knocks, but oh, okay. That grenade was very dangerous. Oh, this is a tough spot. This is a tough this spot. Is, yeah. But you know what? Oh, I think that is... might be the last one he has. I don't think there's another need to come this direction, so they might just be okay. But the big question... Here's the thing. The older players like Nateo that are inside the church can't look over at the gas cans until the north is clear where Future and where 55 Esports are. So I think gas cans will survive out for a little bit, but they've got to be very careful about how aggressive their peaks get. They're very... They look very comfy right now, and... Nintendo that might actually do it more harm than good as future's not going to want to make a crash into that okay Bill we'll find Adam and oh Penta going to go down now to the vehicle explosion as well so more grenades coming in from BL and Ikus I don't think they have any more in hand though you can see Bizzler has one left they're going to try to go for these reses and are they actually going to get away with this too they really shouldn't. They, BL is going to reposition himself, but I can't get over the fact that they're getting these reses off. By the way, the zone shifted west to west again. This is... Oh, oh there we go. Oh, Great oh. nade from the Teo as Adam will fall. And here comes the rest of that assault. Now, these are difficult nades to throw. You've got to cook them perfectly. And he does get Penta and he does get Voxage. But now we're watching 55 Esports against Future. And 55 are only just Psycho and Lopez. I mean, gotta give props to Future. There you go. The gas cans finally get taken down. Peach out. Gonna be the one to do it to them. But uh, Future making their way across this road. They find Glock, Psycho, and Lopez still alive, still skirting around. Is Vegas actually gonna be the one from far away? Gonna find uh, Terrazoka forever. And uh, this fight is gonna have to come to a head right now because that blue zone is gonna be doing way too much damage to 55 to be messing around with. Yeah, and Psycho couldn't even step forward because the molly flames were there. Lopez is going full sand, Psycho. Matter of time, there's Punage and Shinboy combining. 55 losing one, Future losing two. And there's, oh, Psycho oh. stole one. Psycho is able to steal one, 55 all. But we're down to five teams left and Punage is just gonna sit and wait. And Future, yeah. I don't even think Future can deny. They have to play for points today. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's not really much they can do right there. I mean, Elevate's just free farming. Nobody uh, even looking in their direction right now. So they can stare at this as long as they want to. And yep, they'll find Shap and that'll be it for future. Lacunas at least gets the point for that one. PCH now five kills and they have a complete control over this Northwestern side. They keep, It's like they keep expecting the circle to pull away from them, but it still hasn't and it just never has. And so they've been able to leave two up in the church. They still have Ikus and uh, Bielk uh, trying to work their way around to the north side. Okay, finally leaves the church. Uh, Poonage kind of running around in that northern side gets close to BL, close to Ikus. No angles found just yet. Bale actually going to provide some support for Poonage as well. 
as uh, Elevate has to have in mind that somebody's going to be leaving that compound where Ace is, right? Yeah, they're going to have an idea, but the problem is Ganny is hit back. Shinboy finds the knock onto Jam, so that's a real problem now for Ace's crew. Finna, the last pair alive, and look, Vegas and Shinboy, they're wrapping out now. They're going to keep the eye to make sure that Finna can't leave. Black Monster's watching from the other side too, but let's focus on Elevate because BL is right close and personal with Bale Frost. The nades will land a little bit too far away, but BL, he has the Overwatch, the cover from above, and this is why they don't need to get too aggressive. I, I worry that Elevate maybe split themselves into two a little bit too early here. And we'll see what happens. Is the rest of PCH gonna come and provide some support for their front men? The rest of Elevate coming from the south. And so this will be a full 4v4 over here. Vegas going to stay on that south side to make sure that nobody creeps up from that compound. See if he can find some angles onto Ace as well. But uh, this is just everybody posturing and positioning on these ridge lines. Still more grenades left for PC. Where are they finding these grenades, Gibson? Uh, you don't want to know. You do not want to know. It's, that's that's between them and whoever whoever I else. I think your gas cans would have had wouldn't have had any left either. But apparently they, they still have some. Well, there you go. Aces and not Hobby gonna run into each other on the south side, so that might free up a little bit of uh, a little bit of space for Elevate here, as they don't have to worry about that as much now. Yeah, but this is the thing. It's still a massive fight. Shin boy gets the knock as you spoke about but they've got to be so careful about that third party and the minute that Pichao realize that this is who it is they might get even more aggressive knowing there's two fights going on at once BL does start jump scouting and here is that aggressive push shit boy knows got the M249 BL does a little bit of damage oh, but no. BL finds a knock but it's traded instantly by Vegas BL will get one on the Yaku Santa's up Santa gets his one he's going to get knocked by Vegas and all of a sudden it's a 1v1v1 though Poro because Zomox is here too Zomox oh he's got the car nine Vegas going to do the right thing here trying to flush out the rest of those kills is Netno not really going for these reses maybe can get bl here as uh as vegas maybe has to turn his attention he, it looks like vegas is actually going for these reses okay so pch and elevate gonna try to get at least one member of each team back on their feet zolmox desperately trying to run over there and see if he can find an angle to prevent this from happening They've actually got all the reses, so Pichawa are back up to a three. And this is massive for them. I, I've counted my chickens before they hatch, but yeah, there is that res. Zolmox with the K9. I think that, you know what, why not let these two kind of focus on each other and pick up the pieces, but for not a hobby. Nine kills into the top three. This is the type of form that got them into this, you know, into these group stages. And they're showing it again early today. And I think that it's a team that you cannot sleep on. No, for sure. I mean, any of these teams really that that had a rough day one or just uh, are coming from open, open qualifiers, you always wonder. It's you got to believe it's about that first game, right? That first game where they find some success, where they get a nice little bag of points, where they show themselves essentially, hey, we do belong in this lobby. We can compete in this lobby. Uh, and what's going to happen after that, right? Do they get that confidence back, that swagger back to go and take those high risk plays? Right now, we'll see if Zolmox can pull off a miracle as Pichao, they're just, it looks like they're content with just playing this safe and playing out for the win. Yeah, and Natejo was just practicing as he was his teammate there for a second, making sure not to listen to the voices. You know, they, they speak to us all sometimes. The I call get of that. the void. <laughs> yep. Zolmox will fire the ball. Look at Vegas pushing up, but there's the covering fire. Yakuz will get the kill on the Vegas and not a hobby are on a one versus three zolmox with the k9 and if i'm peach and i know it's a k9 i'm pushing this a little bit more aggressively good spray 70 damage done the blue is at his back they know that he's popping the first eight Pichao are pushing in for the kill and well Coral, it's a really well played game by then a 10 kill chicken dinner 
there you go really uh, like you said fantastic uh, late game there uh, they got a little bit of mid game luck in, in the fact that the circle kind of allowed them to control that western side but taking that western side early when they did uh, and being able to hold on it considering they got full four crash by gas cans they got crashed by elevate i think they had to deal with some uh, some early fights before that even happened uh, they, they held on to that really really well so you got to give credit where credit is due there for pachow yeah, they played that one really well. But do you know who'd have a lot to say about that? And I think that it's time that we... We're gonna we're gonna unlock him. We've taken him back out of the cage. Oh, hey Toffees, no. ba come back in. What'd you think of that one? I just don't know what to say. It was sad for sure. Good to kill. No, I think it was funny that you said, look, shoot to kill. They don't have the Teflon circle anymore. And then every shift after that ran away from them uh, and forced them to be an edge team. So that was fun to watch. I mean, the end game, always exciting here. I've I've loved what we've gotten to see out of the Meow boys or Gatos Chicos. So I think the Meow wow. name is a lot of fun. Uh, and again, I think what was enjoyable here at the end game for me was Elevate and Pachao, two teams that have to play strong today if they want to have any hope of sticking in the top eight because they're both group B. Being in that end game was exciting. Yeah, Elevate's got work to do, man. They, so and it looks like they have, they have uh, definitely come uh, clocked in before uh, taking the field today. So uh, we'll we'll see now that we got the map swaps coming up. We're going to the to the. Uh, I, I don't know. Can, do, can we even still say that uh, that Vikendi and Tego are uh, are wild card maps because of how new they are, or has it been long enough at this point? Do you think? Well, I want to. I, I have my. I want to see what you think, Gibson. I have my opinion of this too. Yeah, I, I think that they've played enough on Tegel. I think Vikendi mm. still has a couple of strange things there that are catching teams out. I feel like the biggest problem is that in scrims, in practice, it's the same format as this. So it's 2-1-1-2. Mm. One, one, so they're not mm. getting as much practice on these maps. But look, the better teams, the bigger teams, your Sonics, your SSGs, mm. your Team Falcons, they're watching back VODs and studying these maps. Like, mm. I think that's why, you know, Falcons did so well at PGC. You know, sure. obviously this this falcons but again i could be talking talking rubbish here too because no, i i th i think you're right and i think that they mm -hmm. are to to a certain extent they're comfortable with the map and when i say comfortable with the map mm -hmm. i mean flows time rates transition points mm -hmm. the big macro things right that said i've played with some like we play with the analysts from falcons occasionally we've had like i've had to be able to watch a couple of practices they're still having that pen and paper out writing down cool spots when they find them so i think it's kind of they're in that middle ground of we understand the map, but we still haven't had the ability to learn the nooks and crannies of every single movement, the way that these teams handle Miramar and Arangle, right? Like the extra five years makes a pretty big difference. Yeah, let's take a look, I would say so. Right, exactly. <laughs> so let's take a look at the overall leaderboard because literally there's not a there's not a bump on Arangle that these players don't know. Uh, it's taken longer, you know, with Fikeni and the resets and the redesigns and all that to kind of get to the same point. Legacy, 72 points, still standing up on top. But of course, that is because they are playing today. Gas cans as well are in the group B. They're not going to be here tomorrow. Mercy, who's kind of on standby, I think is going to be showing up tomorrow, still managing to hold three. So they got to feel pretty good about themselves. Pachow and Elevate are the chasers right now for me, though. Uh, they need to get a ton more points. I have you considered the cutoff, Pearl? Do you do you have an expectation of what you need to get to make top eight? You know, I, I think Gibson said somewhere around the uh, mid sixties uh, yeah. at the beginning mm -hmm. of the day, and I, I I might put it a little bit higher than that mm -hmm. to to be to be comfortable. I think maybe seventy plus to be yeah. comfortable. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, look, four games left. Legacy in first place was seventy two. So we'll. It, it, I, I think the fact that we don't have anybody just that's just point sponging is making this uh, a little, little bit more complicated to, to really predict. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great point. I do think 70, that's kind of, I think, where we're going to see the cut. Will it be exactly or nearby? Who's to say? But I think that's where teams can start target. Legacy can now play for points in the next couple of games and probably be okay. Also, stuff like Falcons going out early uh, is, in my opinion, Gibson, bad news for all the teams that are going to be on the cut line because... If I'm on a cut line, I want the Falcons to sponge as many points as they possibly can, as long as it's not taking them off of me directly, right? Because, like, the more teams that have high scores, I think the more competitive it is in the middle, maybe. Yeah, if I'm on the cut line and this is my last day, I want Falcons to be mm -hmm. having big, big games. If I'm below the cut line, you're the exact same. Like, you're thinking, right, if they pick up loads of points, it keeps us closer to the rest. Yep. Especially... They're still, Go I was going to say, they're still averaging over 15 points a game, so, yeah. like... 
Uh, and that's and that's with dying first at the second game. Mm -hmm. After game one, they were averaging 31 points per game, which is <laughs> yep. absolutely banana rama. So uh, congratulations to them. That said, they went out early. SDK had a better showing this time around as a team that we've been wanting to watch a little bit more from. Elevate seems to be waking up. Uh, so I'm excited to see what the next match will bring. Uh, we have about three and a half minutes till the next game. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it's time to head to the snowy slopes of Vikendi for game number three. Topics on Jumposaurus and Porosaurus and Gibson. You gotta stop getting me right before we start. Got him. No. Ah, I know. Keep He's all so jacked that. up on Might and Dew. <laughs> jacked up. Give me the Dew. He's doing the green bottle because things change tomorrow. Uh, welcome back. This is PAS. It's North America. I haven't figured out by how wild and out this can be sometimes, uh, but I'm here for it. I know these guys are too. It's been a great start to the day on the Dusty Dunes. Now we transition to, I don't want to call them the wild card maps, but they are a little bit more, they're a little wild crazier. Card. Yeah, and stuff happens, right? Like yesterday, we saw that that hilarious gondola attack on Shrimzy. Four men stacked with Panzers, uh, polar bears. You know, storms. It's it's a little more exciting these maps, I think, because maybe as a viewer, I'm not used. While well, the players have been there, Gibbs, I haven't been able to watch as much competitive map play here. So it's a lot of surprise to see what happens. It is, and I've seen some strange shifts on this map over the last few weeks too that we've not had. And mm -hmm. It's scary to say, but I've seen pro players being like, whoa, like, how do we even play this circle? Because our practice has not taken us here before. So I love it. Look, I love Tago. I think they've found a really good mix. As long as the circle doesn't go south southwest, hey, I'm it's happy. Tago. Yeah, look, I just, I just want to know how Gibson got so tall during the break. Well done, sir. Back to Tago. Oh, it's Tago. So I was wrong. I was just excited about the snow. Uh, but that's sad. They, they pay me to snow these things, and here I am taking well, to the wrong place. You know, but ultimately, you know we're in the temperate region. It's going to be a lot of fun. This map has been interesting to me. They had allegories when it came out to Sandhawk, uh, Poro, but I don't get that from the players. It seems like there no. are some areas that can be like that. But for the most part, it it's seemed to be relatively competitive. Yeah, I, I think... I th you know, any any time a new map's gonna come in, everybody's just gonna uh, whinge, whinge and whine and 
talk about how horrible it is but you know once you force them to it's like vegetables you know you force them into to having it and then doing it and then eventually they just like okay all right it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be so um i mean i think the the river playing around the river is still kind of dangerous uh kind of a little bit more dangerous than i would like i think i would like more ways to cross over that river but uh other than that you know it, i think it's a the, the map's just fine mm -hmm. it's been I fun like it. it's got oh, a good flow okay the circle here up here yeah that's a tough one man but the upside i guess this one gibson is there's not a lot of teams that are going to be across the river it's going to be very strange rotating into this with so many teams who are probably going to have to use south approaches because there's really only one good access bridge that's going to be in the circle i i, I there's gonna be a lot of sweeping rotations here it's it's really three different segments in this map right you've got the section we see rats up by shipyard you've got that little bit towards army base on that north island and then you've got the little triangle where you see spam and stk at the base of there's your first kill as warlock will fall people getting that on the board but as, i don't know about you toppies but are you getting flashbacks to the the circle that we had way back when SSG had to try to swim their way across mm. the bay to shipyards. The old swim strat. Yeah, no, uh, it's funny because there's just not enough travel potential over on that side. But if you get stuck on that circle, there's nothing else you can do. There, it's very rare to see a map design where there's not at least some functional cross. Uh, and there's just, even the swim, you can't come to shore safely if you're going towards shipyard. So I expect every team to not get involved with anything north of that last bridge and just mm -hmm. make their rotations. Oh, more deaths. Yeah, yeah, future. future uh, Frogman, I think, has played a sum total of like five minutes tonight. Yeah. It, it feels like. Uh, it's just not been his day. Not, not been his day. But... Uh, you know, two more kills for Elevate, which is good for them if they mm -hmm. can continue to do this. Now, Shap still inside that fishing camp. I'm not sure if the rest of the Elevate boys know about him uh, just yet, but uh, we'll we'll see. He's being very sneaky. Oh, thank you. Thank you, right? Penta. Oh, yeah, that's what Penta. That's everything Penta does. Penta is nuts, and he takes down Rat Lattice and for the rats. Wow, it's. It's been rough for them in the early game these last three maps gross it really has see normally i don't i leave when the action starts and because this map is so crazy i'm just gonna get out of here and let you guys take it over because <laughs> it's already getting stupid have fun boys who's the yeah. keys is it you that the keys Poro? look because you might accidentally lose them look at look at god <laughs> what is the uh, uh, look rats actually got away with them too but look at the look at the map look how many people are still in the middle of rotations through these hills right now gas cans try to go and chase one down and they might end up running face first into stk looks like they they okay richie he he, he thought the better of it this time he's like all right let's, let's pull away we got we got a spot we got a spot center circle let's take yeah. let's take this we had five teams within like 200 meters of each other <laughs> it's one. It's... ridiculous um but you were saying about center of circle this is dangerous because as we said it's three distinct sections and yeah, yeah you could you could potentially have three different center circles here and most of the teams are making that that guess of going towards the north stk they're probably the closest to dead center of this initial circle and i think this is maybe the type of game they need right we pointed out last mm -hmm. game Zones have been shifting away oh, from Shep. them time and time again. There, yeah, Shap, he's having a good time. He's still there. He's hanging out. The thing I'm really worried for all these teams outside of the uh, outside of the zone. I feel like we see a lot of uh, emergency pickups on this map. Mm -hmm. I hope they don't think they can go center circle on this <laughs> because there is not a whole lot of places to play already. I mean, you got what one, two, three, four, five, six seven teams already in the center circle, over half the almost half the lobby already in uh, in center circle right now it's it's, it's not five even, minutes into the game yeah it's <laughs> not even the fact that there's not a lot to play if you emergency pick up into the circle there's very few vehicles that'll be there to be t picking up as oh, well there you go how did you know right well see old guard getting ready to use that emergency pickup <laughs> what oh. happened to your tires my dude he's trying he's cooking he okay. was cooking <laughs> but, cook Where's the vehicle, right? Like if you, if you go center circle, there's no roads. You're not yeah, getting a vehicle, yeah. so you're on your feet for the rest of this one if you don't drop in the right spot. Bing. That animation always gets me. It's like, never not gonna be funny. 
just watching people just get yoinked out uh into the air but yeah I, i'm i'm very curious very curious as to as to where old guard is gonna go here so i'm gonna have one eye on them here while we check on png making their way in like they're not even they're not even doing the the emergency pickup they're just trying to drive in like normal dudes and they're getting lit up yeah what is this 2020 like what what <laughs> we can go through this guy now these days but penelope good right they've they've earned the right to be in this lobby but it just feels like they've not shown us what they have just yet and opportunities for them to do so is beginning to run out spam i think have had a pretty good start to tonight they're in fourth place as well but they're going to need a lot more than those 54 points if they want to be safe going into day three because it'll be it'll be tough for these teams tomorrow if you cannot impact it at all yeah penelope i mean at least on this map it it it, it i mean 650 what is it seven minutes into the match mm -hmm. and the, you know the already the dead center of the map is completely filled up and it just didn't seem like they had any alternative plans in case that were to happen so i think they were maybe anticipating this to be a little bit slower uh playing out the towards the center of this game and it just didn't end up being that way so but but now again what's your backup plan what's your backup plan whenever the whenever you get split up right now they've got two i think down to the south and now their other two are just kind of split off in the middle of nowhere and now gats all by himself in the middle of a wide open field against the meowies mm -hmm. it's, they're not it's, the meowies it's tom and jerry time again as the cats go up against the rats and that's going to be hooligan finding 33 damage on the gats now gats will get the knock on the justice so first blood has been drawn and it's gone in favor of the rats keegan hooligan replay one will go for the res the other two will cover and hold back the push and the thing about this hooligan and grantlandis were the two young na players that i've wanted to see to make the step up for a long time Mm -hmm. Here they are going head to head, and I couldn't be happier for them. I am so unreasonably mad that I didn't think of that cats versus rats. Yeah, the Tom and Jerry, like. God, I'm mad. I'm you know so what? mad. Tom and Jerry was so like good. after your time. Tom, you know, yeah, you, you were around long before old. Tom and Jerry. Yeah, sure, sure. Ish, you know. You Red remember? Stimpy? You remember when the radio was made, right? stop the radio was made <laughs> i don't know like you, you've <laughs> never you actually mean? told anyone what age you are i'm not i'm not 80 <laughs> the radio existed well before my lifespan i promise i didn't we'll used see. to listen to, to games on the radio like baseball games and stuff yeah that was like in in like the workshop and in the garage and stuff. Okay, okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> okay, so all right, so old guard, they went all the way to the northeast corner, found mm -hmm. a free spot. Fifty-five is coming in direct west to east. There there mm -hmm. is is how their helicopters bring them in. So where do they go? Are they gonna go do you do you hug I think you gotta hug the edge of the circle, right? Like that's the only safe play. Yeah, I think they're probably gonna go for some Something similar though they do begin coming down. here's Penella good pushing towards legacy as well but i'm still watching 55 are still on the plane for the viewers at home they're only now getting off and they've gone for the extreme side of the circle as well but yeah safe point. this next circle shift though could come could massively alter the way this game is oh i hope it does Go, oh, wait, go west, go west, go west. Oh. oh, Ace. Well, look at Ace already has the E pickup in the air. They were ready. They were ready. They knew that the the possibility that this was going to leave them. So no vehicle, no problem. We have a uh, an E pickup that we'll use for Circle Two. But where are they going to go? <laughs> I don't know. But look, it's, you've already got uh, you've already got so many teams going, and as you said, Ace's crew they're coming into the circle. Old Guard they've got. A lot of traffic coming their way. The circle is bad, but there's so much water in there. There's unplayable on the upside. Falcons making their move as they migrate in from the south. They might run into gas cans. It's this is a, usually part of what happens is you get this inverse donut effect where everybody's in the center and the edge sure. is clear. Yeah, yeah. All the points of entry to the circle are just jam packed. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, considering 
how uh how many teams kind of fell right on top of each other in the early game right off the plane and, and how many fights we saw breaking out so where toffees couldn't even hang out and uh and chat with us it, it, there's still 61 alive in the lobby mm -hmm. and they like you said like there's there's that high ground that's kind of right in the middle but there's it's not a great high ground that you can kind of feel comfortable playing so everybody's just kind of playing on the edge of it and slow pushing in and, and and as a result like you said it's it's that inverse donut everybody's just kind of on the outside and then plus you got the entire north side of the map that's cut off right yep. so they're, they're, you can't even play up there and so you 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 it's either it's either you play from the west to the center in the west or you try to opt for these wide open fields on the far uh eastern side of the map where 55 and ace are and they're just getting lit up from range right now so it's just there's just no good options it's a pseudo phase three right it's phase two but there's a phase three worth of land oh nice shot from gats but justice will take quite a bit or send quite a bit of damage back the other way this is that fight that's kind of been going on for quite a while now. It's been, what, five minutes nearly since that first knock? Uh oh. But, oh, here we go. Kerak, we've seen him already do it once. This time it's Bestia, though, as Silzen jumps out. Brisa gets the first knock. There's a great knock from Kerak as Silzen will fall. Peep and Sharp, but look what Sharp has in his hands right now. Oh, man, if Brisa could have stayed alive just a little bit longer. Kerak might have been able to pull something off here, but Sharp already on the move. As he said, he's got that... Noob tube in. Oh, okay. Karak, if I'm Karak, I'm so mad. I mean, it is what it is. Like, every any everybody in the game can use them, right? Yeah. Sharp just said, "Look, you're gonna take what I've got to give." That's exactly what happened. And spam are eliminated. Vox is pushing up though. Here's another pan. Oh, no. Let's see if Sharp is gonna get a taste of his own medicine. Voxic, who I think has been playing the best PUBG of his life over the last few weeks, he's got the Panzer. And look at where Panther's playing as well. So Panther's got the overview over this fight. He can Wait, feed information, to the right, but now he's right. on his way. Oh, Draft King. He just barely got a glimpse of him running around. I don't think, yeah, Vox didn't see him nicely done. There you go. He will get spotted out by Adam, though. Immediate trade before he can get the flush. No, he does, he does get the flush on the Vox. Okay. Uh, so at least one point picked up. Oh. Get there. Sharp shot. One. Can he get another one? No. Gas cans uh. barely stay alive in that one. That's a, that's a good ass flush. That's a good fight right there, man. Yeah, look at the shift, though. Ugh, to the that's... wide open fields. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Like oh, Ace's no. crew and 55 Esports are probably in the best position of the circle right now. This is very, very rough. Shoot to kill third party. And there you go. Alo will get the kill. And Sharpshot finally gets that extra point for Bestia. But down go the gas cans. They're up in 73 points though. So they're pretty safe into that next round. STK starting to put a game together now as well. But I've looked at the map again and what we've got one, two, three, four, five, six teams that technically aren't in the circle yet. That's almost it's, half it's, the teams. It's brutal. And STK's got a real long way to go. And the thing is, is the teams that are kind of hugging that western side of the zone, uh, where the blue zone is rather, are all looking at rotating north to get inside. Uh, it looks like STK, they, they were looking that direction, now looking towards coming to the south side. So, um, even still, a number of teams already inside the zone. The north side, a little bit clear. South side is just packed. So SDK is going to be in some trouble here. They've got they've got some work cut out for them. And, uh, and oh, got those Chicos. They got another E pickup. So, okay, we'll see where they decide to go. I, I'm, I'm ready for it. Get, get them to the coastline. Get up right? on that north coast. Play, play there the zone that you think will have the least resistance. Rats rotating in on the north side of the circle from the west as well. I think they're going to play that coastline and wait and see what way the zone shifts. The Gatos Chicos, they are now up in the air. And uh, not a hobby, though. Good game for them. Here we go. There's the Gatos Chicos. Where, where, oh, where did they <laughs> even they think it's on the free? other side of the river. Do it. Do it. It'll kill them, though, Paro. It will, but... I mean, I think they can play from the coast. I think they, they are, are they're going to try to drop around on top of 55, maybe? I think that maybe that compound is open. They might not even get the chance. Ace is already just laying into them. And nobody's taking out just yet. But yeah, I think Gatos Chicos had eyes on this compound where 55 was. And now they're realizing 55's not even taking shots at them. 
Oh, yeah. there they are. Okay, now slide. Okay, now they Ooh, are. They got. They waited until they got a little shot. bit lower. The baits from 55. Lopez hits those, by the way. Latino has been knocked by STK and flushed out pretty quickly, but 55 hitting the shots when it matters. I, I'm going to be honest oh. with you, Paro. Oh, no, okay, that wasn't, that wasn't well. it. It was mine. It was mine. You know it wasn't you, you. You know when you see the kill feed and you see a shot out at the same time and it kind of tricks you sometimes? Oh, it does that to me yeah. every time. I, I'm going to be honest. I remember I was talking about circles that players don't really know how to play or they don't <laughs> Do i think, think this, this is one, one of those i think that they're gonna go is this clear and they'll be like oh actually no everyone's got an angle on me we're gonna see some teams just constantly repositioning to find that you know the way a cat goes around in circles to find the right <laughs> spot to lie down that's yes that's what some teams are going to do here trying to find the spot. exactly what's gonna happen is they is they look around and it's like okay wide open field what do we know about this? Not much? Okay, got those Chicos, does get eliminated by 55. Good job on 55 actually pushing out of the compound that they were in to go and secure those kills. Uh, they do have rats kind of creeping in from the north as well. Elevate. This is all the, oh, look at this. This is just, uh, yeah, they don't even, they don't even waste time. Just push over. This is all you have to do. You have to be hyper aggressive. Legacy, they're gonna find Poonage. Actually flush him out while they flush their own player out. Actually, Xera might have been priming a grenade. That might have been what did it. And uh, unfortunate there for Poonage. Yeah, Snakers gets the long range knock, but it is nice to see Elevate playing with a little bit more aggression. Shin Boy has got a decision to make whether to go for the res. Daryl will find Curse on these teams make their way in from the edge of the circle now too. BL will fire oh. shots off, but RB has got great cover from the other side and BL falls. Here's Santa tossing the trying to confirm out the knock that was found a little bit earlier. But Pichao, they're in a huge fight. This is a Latam on Latam violence. Yeah, VA said has the hard cover. Satasuko now has Net uh, Nintendo has finally arrived, I think. Yeah, he's going to join them on this push. They keep using all the utility they've got to try to get what uh, get VHC, but he's not going down as he's just using that hard. Going to try to go for the wrap here. No, Satasuko ready for it. Like I see, going to get eliminated just like that. Yeah, and that is going to be Pichao. So they didn't last much longer they went out in 11th but rats pushing up to 55 esports they wrapped all the way from the west over to the northeast of the circle and let's see how much aggression they're going to play with utility is at a premium though you can see gats has got absolutely nothing to play with here they need that first knock they need to find some air, some access into this compound and they're trying to isolate these 55 esports members to do so yeah the problem for them is 55 is not really giving them a whole lot. Okay, now they spotted out Lopez. Nice shots from Gats through the door. We'll get Grant Lannis, so that's a trade coming through. Rest of the rats taking the high ground on the roof. Not the best play they've got available to them. Slabby may have revealed himself. Glock gonna go down. Good shots from Gats again as Psycho is right there. He's feeding that information over, letting them know that Psycho is in there. They gotta push this out. Good stuff from rats once again. Chun will be the one to get salmon now down to one. 455 is going to be slabby. And I think that if they get that kill on the slabby or they secure this point, that they're not going to be too annoyed about losing Hooligan. My mindset is you get three, four points, it's worth the players. Ooh. Oh my God, slabby is just given to spoon a third eye. Get it? Because third eye yeah. to spoon. Yeah, see what I did there? See I like what it. I did I like there? It. I like it. <laughs> Some throwback references here. Yeah. But that's Look a big this. knock. Oh, oh okay. First shot didn't do it. Second shot. Well, Gats is kind of on one right now. He's hitting some uh, some very important shots when they need to be hit. Is uh, Panella good? Down to just Sony and Abs. And they are pinned right up against the trees, trying to get rid of what's left of not a hobby. See if they can get a few more points, but Falcon's also sending shots over in that direction. Mm hmm. Mimes holding, as you said, not a hobby. They're on the edge of the circle. You've got Panella Good there. Old Guard off in the distance as well. They're on the other side of the zone looking in. And this is phase five. So the fun in the blue is going to end. Look, look at the amount of damage Sonic's Oof. took. Just, he's taken five damage. Oh, uh -oh. oh no. <laughs> That's a treat. There we Old go, treat. Sonic. Look, here's the thing. You know what Sonic's like? The more momentum he builds, the quicker that he goes as he makes his way. In the circle STK, they've got to rotate in now too. Not a hobby fall at the edge of the circle. Man, this is rough. 
this is not great this is it's, it's not great you, you just hope that the smokes will slow things down enough to where you can maybe catch someone slipping here stk taking their time with it alo knows exactly where vegas is puts the grenade right in his pocket and now shin boy the last one of the last known survivor elevate the only there you go he's gonna get spotted out by luke the grenade's gonna do it stk now up to five kills they've made it to the top seven top eight 20 alive three up still for stk they might have something to say here they've got some work to do though ace is right next to him future coming from the blue yeah i was gonna say future's the troublemaker here as sparking sends it and Nelagood are eliminated as you hear the golden fire but sparking is sending it towards falcons who may just find the kills. I love the, I love the player POV when they're trying to find that position to play. Shap will push as that is what we were talking about. Future coming in from the south. Luke 12 is going to get stolen now too. And Future are just being a thorn in these sides as they turn their attention towards the Aces crew. Yeah, Future just playing the slow game, playing the long con, hoping Ooh. that they can sneak up on a fight when they're not being expected. And it worked out a little bit, but now Shap, the last one here, Danimon uh, is going to try to Find him over the ridge line. The flashbangs keep coming through. They've got, they just got to get rid of this. They don't want to lose anybody. And just like that, Donovan going to go down and he's going to get flushed. Oh no. You didn't want to be that aggressive by yourself, man. They had no choice to though, really, did they? With the blue rats, they've grabbed themselves a calm point. Sparking is hiding in the corner of a field. Falcons are leaving their position as old guard. Oh, Sparking, here we go. Sparking has got... Hello, wait, actually, I was expecting Falcons to keep moving and standing oh! it out. And Sparking's going to get a double. What a need from Sparking. Oh, it hits right where it needs to. That's going to be two immediately down. Snakers trying to actually, Snakers can't even focus on what's in front of him because he's getting shot at from the back. OG coming around and uh, actually leaving their compound backfilling Falcon. Snakers, the last one alive. Sparking's still in there. Rats not interested in pushing across the road just yet snakers will be spotted by zealot from the south side so that actually clears up a little bit of room here for og still four strong as og just kind of controlling the north side of the road yeah and they stole those two knocks as well that sparking had getting those extra points on the board it's a four v3 v3 v1 Rats are extending out. They've got three. They're one of the te they're one of the teams with maybe more ground to play with than everybody else, and they're making it count as they move towards the Aces crew. Old guard though, like, these are horrible positions to fight in because this, this is worse than the fields on on Erigel, right? Because it's even easier to hide and Jam will step up and take down to Spoon. That's uh, not great. I mean, I, I, I get what Old Guard's doing. They've got to clear that north side of the road before they can really. Uh, just free peek over the top of it over the top of those ridges and not worry about it and actually oh sparking still in it gonna find kill demo but he again that grenade will do him in so stk does finish in fourth place a nice little uh, stack of kills to go along with them so they climb out of last at least but old guard i mean even though they're four up it doesn't feel like this is their game to lose yeah, it's it's pretty it's a pretty strange circle. Like you'd look at Ace's crew, like they could take it on the south. Old guard did take a knock, but they get all their DBNOs back on their feet. Ace's crew will do. You'd expect them to do the same, but on the mini map, it, it doesn't look like they're making the move just yet. But I think Finn Finna will make that that jump. But old guard need to deal with rats, and they're all playing for these drops as well. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> rats and old guard kind of the beneficiaries here and uh looking down at aces they, they took a knock they get the res back up i think aces it's it's almost you 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 want to wait this one out i think you take shots when you can but don't don't be overly aggressive don't push into this just kind of hope that maybe og and rats will clear each other out and maybe hurt each other enough to where you can come in as that third party and and get the win while you've got three up but uh it's all going to depend on what this next circle does it's going to cut in favor of the north side so aces are going to have to get on the move yeah he's been moving into the circle zone shift as you said went towards the north and i think rats are in a good spot but i want to know how aces crew play this because you can see the lines on the field they can just move up 
go prone. Go over the ridge line, go prone again. Like, as long as nobody's playing on top of the road, everybody can just play the snake. And that's what we're seeing. But Ace's crew will send it closer to the circle, get another ridge line. And even having a car power in the late game could be so important here. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. It's, uh... I feel like Rats knows that that I, I feel like Rats knows what Aces is trying to do here, right? I feel like they know that Aces would love to slow play this. They're just going to keep kind of plinking shots into the back of Rats and try to force them to engage with OG. But uh, fortunately for OG, they still have their, their ridge line on their road that they can work with as well. And it looks like they've got vehicle uh, that they can use as well. So I uh, really, this is just going to be a slow, slow game. I, I would be surprised, honestly, if we see anybody get knocked and flushed in this circle i'm with you on this one it's it'll the person who gets too aggressive is the person who's probably going to sustain a knock or a flush june peak spotted out by finna finna of course has been in the scene for a long time now i know that they spoke about him a little bit yesterday but he will move and call the rest of his team further forward i don't know it's just it's re really hard to call where the next knock is going to come from and i feel bad for the observers trying to pick yeah. one of these fights yeah, I mean, well, and then if you, unfortunately for Aces too, you look at OG and Rats, they just got the little uh, little influx of loot as well from the Sky Gods. So, you know, you, you've you got to be thinking in your head, okay, well, now they all have full armor and helmets, right? Mm -hmm. Like they've got, they've got all the things that we don't, and we're kind of beaten and busted on this south side. Really, let's just, let's just stay down here. And I think that's exactly what they do. They're just grouping up. Uh, they're holding on to the utility that they have. Everybody kind of holding on to the utility they have, except for Chun, I guess, who was in a spot where he had to drop that smoke. But, um, I mean, look at Gats. I mean, all he can do is lie prone here. It's not just Gats. Kill Demo is the exact same. There's so many players on their bellies. And this is what I'm talking about. At least on Arangil, there's way less of these ridge lines that players can go up against. So it does slow the pace down quite a bit it's high will, ridges yeah yeah it's, it's like look this is this is the pov right you do not see rats unless you go up on top of that line but if you go up on top of that line everyone's going to start shooting at you so mm -hmm. it's, it's just a case of hold it's like old trench warfare and like world war one yep yep so it's playing as uh, safely and carefully as possible now it looks like aces might be considering a move towards the west and i actually wouldn't really hate that uh right now they're on the same side of the road as as rats but the the problem for aces is can you get across that road and not lose anybody can you get there without taking any damage if they've got the smokes for it then sure but i don't know if, if now's the time for that you can see og starting to smoke off the road and starting to think about coming over now that's a smart decision. They're they're taking the fight towards rats. Peeking his kill demo. Does a bit oh, of damage on the tune. And that's the first knock that is going to happen. And that might be the door open. Blue zones being thrown. And that's actually tricky because kill demo has to walk around it to get in to try to flush out his kill. But you see the damage ticking on the rats now too. As gas takes on kill demo. Flushes out the kill and it's a 4v3 v1 now. Yeah, you can see Ace has actually smoked off that road and they started thinking about going over uh, onto the other side, but then they saw the knock come through. And uh, and now I think they realize that the that this position is the better one. So Gats, all he can really do is snake this one out and hope that he can maybe catch somebody slipping as they make their way over the road. But OG, they've still got their little spot that they can work here. They've got vehicles. Zealot, actually, <laughs> what the heck was that angle? Zealot gonna find Egan and almost gets a second. Zyla, he used to be called in Rage Zealot, and he is certainly playing with a bit of Rage here, getting that knock, and the center point has been drawn. Phase 9, we are going to the death on this one. Jam, still prone, Affinite close by as well, and those deployable shields are big.
Get him packed in the game. Zealot gets another knock, Poro, as Old Guard now have two players down. Oh, they got to get rid of Gats here, man. They they are focusing a lot of attention on Gats for, for good reason, obviously. He's right on the side. And actually, Gats going to find Finn, so that's going to slow down Aces even more as somehow Gats still alive. Only six bandies to his name, though, and he's so, so low. Thinks about getting up, has to drop back down again oh, with that flash, like. expecting the push coming through. There it is, Jam. We'll finish him off. But fortunately for uh, for Aces, oh no. Never mind. That that knock is huge. I mean, it, OG was going for their reses, so that was going to allow them to get Finna back on his feet. But I think Zella, Zealot maybe getting a, too, a little bit too overzealous mm -hmm. in, uh, in peaking that by himself. Uh, Jam's going to go for the big play, the hero play on the north, but he's going to get caught out, steps into the blue, Kai Shen gets the kill, and it's now a 3v1, make it a 3v none, as Old Guard take a 10 kill win, 20 points for them, and that's a nice pocket of points, they have just found themselves. Poro, that was one of the strangest couple of phases <laughs> of PUBG I have ever cast right the p what was the pacing because the players were just prone in a field for like 10 minutes i mean that that was all they could do really i mean it, it was such a wild mid game and uh and so many deaths i mean i can't even remember what was happening look at pippa with the drive-by mini that's absolutely nuts but uh toffee's gonna join us in now uh you had plenty of time to dissect what was going on there at the late game there toffee i had time to dissect i had time to make popcorn i had time to get a drink uh <laughs> you know it's funny we started this game being like ah oh, tango it's a lot of fun like i really like this map and then that happened so that's interesting but it was fun to see teams face a challenge, right? None of the favorites really went the distance. Teams who sort of had to try something new, maybe weren't experienced at this. But I love this moment by Poonage. He comes over the top and Legacy gets dominated, but that's just the circle, man. There was nothing anyone could do except make the best of whatever lemons the game tossed at them. Yeah, it just felt like this was, you know, you had a, a handful of decisions that you could make and you had to make it whatever you decided to do you had to do it in about a quarter of a second because otherwise you were you were either going to lose the spot or somebody was going to creep up behind you or you know somebody was going to peek the ridge that you, you didn't even know was there just absolutely wild stuff and uh i mean gotta give credit to sparking he kind of pulled off some magic there towards the the late game there for sdk get him back in there but yeah this was i mean we, uh, Gibson, you and I have been watching this game enough. We, it's almost like we knew exactly how the end game was going to go with these with three circles left and three teams it, remaining. It was basically a three four team game of whack a mole, right? Whichever yeah. person stuck their head up first, it was like, yep, yeah, there, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, and then get back down into cover. Eventually, as always, the blue zone, like time itself, comes for everybody and started forcing players closer and closer together. And it was the team that just kept its nose out of trouble the longest they got the win, right? Old Guard, they stayed yep. four up for most of that one. They didn't extend too much toffees, and everyone else had taken a beating, and it was pretty easy for them in that final phase. But I think the key there is that Old Guard preserved their utility. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the big one for me, is that that you kind of brought this up. It plays a little bit like that North Georgia fold with the Gadka field, but there's way more cover. There's way more extensive ability to sort of stay in the low ground. And they knew when that last fight breaks out, if we have these blue zones on standby, if we can make it almost impossible to sort of push the berm, then we're just going to be able to win by attrition because blue is going to force the hand of the team against us. And I respect that that was the choice they made. They came away with 20 points. Big one for Ace's crew, though, Poro. For a reminder for everyone, after day one, they finished with a whopping, prepare for this, seven points. So they <laughs> were on eight. Yeah, exactly. Not great. That The bottom drops out there. Today, totally different Ace's crew. Is it enough to get to the top eight for the cutoff? I'm going to be honest to say probably not. But... It means last chance qualifier when they find themselves there, which I think is likely, unless they go bananas in the last three games, they are looking like a totally different team today. No, they've looked fantastic. And, and to be honest, the the only way that Old Guard was not going to win that last mm -hmm. game was if Ace's crew 
was able to pull off something magical and zealot almost did mm -hmm. i mean it was very very close and uh and old i mean he if he would have gotten that second knock i can guarantee you that that i i almost feel like aces crew wins that the only thing that was keeping them from uh from crossing over there and fully putting their full attention towards og was that last remaining player from rats that yep. unfortunately got the knock uh and then you know a zealot tries to tries to peek it uh while they were going for the res so he didn't have any real support Had one guy peeking two guys looking and then unfortunately for him he goes down but uh but yeah i mean it, you play that la that end game out 10 times aces crew might get five of those just based off of how zealot was playing right there and I want to back, walk back something I just said a little bit for a second, Gibson, because I said Aces crew probably not going to pull this off, and I still stand by that for the most part. Mm -hmm. But if they have three more games like they had these first three, they will cross that 30 mark or that 70 mark and have a very good chance of advancing. So I guess that goes to say for the teams playing tomorrow, uh, you're not out of it till you're out of it. To go from seven to competitive is actually pretty impressive in three games. It is, and when you consider the fact that this is the day that's got teams like STK, Bastia yeah. coming in, you've got, you know, Falcons. I'm re I think that Aces crew have done a great job. It would kind of make you question what went wrong yesterday mm -hmm. because, you know, they have not changed anybody in the roster. They're definitely playing with a bit more confidence. I think that they're they're on the right path, but I still think it's going to be really hard to get another 30, 40 points in the lobby like this one. I agree with that. I think the journey is going to be tough for some of these teams. We see those guys uh, locking up like Legacy, trying to make sure that they have the run to not have to worry about the loser's bracket. Remember, all we're playing for this weekend is top eight to go straight to the winner's bracket. We're going to be back in about three minutes with the next match, so don't go anywhere. This time, it is on Vikendi. Welcome back. My name is Tavis. I got Porosaurus and Gibson. We're halfway through the group stages, but for if teams in Group B, we're almost done with their ability to put points on the board. We're playing for top eight. You want to go to the winner's bracket or at least get hot for what I'll just call the loser's bracket, though I guess last chance qualifier sounds more polite. Uh, but that's really what it's it comes goodness. down to, a chance to get – it is what it is. You got to get back into this thing. That last game, well, it was, it was something, Gibson, and I think maybe it's time for us to – Look forward to Vikendi <laughs> instead of worrying too much about the past that was Tego. Uh, but what's your final takeaway from Tego before we move on? It's just chaos as always. When you get circles like that, you get a lot of kills in the opening phases. You even pointed it out yourself, but it, it slowed way down. 
I just think there's certain parts of the map where teams aren't 100% comfortable fighting in yet. But Tago's done and dusted for tonight. I love looking forward to the future. And it's about to get cold now. It's going to get cold not only in gameplay, but for some of these teams. Because this is that part where the rubber hits the road if you're in Group B. If you're sitting on the cusp and you're not near that 70 where we think the cutoff might be, Poro. This is the moment... You got to take those risks. You got to go hunting, right? We saw teams like STK do it in the last game, but they've got a bright future and a lot of games ahead of them. For those teams that are on the chase, is this where they get a little bit rowdy? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to you got to make something happen now, right? Like you got to do everything you can to get as many points as you can in these last three games. Uh, it's either that or you just accept your destiny and know that you're going to the LCQ. Even then, I would say I would argue that now is the time to start trying different stuff and just uh, and seeing how uh, what works out and how your comms work out in stressful situations going into that LCQ. So uh, either way, you know, you got something to play for here in these final three. And absolutely. Now, let's hope. I'm pulling for it. Just a nice middle circle. Everyone in the game. It's tied. After that last one, I think we need a good uh, a good rah-rah for the lads. Now, as we uh. get into the drops, nah, 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 you're like giving like horrible stuff. I, there yeah. is rumors there might be some hot drops here, and it looks like we are having our first potential contest, like really early contest. Do you think this turns into a fight, Gibson, or do they just split the town? Mm. I, I think they'll they'll fight at least. There'll be some shots traded back and forth between the two and Deca Mesto. I think that Panella Good mm -hmm. are a team that will be chasing points, so maybe they might uh, try get aggressive with Rats. And I said this about them in the pre-show. They don't care who, who's there. Mm. If they think they can get points, they're going to get aggressive. That checks out. Especially, you know, we talked about those standings. Everybody sort of got into this one. And... Uh, Gas Cans Legacy, these uh, these teams are feeling very, very good going into tomorrow. Uh, but when we talk about what Panella has to do to sort of set themselves up for a big run, I think they're at three, is that three points, seven points right now? They, it's been a struggle. Do you see them picking it up, growing forward? Uh, is this a team that has a lot of potential, or are we still just watching, like, young development? Uh, I, I'll take this one. I'll, I'll, take this I'll, one. I'll give this one to you. <laughs> yeah, I, so... It's it's a really weird one because I've spoken to some of the NA teams and the NA teams are like, you know, they feel like they can out-muscle Panella Good even though their logo is pretty buff. Um, they feel like they can kind of force them into very uncomfortable posi positions. South American teams have a bit more respect on, on the roster, like they've earned the right to be here. But they've just not shown Ooh. what got them here. Uh, speaking about not showing, Justice is going to hope that he doesn't show up in the line of sight to Future because he's prone right now. And I'm going to be, it looks like Future are haunting him too. He went prone at the last possible second before those two guys rounded the corner over there. He almost got spotted. Mm -hmm. Cat-like reflexes. Oh, I see what oh, you did there. Gets himself out. Rant? Right, I did. But the rest <laughs> of his team's coming. So we'll keep an eye on that on the map. You want to check back in with Penelope Good as they sort of go up against Rats here. And I don't... I, it's funny. It's just they can't get away from rats and cats. Every single, it's just they go back and forth between these two, these two. Uh, well, that's your early teams. game scrappers, isn't it? It really is, oh. though. Oh, here oh. we go. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Justice steps up. Doesn't get shut down, but the trade is there, and the rest of Gatos Chicos are on the way in as well. Sam Crow, he's going to drop really low as he pops that first. The drive-by attempt comes through, but this is what you want. Oh, this is this is exactly those early game fights and Frogman. You give him a little bit Let's of a, a kick up the backside last time with you saying it doesn't last very long. There's a point on the board for him. That's my man's. All right, Frogman, get in there, future. You can win this fight. You are ahead. Maybe stop down, get that res on the shap, get everybody up to full strength. Keegan and Hula, Hula Keegan's just rocking an MP5 right now of all things. So uh, it's not looking great. For the Gatos Chicos. And uh, and now look at this Slabby actually creeping over here as well. He's, so he's seeing, he can maybe get a slice of what's going on. And he might actually spot out Keegan. Hooligan being the aggressor here. Sam Crow just looting up in that smoke. But that smoke's dying. Oh, I oh. spot. He spotted him. Oh, he's, he's definitely, so he's taking a ton of damage there. And look at the POV of Slavi as he does go prone. And he's, he knows exactly where he is. Three, go on, oh, fire. Keegan. Go on, shit, shit, shit. Why, why is he not oh, doing it? Oh, I don't I'm know. I'm Slavi, sad. what are you doing, bro? That was free. I guess, okay, the rest of his team is, is kind of arriving. So maybe 
Oh, and now look at this. Not a hobby. Actually going to find Keegan as well. But look, I love this from Future, man. They are being hyper aggressive. Slabby comes up over the top, sprays him down, but doesn't get a knock. Yeah, Future extended out of the calm point, trying to wrap around Keegan, not knowing that Psycho is here along with Slabby. Back monster, as you said, he's going to get one floor. Bush quick gets another as not a hobby are farming points off with this one from what is a position of real relative safety for them so i think future will fall back inside the compound this is the right decision for them to do in this scenario if anything i would just play it really safe uh, but the problem is hooligan is still there and it doesn't look like they're very aware of his positioning four teams collapsing on this compound on the southern coast outside of the zone no some grow yeah we'll get, we'll get that one can he get it oh we'll get it. god please god please oh frog man, frog man. yes yeah, let's go the box my dude you've earned it he hopped around the corner and picked up that kill <laughs> i hate you so much two <laughs> kills for frog man in this the fourth game and uh look he might have only had a, a total of seven minutes played today but the last two minutes played were very productive mm -hmm. i mean keep oh, that no. up it's Still much better some... bl picks up that kill though that's uh, another one for pichao who uh they could they could certainly do with getting more points sitting on 47 right now i want to speak about not a hobby though right so yeah they've openly said that they were like a for fun team you know they, they weren't really scrimming they went into the open qualifiers they went on a run i'd say they were comfortable like it, they didn't really seem to me at any point like they were at risk of not qualifying for the grand finals which surprised people uh -huh. they're you know what they might not be out there going with these huge flashy plays right but they're incredibly consistent like even when they're they're not popping up in the kill feed they're getting into the placement points and that's one of the harder things to do yeah i mean look hey uh it, that's all you really need to do like i said it's it's you know the any given sunday is a is a is a thing from football but it's saturday but really fall. any any given any given weekend any given lobby that you get in PUBG, you could have a team that has just you know constantly been kind of middling or or just uh around uh you know every now and then makes a run you never know you never mm -hmm. know who's going to be that team that just catches fire on a weekend just because they get a little bit of circle luck a lot of things break the way uh, they need to for them to find success and all of these guys are capable at this point of recognizing when they are in advantageous positions right and 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 capitalizing on uh on those those advantages so uh even, even a team like not a hobby like those guys have been playing in the scene for a long time man they know what to when they they know when they're having a good day and when to capitalize on it yeah back monster and zolmox in particular like i i've seen them playing for for a couple of years now oh yeah arson too yep yeah, yep yeah. it's just it's just nice to see these guys playing in the finals grant is going to bike his way out of here I, I i don't know about you but i love the addition of the bike not just because it's, it's a great mode of transport in the game. but don't you love it when players use it to block doors as well it's like yeah you're not getting in here because there's a bike i i love the bike like i'll i just ride around on the bike for funsies like i i've died so many times in this game just because i'm like riding around just jumping off of stuff like being off in my own little world just because i, I just because i enjoy it i like the bike but anyway bizzler they spotted out ace i hope don't think he knows that jam has a uh, an arm otherwise he might not be so uh so cavalier with those four mini peaks over the ridge line i'd say the fact that there was a, a you know a ghillie suit on him as well meant yeah one of the reasons he didn't shoot because you're thinking right well he has a level three helmet and vest so it's going to take an extra few mini shots here as well so that's why he didn't but i think the best idea when there's an arm looking your way or the minute you see him a ghillie suit is to don't peek just do yep. not do not peek because this guy's got either a p90 an mg an mk an arm like none of those things are fun to fight against he's got something that's gonna suck to get shot by and uh <laughs>
Looks like busy. I mean, he's still he's still just keeping track of him. I don't know if Jam's really spotted him out yet. Unfortunately for Jam, he's got to have a four X on that arm. But I think a few shots came in, forced him down. Won't let him peek, but I think Richie might have just been sending those on his way out. The rest of the boys just kind of making their way over from the northwest as we wait and see where the circle goes and we donut right to the middle. And this is a really fun circle because you've got the hills that Elevator playing right now. You've got on the other side of things, Ace's crew have a little ridge line. Up to the north, you've got Bessia's three. There's tons of playable positions in the circle that are already locked in. I want to see what the teams on the outside decide to do. And, you know, you, if you're looking at the mini map, you can see that rats are fighting with Future as well into the south. They're rotating out of here. Not a hobby are making their way into the zone as well. I think if rats could get themselves in a spot of bother here if they don't rotate in any sooner because everywhere could be gone. I, I think they've got a, they've got a, uh oh, never mind. We've got a, another problem right here is Old Guard. They're going to get crashed on too by Aces as Aces continue their run here. Zealot going to find he again. It's the instant knock and flush. Kill Demo though will sneak in from the side. We'll find the knock on to Zealot. Won't get the flush though as the rest of our old guard coming in. Kaishin now peeking from the side as Aces is getting picked apart from both angles here. Yeah, this is what you don't want when you crash the third party. Swing around the corner from Jam. He finds Kai Shen, though. Kill Demo is firing towards his teammate. Finna takes a ton of damage, but still on his feet. The Ooh. angle from Jam will find Kill Demo as Ace's crew are really starting to put a number on the stone. But it's STK this time third partying as they see the chance of some free points. And Jam is just going to confirm out his kills because he might not know how many more are available. Yeah, it looks like... The rest of OG try to pull off here. Necro. There you go. The bl the bike blocking the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as uh, the, the blue zone grenade will come through to try to see if he can maybe force them into one direction as Necro oh, flashes himself. In I don't know how that flashed him. It seemed a million miles away, but STK still creeping over here. Still wanting to get involved. This Caracal finds Psycho once again. The Panzer Faust. Coming into play early. I love it. Like, I, I love and hate it at the same time. It's great for a caster, terrible for a player. LFP gets a knock on to Alo as this fight will continue in Naros. That's Legacy pushing in from the west. Aces crew making Ooh. their push, and there's Danimon wiping out Necro. Old guard fall, and Aces crew, heck, heck, they're picking up more points again. They've two up, the four kills, and they're inside the city. If this zone keeps shifting their way, they could find themselves in a very good position once more. Oh, I mean, we saw what they could do as a, as a duo and a solo in game number one, and that worked out pretty well for them as they finished in second place with 10 kills. We'll see what Donnie Mon and Jam do for the rest of this game. STK, though, it was looking so great whenever they were third partying the fight over here, and now the grenades are coming through. Are they going to load? Oh. oh, they do go far enough, Donnie Mon. Will re knock Alo, but won't get Kurt. Smokes there, oh, though. The arm. Oh, that's right in his. Oh, no! Come on, one of the. There we go. There's the. Per... Oh, that blue oh. zone. That actually no. went into Kurt's hand. Like, Kurt had that blue zone nade in his hand for a second. The second one, there's Alo confirmed out. Kurt takes a little bit of damage, but that's really good again from Ace's crew, getting points onto the board. You got Falcons, Panella Good, STK, Ace's crew all playing inside of Naros with not a hobby moving as well. Chap spots out 55 esports. I think Future, even though yesterday was let let's be real, it was it was bad for them. Like I I'm I find it very, very difficult to say bad things about teams, mm -hmm. but yesterday was atrocious. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they're doing they're doing better today, right? If they're gonna be there next weekend. I don't think there's any denying that at this point. But sure. It's about building momentum and starting to get some confidence back from yesterday. Well that's what I like what they're doing in this game, particularly. Like like leaving that compound, taking that fight early on, they end up getting the they end up getting the win. Mm -hmm. and that puts a little wind in your sails, man. I mean you you so far through two days, their wheels have just been spinning. And you never, you, you, it's, you never know what's going to be the thing that triggers uh, a turnaround. But if you keep doing the same stuff, you're going to see the, keep seeing the same results here oh. as, oh, Lopez has the, the sneaky, cheeky 
banister play. It's because we spoke about future that things are going to go really of bad now. Um, of course. Lopez spots him out. Lopez gets the knock. There's Terrazoka. He will be knocked. Molly to confirm. Peaks on the other side. Didn't, took, I didn't think he seen him. Oh Frogman did get caught though. Lopez goes down to 9 HP. And the solo from 55 Esports has only got Shap to find. And if he does, he gets a big couple of points. But he looks the wrong way. Shap gets the kill. And future should at least get, should get both of these reses. Uh, rats is starting to creep in from the east, but we'll check in with Legacy real quick. They, they, I mean, they have so much control over this side of the city, this northwestern side of the of the city. Actually, everything on the west really is uh, under the purview of Legacy. Now they do see not a hobby off to the north. Take a few shots over in that direction just to scare them away. But as far as the west side of this zone goes, Legacy complete control. Yeah, and that's the way they like it. Nobody's going to push in from the west. I think not a hobby. Maybe could be a problem from the north side. But if I were not a hobby, they're probably just going to chill on the edge of the circle and wait for that next zone shift. Because worst case scenario, you just full send it inside of Daros. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario, the zone stays your way. Here are rats at the ready. Futures getting utility tossed their way. And the rats have just got some really good angles being held here on Future. Oh, there you go. Gats will find Shep with the grenade. Now it's all down to Frogman as the more utility keeps being sent their way. And uh, as you said, not a hobby. They tried to make a move, but look how far out Legacy uh, decided to stretch just to get shots onto this to try to get some points as there you go. Gats will finish him off. That'll be it for Frogman. Future goes out in 13th, but they go out with a f uh, nice little five kill uh, performance from themselves yeah good performance by them bestia here graft king has got himself an mk some level three gears that that emergency pickup will get them right and ready for some more late game fights but if you keep an eye on the mini map sharp is rotating towards the east which is exactly where rats are playing these players inside of naros right they've all got on the right side of the circle now for all intents and purposes they've all got buildings that they're going to play when the buildings are laid out like they are, nobody's going to push anyone, right? It's all about peeking through windows. If you get a knock, you will push. But for now, people are going to hold their ground. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be the first one to move. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be the last. It's basically a game of chicken of who's going to leave the city first. So right now, Legacy, they had to leave. They were on that western side. They end up... Uh, moving in just as not a hobby pulls away so we'll see where they decide to pull in as not a hobby lose one they still have two up though and it looks like they're trying to position themselves in such a way where they can kind of keep track on who is coming out of the city and when but falcons a few shots over that direction just to let them know hey we do have angles on you yeah, Danny Mon finds the knock on them, but I think they should get the res as they push inside the shack. Ace's crew will demobilize the Zima. You know, I always like to say mobility is winnability, particularly as you get into the late game, and that'll be a big problem for them. I'm looking elsewhere for, you know, areas of potential conflict. To the north, you have Gascans, Legacy, and Bastia all close by. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To the south, you've got Spam and Elevate, but Elevate have been holding this ridgeline for about three, four phases, and they have... Not really had to do anything and with their points total they would rather maybe be in a position where they do see more traffic and they could get more points on the board it's possible but it's also possible that they look at this circle and they see how it's playing out and they say look this is maybe our best shot for getting the 10 points for the victory right so maybe don't overstep our bounds let's keep our high ground advantage let's not over over push into anything uh, or get too crazy with it uh but let's also try to see if we can farm you know oh look at this draft king oh it's filthy that's mm -hmm. filthy poor richie they did it with the slow mo too like that i know they did him with the slow mo oh the richie i think I, i am adamant that slow mo makes every single shot it look does. way better than it was like <laughs> It was good. Put slow mo on the mic. Like, he's gonna get in sight. RBN, he's got gas cans in his sight. Looking over that range line, peaks once more. Legacy, they've had a pretty good two days so far. They're hoping to seal their spot. Santa with a great knock on the Grand Lanthus, though. 
Uh, that's happening, I think, way towards the... That's happening up on the north, right? Yeah, yeah, the legacy is... Uh... I mean, all these teams kind of positioning themselves to, to keep eyes on the city, right? And uh, unfortunately, looks like Legacy takes an eye. They, they should be able to get that res back on, though. But again, here we go. This is the game of chicken, the ultimate game of chicken. <laughs> I can only imagine how many smokes are going to come out here. As you can see even Luke still alive, eating a little bit of blue damage there for STK. But right on that edge of the circle... I'm sure, I wonder if he stopped there because he got spotted or because he spotted someone else. He's getting held anyway. That's, uh, I think it, it's hard to tell, right? We we didn't oh, see no. his people, but he's got a pa oh, oh, look. Do not, Luke's going about to do them so dirty. He steps in, <laughs> he spots them, he fires. There goes Jam as he has well and truly been splattered by that Panzerfaust. Luke's going to toss another nade through. Man, I just love seeing Luke back with STK. It feel, it just feels right. It just feels <laughs> right. As uh, he's going to try to send another blue zone grenade. He's going to force himself into, oh no. Oh, Luke, please stop. Oh. Where do you go? Did, right? do you, I feel like you may have done this to yourself, Luke. Uh, but uh, good on Ace for being able to pick up Jam and actually move him into safe territory here. Now, Luke does get him picked off eventually by Sonics, as you said. Uh, Grant Lana's still alive for Rats. Last player up and elevate for all their uh, slow play and for having that good position on the high ground on the south side. They're starting to lose people. It's a, it's a smorgasbord of color in the south right now with spam, elevate, rats, you've not a hobby there. I love the fact that Pichao have hit and run. They're getting out of there. They've seen all the traffic coming this way and they're going to avoid it. Get Barry with a good nade on the side. Switches over to the 3x spray. Finds one, X finds spray. two. Spam fall, not a hobby. Eliminated in 11th place and that's huge for spam they've still got three players up but they've dealt with one of the players they need to deal, deal with and now they're moving towards falcons as they start to leave naros still huge but unfortunately i they i worry about their backside elevate still alive but my i'm gonna find adam falcons trying to fight their way out of this city gas cans try to do a little hold but it's not paying off as they are just getting pulled apart now by spam and falcons big shots from gabiri this is gonna find another one is bail frost now coming into backfill this is what i was worried about for spam they still left two back yeah, and vegas is in the blue as well like a mile away you can't see him on the map right now but he's still in the blue as his teammate will fall and now i'm looking zone shifts pichao are pushing towards gas cans and they get the kill so down gas cans fall as we've got nine teams left alive in this one we're almost in the placement points Panella Good are holding on to that little bit of ground they can for as long as humanly possible, Poro. They really are, man. They have just got everybody sending shots their direction. The only good thing for them is that Aces is currently pre preoccupied with Legacy. Still four strong for Legacy. Daniman will get spotted by Gizera as a VHG will try to flush that kill out and yeah legacy this is just free farming at this point for them they keep the smoke wall up though just to make sure that they don't get third party from some direction that they were not expecting they're taking points though that other teams desperately need here on day two grand lantis finds brisa up on the hill spam in third place with 65 points but they want a few more to find safety. Rats, Grant Scott has won, but he's a solo player. So Poro, he's tossing no, the smokes towards his north so he can focus on pushing west. A hell of a game for spam here. Brisa down. Looks like they should be able to get this revive back. So back up to three strong. Herak just holding the line, making sure those, vibes, uh, those revives can come through. Falcons will finish off PMG and now turning their attention towards Legacy. So for all their strength and all their power on that north side, Legacy now starting to get picked apart here. Yeah, and it's Falcons moving the way. It's a battle of the Giants here. The biggest team in South America alongside Bestia fighting with probably the biggest, you know, one of the biggest two teams in the North America. Snakers, Peace. Kerak third parting. There was Flood. We'll find the knock on De Gizera. RBN's taking a ton of damage as well. But Falcons need to clear Legacy to, for to force their way into the circle. And there's Gizera gone. So now they can look inwards instead of outwards. Okay, RBN. 
on the 38 HP. He was actually getting shot at from Pippa all the way on the northeastern side. Not even sure how Pippa had an angle there. But RBN will survive a little bit longer spam, as we saw. It got that revive back up to three strong. But they have that Grant Lantis problem <laughs> right behind them. Is Sintastico? It could be bears. Remember, they respawn. Keep an eye out for bears, my friend. He's got three vehicles in there, so if nothing else, can uh, hide in one of those. Try to survive a little bit longer. Karak will spot out Flood from range. Nice spray. Getting Flood down to about half HP and force Falcons once again to keep repositioning here. Yeah, Peepa spots them. Is he not able? He's not really able to hit the shots at this time of asking. Gaberry doing the same, but Mime will go prone behind the Dacia, but he is inside the circle. I'm watching all of this. Bastia are living their best life on the other side of the circle. Oh, they're vibing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're, as long as we're smart, we're getting it at the very least into like a top three scenario. They'll rotate and take the north. Draft King's gonna run over. So Okay. Maybe, How maybe do not do that. that? <laughs> maybe, maybe don't do that. But uh, okay, they find out the uh, spam finally finds Grant Lannis. Doesn't get the knock though, so Grant able to get on the move once again, stay alive somehow. Harvey in the same, but Brisa will spot him out as spam just summarily cleaning up everything on that south side. Falcons on eight kills inside the top five with four players up snakers hasn't got a knock just yet but now they'll move more so towards the center of the zone rats still have grant land this up santa is still up on the side of pichao so we do have solo players that are still alive and well and you can see spam are hunting so they know that grant is still around here so they want to deal with him they spot him out oh, grant's spray. gonna get one knock on the brisa as he do gonna do it no it's sharp that actually steals that kill and picks it up so we've got our top four it's a four v3 v3 v1 oh and look at this beast yeah knowing that that knock came through trying to make the rush and so is falcons so everything collapsing right on top of spam at the same time here DraftKings going for that low ground. Gabiri will spot out. A few guys coming in from the low side will try to respond with a well-placed grenade, but it doesn't find where it needs to go. Pippa will get Gabiri, though, with that grenade. And now Falcons, again, blood in the water there. Just coming up over the top of this, looking for anything they can find. Yeah, Rello finds another point. That's kill number nine for them. Bestia sends two to this fight. Sharp shot in as well. Down go Spam. 4v3 v1 and the solo is just on the edge of the circle santa has got the knee at his right at the right he throws it towards pipa but it goes a little bit too far towards the right second knee might be a little bit better it's not and best you're gonna rotate they've hopped into the dacia and they're on their way yeah santa just Hiding out in the smoke right now. Looks like Falcons might be aware that he's there, but they have got the entirety of Bestia pinned up against the wall right now. But the good thing for Bestia is that it looks like Falcons may be a little bit shy on utility, or at least offensive utility, is you don't see too many grenades being sent down there. Maybe a few Molotovs. Oh, Pippa. We saw him. I think the smoke, the smoke may have uh, may have lied to us there a little bit, mm -hmm. but they do end up getting rid of Santa, so it's down to just the four v three Falcons versus Bestia. It's eleven kills here for Falcon Sharp has level three gear and a Groza, but the P ninety will trump it. It's a four versus two. Molly tossed up to try to confirm the kill. Draft King has taken a ton of damage as well. Falcons have a stranglehold of the circle, Paro. Look, there, there's nowhere for Bastia to go. They are, they are pinned up against the wall here as Falcons continue to get the wrap on. Mine will get another one, finish it off clean as you like. Falcons with their second win of the day, this time with a modest 14 kills. Yeah, only only 24 points this time instead of uh, the, the, the mountain yeah. that they had last time around. Toffees, what are Falcons doing? Are they just like playing a game, taking a few games off, maybe having some food, enjoying the vibes, coming back and be like, yeah, let's get another bunch of points and we can have relax you, again for a little while. Have you ever been in like a fight or an almost, like a, a big moment of adrenaline where like everything is incredible and you just are like, you're, you're like living in a different plane. I feel like their first game was that moment where like things went so wildly good for them that they just had to have two or three games to sort of like 
like come back down to reality. Like overconfidence abounds, maybe some aggression. This game, they got back into their rhythm, and uh, I like to see it. Now, I will also say, and I'm going to talk about this during the break, Poro, but like, is it, is it, I'm in shambles over STK. Tell me it's going to be okay. Tell me it's going to be okay, Poro. <laughs> oh, man. How many times have we seen STK just light up an open qualifier lobby and then we come in and we're just like, oh my God, STK is on the best team in the world again. And then they just like completely let us down. Uh, like it, it's, I'm, it's not over by any means yet. They, this is just their first day. It's fine. It's They'll fine. get back into it. It'll be okay. Uh, it <laughs> I feel like the dog at the table, guys. Poro. I feel like the dog at the table. <laughs> guys, it's not just going to be okay. It's going to be STK. It'll be fine. Okay? Oh, no. no, no hey, you were calling us old, old a minute ago. <laughs> Gibson, what was it like now? when Color TV oh, came out? Man. Dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> I might be youngest here by like a good few jokes. years. But by a good few years. Yeah, no, it's 100% true. Yeah. We were around for the inception of the internet. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's talk about the game. Let's talk about who came out on top. Falcons, 24 points. Good for them. And I'll be honest, they started the game with a 31-point average. They dropped to way less than that. Now they're back up to the high ground. Uh, spam gets the points, which they need to do. Uh, I'm going to remind everybody, the teams that are done today, Legacy, Elevate, Pichau, Gas Cans, Future, Aces, Crew, Spam, and Gatos Chicos. These teams need to put numbers on the board with only two games left to play. And that's going to be good news for like Pichau here, who has been kind of grinding their way up. Spam as well. My worry is when we get to this overall leaderboard, I'm not sure it's going to be enough, Gibbs. Gibson. It's, it's not. I think when you look at the leaderboard, when you don't really understand the way the lobbies work out, you're going, oh, well, they're inside the top four. They're inside the top five. They're fine. It it's looks can be deceiving because you got to consider a lot of the big dogs in group a are going to pick up a chunk of points tomorrow and those you know the points that look safe really aren't aces crew it's been a valiant effort from effort from them so far today i think spam have been maybe the best of the risers from that group today so far but i, I don't know i just i just don't think there's enough games for the likes of aces crew to pick up the points they need but they have been so much better today than they were yesterday Perfect. Let's take a look at the overall leader. By the way, favorite comment. I wish I knew who had said it in Twitch chat was the end of that game. And <laughs> they go 14 kills. Man, Falcons really fell off. I thought that was pretty funny. All right, leaderboard. <laughs> Legacy, 80 points as they set their stage. Now, remember, they are not playing tomorrow. So they have two more games to continue to establish that. I feel like they're going to be good. Spam looking very good night right now. Mercy not even here. Gas Cans also on their B-day. B uh, they're not playing tomorrow, but... Despite a tough round, I think I can feel pretty comfortable with them marching forward. Falcons looks like they are just ready to go to globals already, Poro. Yeah, they're good. I mean, they, <laughs> uh, again, like, uh, like you can tell they're, they're they're playing with just a hyper aggressive mindset in this game, and in, in two games it's worked out really, really well. The other games maybe less so. Uh, it, it's fine, you know. It's it is what it is. They should be rolling through this lobby, and that's exactly what they're doing. So, uh, you know, kudos to them. Aces crew. I think I I. I think with two more games on Aragle, Aces might have a shot at securing Maybe. their spot. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It really just depends on if uh, any of our teams for uh, from Group A decide to just really turn up and turn out uh, tomorrow. I mean, you've got when you look at it, you've got the the probably the biggest teams uh, in in our region uh, are in Groups A and C, right? So. Um, you know, it'll, it'll either be very, uh, again, like day one was, where it's uh, kind of low scoring, nobody really right. takes control, and uh, or it'll be just one one team, one or two teams just kind of take control of everything and just run away with it, which would be good for people on the cut line. I think that's the big one for me, Gibson. Tomorrow, when you're looking at lists of, like, Falcons, Sonics, I mean, STK, if they turn up and turn on, uh, you know, teams that have pedigrees and representation, <laughs> there's a possibility that we just see those teams go the distance and the cutoff line ends up being something insane like 60 or lower right we've seen sonics have you know 90 plus days in the past i know that ssg have done it as well so you cannot rule them out mm -hmm. you can't even rule out that a group you know a group c team tomorrow could go absolutely mm -hmm. nuclear like aces crew today yeah. based on their their line has been night and night and day performance but anyone who's around the cutoff line like you said will want one of those big teams to sponge up loads because if they're sponging up loads it means the teams around them aren't getting them 
Well, we're going to be back in two minutes to see who continues to sponge up loads. Don't go anywhere. We're back with the grassy pastures of Orangle. Welcome back. It's time for the Grassy Pastures after a quick break. My name's Toffees. That's Porosaurus. That's Gibson. He's crying because the games have been so good, and we hope that teams will be able to march forward with this thing and take home the big wins. So I'll start there, Poro. I see the emotion in your face when you think about the end of day two. What do you need out of these last two games? What would make you feel good? Uh, you know, it's it kind of... I almost don't like that we end on Erangel mm -hmm. because like Erangel plays out so slow and everybody knows it so well. And, and uh, I feel like nobody's willing to take the uh, the big risks on Erangel as much as maybe some of the other maps. So we'll we'll see how it, how it plays out. But I kind of I kind of expect our teams that are traditionally pretty good on Erangel to kind of show out here in the last games. And honestly, Gibson, I feel like some of the other games we've had, like the Tago, have had almost an Erangel-esque play to them in the end games. Uh, a little less traditional, mm -hmm. some of those big open spaces. So maybe they'll be in the mood. Here's my question. Day two, two games left for the cusp teams. Sometimes I feel like it's tempting to to not pull the goalie, to like stack the defense, try to get like an average amount of points to like set yourself up to be in the hunt day three as you watch from home do you think this is a situation where you do that or do you pull the goalie and go all out oh i think that you always have to remember what got you into the position you're at mm -hmm. and i've seen too many teams in the past because they're on the cusp try to change what works for them and it goes even worse than it was going already so just keep playing your game do what you're doing like teams like aces crew you've found the style of play that's working for you today don't change anything up keep that foot on the gas pedal a zone like this a sort of flight path like this mm -hmm. by the way toffees could give us a circle which might give us no choice but mm. to put the foot on the gas because this could be an island island zone yeah, yeah i mean go ahead Poro. you know a lot about gas so talk to me about how to, no, what no, teams no, can do to put their Texas, foot on the gas right wow now. no oil no, reference no. well done yeah that was, I, i'm uh... learning 
low hanging fruit <laughs> from toffee but no i i 100 agree with you i mean i think you talk about for uh, or ace crew rather uh elevate legacy all these teams you, you, this is your last shot right this is last chance saloon you gotta get as many points as you can there you go there's the millie circle uh and i guess we'll start off right off the bat with the apartment fight between uh rats and png and rats is just dominating never mind yeah. That's what they That was do. the shortest hot drop ever. I feel Don't like Penella just haven't got going, have they, Toffees? It's, 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 you know they're a better team than this, which is the, the hard thing about it. Right? It's tough, right? And I know they're not going to change their name to Penella Meh, but for the moment, <laughs> it's about development. I'm not going to chalk it off yet. This is a chance, like I said, these teams don't get a chance to play competitive too often. And it's one of the biggest benefits. If you guys are watching at home, you're like, man, some of these teams, like Future and Penella, I'm disappointed. The reality is because they got through opens, they now have an entire year of access to high-end scrims, whether or not they do particularly well going forward. And I think that is the difference maker for what will make teams better in the coming years. We're seven years into this thing. You have to start thinking as a team about future development, right? Like getting good for the next season. And I hope that they stick with it. Well, and on top of that, like it's going to look even worse right now too, right? Because going into these last couple of games, they're just going to send it and they're going to try to take as many risks as they can. So if they haven't been doing so well up until today, uh, going into these last couple of games by going hyper aggressive, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out for them, it's going to look like even worse, right? It's going to mm -hmm. just kind of continue adding to that, uh, that mythos of uh, mediocrity. So uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see if Penelope can win at least get get a couple of kills off of this fight yeah. right get a couple just mm -hmm. start with something right just get get yourself something to build off of mm -hmm. the mythos of mediocrity i you clearly someone's been teaching college courses recently uh, <laughs> yeah, you that know, sounded you. fancy and i loved it but again this is a, this is a little bit of a unique chaos situation uh because of this hot drop two teams that i don't I guess I don't want to say they didn't have anything to lose, but they don't, right? Is this a little bit of a flexing for maybe the loser's bracket to decide who gets to come here? Could be. Yeah, I I, I, I got distracted because Sonic is putting down a gas trail, and I'm, I'm loving it. it. I'm, I'm so ready for this. All I'm going to say, and, you know, I'm, I know I'm skipping over your question, Toffees, but That's fine. these two teams need to deal with this quickly because mm -hmm. they're so far outside of the circle, and the longer this hot drop continues the worst position both of these teams or the winning team will be whenever they eventually do start rotating. I don't know if they care. Yeah, that's, I'm, on that, I'm on that boat. I think at this point they both know their I don't really script. know if they care. I think, I think at this point it's just, yeah. Oh, see, look at that. Look at the eyes on Shun. Wow. Spots out the flame, uh, the, the gasoline trail. That's nice. I like that. I'm not really sure why he left a trail. Was not a happy trail. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. well, well so while that's all a... this is going on uh, a, a lot of our teams have already moved over to the island there's actually between uh, other than these two there's what one two three four that are still left and one in a e pickup right now so that's what's going on uh, elsewhere around the map <laughs> just just say it Paro. you just want more emergency pickups you love them <laughs> you just I want to see them shoot e pickups up. I love e That's my favorite thing to get introduced to this game, just because it adds, uh, it, it it adds another element of craziness, and it gives it gives you the opportunity to make extremely high risk, high reward plays, which I love. I. For someone who has such a hard time clipping onto the e-pickups in game, I love that you love them so much. Uh, and I think that Look, they've man, had a massive... I like, to, I like to move around, all right? You do like to dance until the last second. I think it's had a massive impact on this. This is a four-man push. This really just feels let's like go, training go, go. for the potential of the next round. And there's the opener. And Shun will fall. Gaps will get one. Last is on the roof and down they fall. But did you see how Rats did that, yeah. right? They, they went room by room playing as a four. It was almost like... A exercise like a SWAT exercise mm -hmm. the way they were clearing that building from bottom to top and you always felt like no matter how good of a trap was set once that gas can was removed it would have been a huge play if rats had have failed had have fallen no that was really well done that was really well done and you know they take one knock you know in the end who cares uh, they, they should have a little bit of time to loot up here as well before making their way down. And, uh, and again, there's still a big part of the chunk of the mainland that's still inside the zone. So they don't have to immediately send it across a 
bridge blind so they'll have time to stop down and get a little bit of information so i don't know all all well and good there at the end for rat, for rats mm -hmm. up on top of dog hill old guard will decided that they want to land here's not a mommy going past elevate and uh one will go and the rest will split in different directions and arson will get taken down by Shinboy legacy third partying as this is all going on in and around military base and have you noticed Parl, that everybody's making a send for the southwest of military base yeah. everything towards the e or towards the east is completely vacant yeah that's it's it's kind of wild i mean when you look i mean obviously like a uh, radar tower or the 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 big hill with the radar tower it, it's still in play but it's right on the edge of the zone so i doubt anybody's thinking it's going to cut down that way i mean i guess it still could possibly but yeah you, you mentioned it it's everything uh over on that western side on that southwestern side it really anything that's worth occupying has been occupied so mm -hmm. uh you know still what four teams on the north side that are making their way down uh we'll see if there's any more e-pickups it doesn't look like there will be although falcons is kind of hanging out on the coastline of milta so maybe they're just they might just be scouting and slow playing it before sending it over to the bridge no bridge camps uh to be seen to be found anywhere so uh everything pretty pretty free right now I think because of how heavily focused this is on the island, nobody really wants to bridge camp just yet because everything else is going to be taken ahead of you, you know? Because yeah. there is still that little bit of land by Ferry Pier as well. You saw Falcons, they did their due diligence, they scouted out the bridge, it's vacant, they'll cross. I'd love to see a team like Falcons play towards that radio tower, play up on the high ground and see what way the zone shifts, but they've been around the block they have a pretty good idea of where this could end oh yeah oh yeah I mean, and and to be fair the 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 hills to the north of the base are still relatively free right mm -hmm. bestia is kind of the only team that's really playing around that area elevate's starting to sniff that way uh but they're still in the military base so there's still a lot of really good spots left to play inside this zone despite the fact that everybody's already made it across mm-hmm couldn't agree with you more. The, the spots though that I love teams playing right now is that hill that we see Old Guard on right now. Just look at the peripheral vision that Higuain has over most of that the military base itself, right? Mm -hmm, they can mm -hmm. see everything that's going on. They've got the high ground. They'll be able to do... It's, it's a cartographer's great a dream, light, right? They can point out exactly where everybody is. They know what compounds are taken. They know the rotates that everybody has gone through. This is why I love teams being proactive. And they took that emergency pickup and they've now got one of the best potential spots. Yeah, we'll have to see how the uh, how the circles pop away from them. But uh, even, even still, you know, the only thing they've really got to be concerned about is PCH maybe on their western side. Uh, but they wide split. I doubt that they have any inclinations of heading on up there. So it's really just gaining information, like you said, figuring out where everybody is uh, and just getting a read uh, on if you can maybe pick out some splits. Like right now, STK in a 2-2 split. And we'll see if anybody has uh, been able to figure that one out. I have a question. See, when you see Pachow, do you keep oh, thinking no. about it like Luke Wilson says it or Owen Wilson says it? And oh Pachow, my god, that's oh so much like Pachow. Pachow. <laughs> Come, well, I do now. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And everyone Thank in chat. Oh my god, look at that 180 spin going through the air. You know what? Credit where credit's due. When the spoon falls, it's always a spectacle. You know, th this is like the. <laughs> I don't know if Dispoon has just got a reputation for being unlucky, but of all the places, it, it, it's a military circle. He drives down Death Road and there's a four man squad just sitting there out in the blue. Like, <laughs> how unlucky can you possibly get? Okay. Well, either way, everybody now is starting to make their way over to the western side of the island. Bestia even took an E pickup from the from the hills just north of military base and uh, so far oh no that no okay 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 bestia they tried to take the e pick up clearly didn't work they get wiped they're out in 15th place and now pch them might not be too far behind them yeah just two players left alive with obl i always say when he is alive there's always a chance 
Here, Green is scouting them out. They're going, what is going on? All right, it's STK. <laughs> They're in the wars as well as 55 Esports are the target. Sparking will dive his way into the corner to get the first aid off. We've got Kurt getting the med kit off now too, but this is the battle for that garage compound on the edge of Millie base. And 55 Esports got to be careful because STK, even though they've less, they're, you know, they're down on the numbers, can go through players pretty quickly. Absolutely. Well, let's see what this new duo looks like. Kurt and Sparking. Sparking will find Block. We'll get the knock and flush. Kurt and Curdy will feel out where Psycho is. They run back into the hard cover of the compound. As, uh, looks like they, they, they spot out Psycho. They don't know where Lopez is, though. So they know there's still two left from 55. But they're just laying down the smoke, slowing down the action. Slabby slowly bleeding out down there in the office as SDK just gonna go for a little moderate reset here. It's one of those situations now where they're going to be in this battle for quite a while. Once one team gets the knock on the other, they'll flood over like a tsunami. But for now, it's about finding the knock and oh. there you go. Sparking gets it. And look at how quickly he wanted to move, but the molly will slow it down momentarily. And you, I know for a fact that Spark is like, let me go. Kurt, let me go. Let me push it. And Kurt's like, uh, okay, Sparking, you do your thing. <laughs> yeah, a little too late, though, as the res does come through. Mm -hmm. But they know exactly where both of these guys are now. So this could just be ST, uh, Kurt saying, you know what? Let's, let's, let's just fortify here. Let's dig in. Let's try to survive a little bit longer. It's down to two. Uh, but we've got one kill. We've got a good position inside the zone. Let's not try to give up anything by doing anything stupid here. Mm -hmm. and I think 55 are pro don't Psycho, don't pick the same angle again. Like, Spark has got that <laughs> on lock. Look, he's, he has got that on Surely lock. Surely he wouldn't do the same thing again. Yeah. How bad is this going to go? This is a shift. How bad is this going to be, Poro? Because <laughs> it can get worse. It could. It could get oh, getting very boy. bad. Let's go. Come on. Okay, uh, all right. It played. It plays nice. It plays mm -hmm. nice. It's fine. Not nice to be rats, though. Like Fal Falcons are the one that set off the bridge campus. They've moved over to the West Bridge, and rats may just deliver some points their way. But that position that we saw Old Guard taking a lot earlier is looking even stronger now. Okay. Well, STK still on their toes. Looking around at things that are happening on the map around them, you see uh, Future just off to the north, but they have, I mean, they have all they could possibly want, right? They're not going to extend mm -hmm. down to the south unless they absolutely have to. Falcons outside of zone around the bridge, they may be just holding that spot for the time being, at least seeing if they have any late arrivers come through which there are rats on the north side of the bridge and now spam actually trying to make a long rotation through the blue mm -hmm. up there on the north as well so it looks like it doesn't look like we're going to see any more major uh rotations it's really just where falcons is going to go where rats is going to go where spam is going to go and can gas yeah. cans actually get in here after aces is watching them yeah, gas cans will probably make the push towards the Aces crew, and you can see they're shooting just to make some noise. Yeah. And you know the way, you know the way, like Toffees is kind of like our, our guy behind the scenes whenever we're casting. Mm -hmm. he, he has just discovered a tweet from Flood. You remember when he went down in Tago, and people were trying to work out what happened? Oh, I do. Uh, his is <laughs> basically his robot vacuum cleaner. Uh, we're not going to say a brand name here. Unplugged his modem <laughs> during the game. Modern problems, eh? You know, it would happen to flood. It just, it just would. It just, that just seems like something that would happen to flood. The robots are out to keep us mm -hmm. from making money and getting on into the grand finals. As are we trying to boost here? Is this what's happening? Yeah, there oh, we go. Look, there there's the it animation. is. There it is. We got it. All right, didn't get it the first time, but now we got it. Playing those rooftops is uh, so silly strong too. Is uh, Frogman again? Uh, must have heard me uh, ripping on him earlier on here because he has just come alive here in these last couple of games. That might be his uh, third or fourth kill 
that he's managed to pick up his free time uh, as a uh, future rather is uh still holding on to that north side spam just trying to find somewhere to come in here yeah, it's if they can get to the compound that's just to their to their south west they might be okay but getting there is the problem when they're on foot frog man alive and well 16 minutes into the game i know you'll be happy to see Let's that oh that's a and good shift there for spam it's a really bad shift for not a hobby though like <laughs> they have nothing but open ground ahead of them and they've got the gatos chicos and pichano there it ain't looking good and yeah, the guy, you'll see Gallus Chico's fully aware of their presence as well as uh, I think they've been just kind of trading long range shots back and forth for the past few minutes. Elevate. Uh, you see a few shots being sent in towards gas cans. The gas cans still just kind of pinned up against it. They're trying to make the push into aces and it's working so far. Jam and Zealot now the last two up. It's going to will bleed out. Bizzler tries to come around, but a U.S. is going to block most of those shots. Remember, Elevate also taking shots down onto this, so that's going to force aces to try to make a push faster than maybe they would like to. Oh, Rexy B hits a big headshot now too, and he's going to jump up, spots out the player, it. trying to get the hip fire. Vaults out, gets the kill. Down go Ace's crew as Richie B deals with them. Gats is trapped in a shack. Gats, can he get one? He can't get any at all. Not a hobby. Picking up that kill onto Rats as well. But here come Falcons, as they know that not a hobby are trapped in this position. But how close do they want to go? Always fun to clear out of Gats in a shack as yeah, they keeping three up there they leave Rello behind though Rello keeping track of future future has left their compound so this needs to if they're going to keep pushing this if they want to take all of this they need to do be as quick as possible because Rello might be in a little bit of trouble oh and actually I think they got those Chicos drew their attention yeah I think they're, they're going to focus on the Gatos Chicos first because they're the, the bigger problem. Although with Snakers throwing nades like that on the back monster, they're fighting both fights at once. And at the oh, sea, oh that's great nade by Snakers. But Kill Demo from Old Guard was able to steal one of them away. I mean, that's just uh, clinical from Falcons. The double blue zone into throwing grenades to the left and right of the shack mm -hmm. just in case they run either direction. And it pays off huge. I mean, that's just, just, it's teamwork, baby. It makes the dream work. And Snakers has three kills for it. Now, Rello knocked a little bit low, but he is able to get back to the rest of the boys. Legacy on the move. They run right into Elevate. As Elevate take a few shots down towards them. Won't find any knocks just yet, but this puts the Legacy in a kind of a back foot position here couldn't agree with you more and they're on the edge of the zone where do you even play from this point an elevator moving into position where they can shut legacy out gizera will try to play on the ridge line 55 sports are going to get crashed by spam and this is good news i see i was going to say it's good news for stk but brisa gets the opening knock onto kurt psycho will get one on as well but this is a three team fight for the compound the zone shifts as well and that zone shift will allow these teams to fight that little bit longer but i think 55 getting that knock on the spam has done stk a huge favor yeah it looks like it i mean stk going for the res right now as uh as now gas cans have started coming from the south side it looks like the res comes through just in time for stk to turn their attention over towards gas and they'll find vox vox goes down but, oh no future shap let's go gonna future find big kills there on the spam as a future just kind of coming in from the north side just to kind of third party onto this and they find some big dividends i love it i love the upturn of aggression from future and it's a better day they're not qualifying but it's better bl will find a knock on the other side of the circle but psycho goes prone and things will kind of calm down again for just a moment sparking and kurt they're holding the door from both angles so they're playing off each other's contact you'll see that a lot where they move up justice is pushing in justice gets Ooh. one justice gets two and pichao will suffer the wrath of the barrel but gatos do get eliminated in the end but does anybody push off the back of that i think maybe legacy might make the move and yes they do there you go 
ECH, can they get even one of those up? It looks like BL might be able to get back on his feet. No, he's gonna have to pull off of that nice push from RBN and Legacy right on time with it. It's there exactly when they need to. And like you said, man, we've been, we haven't been say, say, talking about him in a while, but OG has just been sitting on top of this mountain ever since the emergency pickup. They've got five kills now and they've still got four people up. Yeah, and a lot of their kills are just third partying Ooh. on existing fights. Terrazoka finds the knock on to Brisa, leaving Giberi as the last player alive. And Spammer, probably that team that's right on the cusp now on 71 points. They'll be looking for a few more STK. They have four kills as well, and Sparky's got them all. Sparky's just nuts. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt's just out there, just like... See, he's, he's running around seeing who shoots at him and say, okay, sh they, they're shooting at me from over this direction. Sh you kill them now. Ooh, Gaviri, nice spray. It's, it's but, like uh, that copy pasta, right? Sparking's the best IGL in the world. He is plays like Sparking, go kill. When that doesn't work, it's Alo, go kill. When that doesn't yeah. work, it's Luke, go kill. But Spam have got a Panzer. I, I spoke about Whoa. it. The Panzer can be a difference maker. Here we, here we go. Oh. Through the bars on the window. Actually, I think it just hit the bars on the window. Yep, you're done. Gabiri's out, Spam is out, and STK is still alive after all of this. And now, now is the time to push, Kurt says. Remember when you wanted to push earlier and I said no? This is why, as STK is still alive now, seven kills, still two up, but they've got a long way to go in future staring right down at him. Man's got the best arm on PUBG. I'm out of my dove. Here's Elevate pushing up onto Old Guard. Now their position is finally being put. The jumping Panzer shot didn't get him, but here Queen gets Punage as Elevate are making their move to Old Guard. Vegas gets one, Vegas gets two. And he's gonna actually try to use that utility, but Ki Kai Shen, he doesn't seem to know exactly where Vegas is. Oh, they traded. They decided to go for the reses instead. Oh, and Vegas no. is there right on time. Oh, he has to go for the reload and he gets knocked down by kill demo. But just like that, oh, geez, somebody has to be paying attention to this. And it looks like Legacy starting to make their way up there. Shoot to kill as well. Starting to sniff around. But OG might be able to get everybody back on their feet. Yeah, they'll go for that. But Legacy here in this area you've got stk that could rock up on their position as well i actually like the way stk are playing this as a two while all this is going on falcons are sitting to the north of the circle all of them checking to make sure that their automatic vacuums are kept in order <laughs> you know none of them want to get removed out of this one they're nope. the ones that want to hoover up the points here not have their internet connection hoovered up oh my gosh this guy with his it's like working with yourself. Similes, it's, it's, it's just insane. How, how does it feel working with yourself, uh, really? Uh, it's probably super annoying working with me. Holy moly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, well, STK, they, they, they couldn't go to the north, right? Because they know that there's a four mana future. So they had to wrap around on the south side. Legacy, I don't know if they're expecting this, but they are now as they turn their full attention back over towards sparking the spray comes through vhc will get one the, oh the flashbang will stop him off and that's going to be a nice grenade from grisera and now the raid boss is down purdy curdy show that you are more than just an igl okay almost got him he's real he's close yeah fifth place it's getting better from stk though considering how the rest of the day has went old guard will do right to push out and that's exactly what they're doing but rbn is going to decapitate kill demo with the spray and that buys time for legacy to get back to four up have you seen what snakers have done though while all these fighting is going on he's taken center control and he might get caught out by future who are going for a wide split as well but back to this fight poro legacy using a utility dump to move up on the old guard and this could be big Oh, LFP spots the guy on the right. Does he spot the guy on the left? He does. LFP. Big kills for them. Now nine total for Legacy. Complete control over the south side. And if they can get healed up and move on the move in time, they might be able to third party on what's going on, whatever here between Future and Falcons. Future actually spots out Snakers, as you said. And he goes down. Relevant Flood, though. That's still a very dangerous duo. 
this is this is raw flood's gonna get caught by terrazoka rello dancing around and vaulting and jumping falcons in a lot of trouble future up to seven kills are we potentially gonna see a future win at the end of tonight we got two maps left they've picked the wrong time to start winning games but i'm all for it hey you know what this is exactly what you want to have when you've just been getting kind of beaten down the way that these guys have been over the past couple of days this is once again just a, a reminder that you can find success in this lobby you can uh, win games here and you can make it to the finals if you find play your game as uh yep rello just stuck behind a rock this feels like uh, a rello dying to the blue type situation type beat here uh legacy really spreading around inside that zone and actually rello gonna steal that sam crow knock away and so now future down to just three legacy uh again just very split here you gotta worry a little bit about that but uh it just depends on if future's got eyes yeah legacy though they can all all those players can play as solos right gizera is just a phenom and he can easily win 1v1s 1v2s 1v3s and this, this is where confidence comes in like legacy they know they can do it they're qualified for the next round so they don't even have to worry about dying for them it's just like yeah let's flex let's just be the best version of us we can it's a 4v3 terrazoka is going to fall at the hands of gizera there's more damage being done on the frogman as he's been removed there's one player left alive inside the smoke he fights back hard but the blue zone is there winner winner chicken dinner legacy picking up 23 points they didn't need them but they'll take them yeah i mean look it's been a slow day for legacy so far today especially compared to what they were pulling out yesterday but uh, here you go, once again, reminding everybody in the lobby that they are a force to be reckoned with and they get the victory here in game number five that started off with the rat's hot drop toffees. You were even here for this one. I was, I'm not sure that I wish I was, but it was uh, <laughs> fun to watch. I did love the way rats systematically, carefully executed that push, uh, but it was a nice game. You said Legacy didn't need the points, but I feel that Legacy doesn't love that Falcons came out and did what they did. I think Legacy wants to go into the grand finals of this event with the world saying, hey, these guys could be the best America's got to offer. And uh, I think that, that this is a big game for them to try to keep making that statement going forward. If they can finish today 100 plus, uh, they're gonna be 100% running the conversation when we get to grand finals. Someone from Europe, right? I've come into this and I have so much love for Wait, North and South States. No, I, I, I don't know. I'm I, trolling. You've just, so you've it's just an Alabama you've, accent. You, you've broken the immersion. <laughs> you've broken the immersion. But you you know, you guys are always going to have a preference for North American teams. It's just, it's just the way things are. Like if you didn't, there'd be something wrong. Do you feel like South American teams have really made a jump over the last kind of 12 to 15 oh, yeah. months? And because of it, do you feel like it's actually improved the America's region internationally? I mean internationally that's a that's a whole other question but uh, i mean I, I think latin america is absolutely taking a jump on i mean uh, and we keep finding it seems like every couple of tournaments they just come out with a, a brand new just completely cracked player uh like like gizera you know or sparking or you know lfp and rbn have had their have had their days i mean it's it just seems like there's there's always somebody new coming out from Latin America that uh, that really puts on a show, and uh, I, I it has it, it's definitely made the region uh, the region itself a lot more fun to watch. So my take on that is incredibly simple. It's the best thing that's happened to Americas. Okay, so I know that the ping is not optimal, but there's not a lot of ways around that, right? The fact that Flood I think is working with like 350 North ping or something of that when we go to these and North a South robot American, vacuum cleaner. It's, yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. and a vacuum a rogue vacuum cleaner. But the fact remains that prior to the merge, I do feel like jokes people made about um, North America being a low tier region, not having enough strength to make them strong. I believe that, that was true. When we did this combination and put those regions together, it gave scrims, it gave qualifiers, a significant increase in quality that I do think improved everyone across the board, but particularly South American teams who 
because of different languages in the region, because of the the scrim challenges, a lot of those top guys didn't have the training they required, in my opinion, to become as good as they could be. So I think the last two years has just been a massive growth cycle for the South American teams, but also they have brought a different mindset, a different style of play, a willingness to take a fight, and had to teach uh, the players who are traditionally just the North America players, I think, to think differently. And as a result, we've seen improvements in international play because you have to be willing to roll and adjust uh, to make those moves when you get to the big show. I mean, we saw that prior. Remember when we would send teams like Tempo Storm, the best in North America, to these international events, Poro? Do you remember what would happen every single time? I exactly. remember. Oh, I remember, I remember. remember. with a deep sigh. Uh, so, no, I think I love the question, Gibbs, and I think it has made it a significantly better region all around. Now, let's take a look at the leaderboards. Legacy breaks the 100, 103. They're going to be feeling great. I think no problems going into the grand finals, and a few more points in their belt would actually be really nice to give them some extra confidence. Gas Cans also finishing today. Both of those teams only one more game to play at 76, looking great. Spam, last day to play today, looking good with 71. Then you got Falcons, who's only played five games, Gibson, but they are this powerful right now, and they're being attacked by robots and still managing to take themselves to this level. Yeah, it's what you expect, though, from, from that roster. I think that much like what we saw from Mercy and Legacy, they're trying to get the job done on the first day so they can have fun on the second day, and this is a good thing for every other team in the lobby that want to qualify. Mm -hmm. People hate to see teams dominating, but believe me, when it comes to qualifier rounds and not actual championship final weekends, that is a good thing. It keeps it tight. It keeps every single team in it for as long as possible. And I know that a lot of these teams are glad that Falcons have come in. Yes, it's one of those double-edged swords, right? You're like, yeah, well, we'd rather pick up those points. But if it was a case of Falcons taking them all or it being shared among teams around you, you're always going to want Falcons to get those points. All right, we've also got Aces Crew. This is their last day. They're at 56 points. Poro, what do they need to put up in this last game if they want to feel at all comfortable advancing tomorrow? Pachau in the same position with 56. Man, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was thinking that around 70-something would be safe, but now I'm not so sure. It seems like we've got a number of teams that are kind of right around that area and and you look at the teams from uh from group a that have yet to play i mean mercy uh who's been po kind of popping off right. sonics you got ssg luna galaxy a lot of good teams uh that could that could really climb so 70 70 ish might not be enough i don't know that's uh, it's kind of wild when you think about it it is so that means look for teams like Pichau, Aces Crew, to and even I think Spam to an extent go very aggressive in this last game, knowing they need to get that buffer with that many teams. Especially you brought up Luna, we got other teams like STK who you know could just show up and put up a massive day. You can't be safe at that 70. So these teams look for them. The final game I think is going to be a barn burner because some of these B teams have no other choice but to get a little bit wild. Now, I will tell you, fair heads up. We had a bit of a delay. A player is reconnected, had to reconnect to the lobby. So the next game is going to start in just about 10 minutes time. But stick around because I promise you the last match of the night on a wrangle is guaranteed to be a good one. That is the Toffees check. I have no, that is no, there's no metaphor there. It's just something I'm guaranteeing. <laughs> but I miss you guys and we'll see you soon. Bye. That was the worst sign up I've ever done in my life. <laughs>
eşsiz bir oyun deneyimi sunmak ve farklı silah stratejilerine ortam sağlamak için MSL'lerde bazı dengeleme değişiklikleri yaptık. Silahlara göz atmak için hemen arcade'e dal. Gelecek yenilikleri önceden deneyerek fikirlerini bizimle paylaş. Daha heyecan verici haberlerimiz de var. Olumlu geri bildirimlerden yola çıkarak geri çağırma sistemini Vikendi ve Teygo'yu kapsayacak şekilde genişletiyoruz. Bu yeniliğe dair daha fazla bilgi güncelleme notlarında. Son olarak silah ustalığı güncellemeleri, haritalarla ilgili hata düzeltmeleri ve performans iyileştirmeleri de seni bekliyor. Tüm ayrıntılar için güncelleme notlarına dalmayı unutma. Savaş alanlarında görüşürüz. Welcome to Update 28.2. Join us for our 7th anniversary celebrations, an all new SMG experience in the arcade, and finally, the recall system update. We've got lots of surprises in store for you to celebrate our 7th birthday. Erangel's school will be transformed into a festive 7th anniversary venue. Plus, keep an eye out for throwable cupcakes and surprise gift boxes scattered across the starting island of each map. We've been hard at work balancing the SMGs to offer a more unique experience and accommodate various gunplay strategies. The arcade is all set for you to try out these changes, so get that early feel and let us know what you think. And there's more exciting news. Based on your positive feedback, we're expanding the recall system to include Vikendi and Tego. Check out the patch notes to discover all the details of this update. Lastly, this patch also includes weapon mastery updates, world bug fixes, and performance tweaks. Be sure to dive into the patch notes for all the details. And we'll see you on the battlegrounds.
Welcome back. It's time for the last game of the day, baby. We're going to find out how Group B settles in as they have to watch and wait tomorrow as AC comes back together to finish this thing out. My name is Toffees. I'm joined by Porosaurus and Gibson, and we are hyped for the last game. It is only one minute away from starting, and this is where I think we see that. Middle teams got to chase the pack. Those teams who are playing tomorrow have to sort of set themselves up for success, uh, and I think some surprises, hopefully. I would love to see... Like, STK, come out and just get a big game to end the day like the Sonics did when they got to a wrangle yesterday. Gibbs, how you doing? I'm doing good. I, I agree with Gibbs. you. I apologize. About Gibbs, that. Yeah, you, why are you calling him by his I don't like, know. short name? I've, like, I've been called worse. No, you know him like that. <laughs> I've been it's called like way that. worse than that. But I, I think that Sonics uh, set the example yesterday. I think STK will be hoping to do that. You could argue Bestia or probably another team that are thinking they want to have that big finish. But we're all forgetting about the fact that we have Pichao and Ace's crew, who if they get 10 plus kills and they get that win, they could be booking their ticket to, to a, you know, three weeks time from now, I guess, not even two, if, they, if they're able to do that here on Arangel. Yeah, they can set themselves up pretty nicely, man. But the, the, the thing that you worry about is that you've got half of this lobby uh, and a, a pretty good chunk of teams that are in send it mode uh the straight goblin mode if you will where they really don't have anything left to play for they know they're going to be in the lcq mm -hmm. they're just gonna they, it's it's the last game of the night you know it's just it, we're in send territory so the 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 what i'm looking to see is can uh the teams that we're looking at to kind of gain some more points like the uh, aces and, and the sck and all these other teams can they avoid all the nonsense Mm -hmm. And they avoid all the nonsense uh, from this final game and put themselves uh, and get themselves into a good position to get some points. I like that. This idea of send it territory, because that is what happens if you're on the chase or you're down below or you want to try something new or try to earn a drop for the last chance qualifier. Something else that I think has been interesting for me is it, Falcons is playing really well. And I kind of I'm happy with that. And it's because I worry about them even in, in the next stage. If they don't have a good day one, they are not guaranteed qualifiers. They're not a GPT, right? They're probably, right. arguably, because of PGC, <laughs> the best team in North America. I would do everything I could as another team to keep them out of those top three positions in the grand final. So I think Falcons have to keep doing what they're doing and have good day ones going forward the rest of the year to make sure that people don't work to keep them in their place. You probably really are an Agent of Chaos looking for Falcons to get gate kept because they're not a GPT. I mean, but um, wouldn't you? If you had a chance uh, to keep them out of those top three qualifier positions and not have to deal with them at the next event, I know I would. That's big money. It, it is, but at the same time, I think that you need the best of the best from NA qualifying for these events with the way PGC points work and, you know, the fact that you might get extra teams out there. So it's that poison chalice, right? I do, however, want to say this, apart from, you know, Sonics have won internationally in the last 12 months, yes. But over the last few years, Falcons have been the most consistent team time and time again. And I, you know, I'm going to go geeky here with, uh, with it, but I don't think there's any team in America, in the Americas, and even globally, who do macro play as well as Falcons. They just... They just play the game, especially the late game, on a different level to everybody else with the way they move. Hmm. Late game macro, I can get on board with that. I do think gas cans with, in particular, I think that their macro play in North America is incredibly clean. Uh, and I'm curious to see if that plays out in the next stage. But I think you're right. They've put it together, but they've also... They've been living in a world poor where they have felt that they are the best team in North America for a while now and that they have not been given their due they have not been given their paychecks and they have not been given their respect and this feels like the year where all three might be lining up for them i mean i mean maybe look si you know we're not that far removed from sonic's winning an international event guys so like let's uh let's oh okay i'm sorry i'm bit, sorry but... poro lives six blocks from trey bizzle so I, I, you don't want to knock I, on your door I, just, I mean, am I wrong? Like, <laughs> what are we, what are we talking about here? Like, I, they, they want, they literally won PGS three, and we're talking about uh, whatever. I Regardless, said that. I said that those, to get you going. Like, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I said look, that was me fishing. But really, I mean, look, both of the te both of those teams are are clearly one A one B in North in in the Americas, North Agreed. America. 
uh and who is who is on top at any given time it just depends on the tournament could depend on the weekend depends on the day right like i i, I don't think you can i i you know i think that those two are kind of far ahead of everybody now i what i kind of yearn for is the days from like a year and a half two years ago when it was like four or five teams yes. that were all kind of mm -hmm. vying for that all the same sgk was up there right gas cans was up there all these other teams uh but you know it, it's kind of hasn't been that way in a bit is danny mon oh my gosh uh, bestia this this the bestia emergency pickup game has not been great today or in the last couple of games anyway no no it hasn't and this is ace's crew they need these points you can see that finna and zealot are on their way here to help out bestia will attempt to get those reses off as people will get back on his feet but for ace's crew this is the tournament and sharp shot does what he does so well uses the dmr to get the knock on the jam and now they will arrive they find a knock but people gets one danny mon trades it back but i keep saying this this is ace's crew's tournament on the line or at least their the grand finals on the line and silzen shuts down danny mon it's a heck, heck of a time for bestia to pick to kind of wake up here as uh and it's unfortunate for aces as they uh, like you said they had a fantastic day today we'll see if it ends up being enough the zealot now the last one knows exactly where draft king is draft king that's it's just on the chase at this point yep unfortunate you hate to see that for aces man it was, it, they've had such a fantastic day today i don't know if 56 points is going to be enough to do it uh if it is fantastic they, they've looked great they, if it's not boy they're gonna be a problem in the lcq i think that's the takeaway for me Gibson, that they look so much better today that if they just keep this going forward they might actually be better in grand finals if they go to mm -hmm. lcq because i think they'll get out of lcq without too much trouble if they keep doing what they did here what was today like a 49 point day something yeah, along those lines out. yeah um, something like that so that's that's good like if you if they can repeat that over the lcqs they will 100 percent make it through to the finals i think though that just to be, for your point aces finished at 56 they started at seven seven yeah so it was 49 points exactly i did i did i did the math thing so i just wanted them to know for sure like that is a that's a great day no matter how you yeah. slice it exactly that's a heck of a day so but, do, you know and, and the other thing is is like i don't know how much how much stock you could put in this game right because obviously this is kind of turning out the way I, I was thinking it would turn out where it's just a lot of really early game scrapping a lot of people sending it it's unfortunate that bestia kind of uh ran into aces when bestia is uh to be fair bestia had they had a great day that's a team that i was looking at coming into today to to really kind of show out and it's been pretty average to be honest now they do have a whole nother day to left to play tomorrow uh but uh we'll see if the, we'll see if the other eight teams will open things up for them a little bit here yeah tomorrow having tomorrow to play is such an ace in the hole for the group c teams and the group a teams because for group b this is it gatos chicos fighting with 55 block will take down keegan and now we're seeing Refray play for the three, but Glock's getting aggressive with the Dacia didn't allow him to vault out the door. That made things a mm. bit more difficult, and it just goes to show that vehicles in a crash can be a problem. Psycho pre firing through the smoke. But this is, there we oh. go, that's Gato's Chico's, but this is just, uh, this is a messy start, and the zone doesn't help. No, it, it really doesn't, and we haven't even, we haven't even gotten over to Ferry Pier yet, where there's about four teams all scrapping out for uh, maybe one or two boats here. Vanilla Good right on top of FT Frogman gonna be the first one to go down, but not flushed out just yet. He should be able to be rest here as Sam Crow just right nearby. Looks like the rest of Future is just trying to find different angles here. You can see uh, Terrazoka, nice angle there. Yeah, there is. He's gonna find Sonics. Yeah. Everyone was asking in chat, where are Sonics? Well, he's just been killed. Like, oh, Sonics has been here all night, folks. <laughs> well, now you, you're going to have some, some copyright infringement uh, stuff to worry about here if, uh, if they make it to the end there. But, uh, okay, PNG just going to go ahead and dip on out. I don't blame them. They just take the, uh, the ferry on to the next point of stopping, although Legacy is kind of camped out around that area. We'll see if they pay attention towards their south side but still a number of teams up on the north that have to make their way over we do have og once again 
uh, in the E pickup. And once again, that same compound that they played last game is available. Surely they'll go for it this time as well. STK get a point on the board against Future. Sam Crow will get taken. You spoke about legacy. If they're going to be waiting for the ferry, I guarantee the minute that that crests over the, round, the side of the island, they will be having a look to see if anybody is on it. So Penelope good will need to know they could be in a fight, but Legacy have actually fallen a bit further back to the farm. And here's Old Guard. They're playing with a three here, and I think that they're going, they got to go for the same position, right? It got them plenty of points the last time. They're on 37. Yeah, why not? I mean, it's, like you said, anything we could do to climb at this point, 37 off of one day, not too bad here. We'll see if STK can finish off what's left of future. They catch them kind of with their pants down a little bit, still split up from that earlier fight. So Terazoka still on the uh, the beach there, way off in the distance as the new circle does pop and it is gonna go to that military island and not gonna uh, give us the hard bait on C2 like we saw last game. So <laughs> that's uh, at least one good thing that these teams got going for them. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have at least that bit of knowledge that's 100% guaranteed to be the island, but I feel bad. Like, if you're a Group B team, you don't want two military island finishes back to back. Silzen will find a knock as OG land. They don't elect to go for that hill. Instead, they drop on top of Bestia, and Higuain has been dealt with. One player going for the res, but Bestia, five kills for them. What do you think of the body of work they've put together so far? Actually, we'll pick that up in a second, because STK are fighting with Future. A Shap. Still just holding that angle. I think they know exactly where he is. Uh, if I was Shep, I'd maybe move around a little bit here, but Purdy Curdy just gonna go ahead and make sure nobody peeks while Ayla gets the heal off. They're back on the move once again, sparking off in the distance. You can see on your mini map to the north, just repositioning. Fortunately for a future, SDK not able to take advantage of uh, future while they were very wide and split. And oh, we talked about bridge camps last game. Elevate setting one up this time. Yeah, open is. Yeah, I can't sniff it out. I think they sniffed it out. Yeah, they've gone. They've gone on the the actual steps and they've gone off the edge. So I think they've done a pretty good job at avoiding it. Richie B will pull up, but Punish. Oh, well, that is great from Vox. He gets the knock, and with that Panzer being in Pun's hand, that is so vitally important. Boy, he said you thought you were gonna get that free farm Panzer on us. Mm -hmm. No, sir. No, sir. Vox. Great eyes. Great thinking to make sure that they take care of that issue. Now, SDK starting to get in a little bit of trouble here. Shap does go down. Luke will get him, but Purdy Curdy now gets traded. So two down for SDK. Frogman out in the wide open. The sprays come through. There you go. Luke with the jiggle peaks. That's, uh, that's 300 ping peak ring right there. That's what that gets you. <laughs> STK is going to survive. For now, it looks like Terrazoka is going for the res on the Shap. Look, 12 is pushing up to get the res on the Curdy. So Sparking and Alo need to work quick. Deal with us. Do not take any casualties. Double blue zone need will be thrown into pretty much the right area. Luke's actually not going for Kurt. They're focusing on the three versus two instead. Green angle from Luke. He speaks on down. Terrazoka has been found. There's one player left, and it is Shap. And they've got to deal with him. They're going to know that he's in that corner. They're holding him out. And STK, four kills for them. They will get Kurt back up. But the question now is getting on to Military Island. And I don't know if you've got the map feed open, but there's a lot of free territory on that beach if there's any boats nearby. Sure is, but there's been a lot of teams over here already. I don't know if there's any boats even left available. We'll see. Gas cans on the move. Once again, they make it all the way to the south side of the island. They're cutting right through rats. Nobody from rats taking the shots just yet. The trap is set, but will it be sprung? Penta looking off in the distance has no idea. And Grant Lannis will put one right in the back of his dome. What do you think of the Dragonov, man? It's, it's so it's a, deadly. It's a filthy gun, man. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, uh, that is a filthy, filthy gun. I love that gun, but yeah, they, they probably should do something about it. Uh, oh, actually worth noting here, Legacy, while they're getting shot at by Penella Good, they sent VHZ up by himself in an E-pickup to scout from, a, uh, from above. So mm -hmm. interesting, interesting play there. 
from Legacy, uh, using that e-pickup as just a uh, scouting tool rather than one for repositioning. Yeah, it's not a UAV, it's a VHZ they sent up yeah. to see if was going <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh god, I hate it so much. <laughs> you like it though, Tito, you love it. Kizera loves it when players swing him like that as he picks up that knock and won't go for the flush because he put a good enough timer on it. He's got Daryl to deal with now up on top of the rock, but he hits empty on the magazine and he's forced to go back inside. So LFP will go and carry on the peak. He gets Daryl D down as well. That leaves it all kind of down to Warlock. Legacy, 104 points. It's going to be a couple more. They've just been excellent. They have been fantastic. I mean, Gizera really is just, uh, well, Gizera and really LFP uh, kind of trading back and forth here as to who the uh, the MVP so far has been. I mean, Gizera's leading in kills, Gizera, uh, or LFP leading in damage. Uh, but those guys have been, I mean, they've been playing like clockwork. They have really shown some fantastic team play. I mean, even just that, uh, you know, Gizera peaking and then immediately goes back in and uh, and is his spot is filled by LFP. Like that, that, that kind of stuff is just, uh, it's looking really, really nice for Legacy right now. It's clockwork, right? It's you don't you don't get that as a new team. You get that from reps and reps and reps and reps. Gas cans will send a repetition of bullets towards the spoon as Vox finds the first knock. Rap pushing in down the airport. Gas cans pretty much all but secure in the next round. Adam gets the knock oh, on the no. gas. Tune will fall to Richie B. And now Grant Lanthus. He was a lot of work to do. Man, gas cans are just such a scary team to fight, but that's a good nade. Oh. But rats are down. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to try to send it into these planes this late and rats. I mean, they they gave gas cans everything they could handle there. Bizzler should be resible and that's five kills now for gas. And they still have to worry about legacy and not a hobby that are still kind of hovering around on that south side. Plus 55 still in that hard compound on the corner, just taking pot shots over here every now and then. But down to just 38 alive, a lot different story this game on this military island than we had in last game yeah because some of the teams know that they're not getting through as well so they mm -hmm. kind of just threw caution to the wind and just send it yeah why not you know if you're not going to get through try to get some momentum going have yourself a good fraggy day zone shifts goes up to the northeast you've got falcons in a great spot elevate i think elevated probably not going to make it either but the only thing i will say poro is I think with the way Legacy have turned up the heat this last few games, that the cutoff threshold has maybe dropped a few points. It could be. It, it could be, and it's, it's, we'll see, uh, especially tomorrow when you have... Uh, I'm interested to see if Falcons can put two two back-to-back -back days of, uh, of high points like the like they had today together, or if they just come in a little bit more casual tomorrow. And then, you know, of course, got Sonics. Uh, that really started heating up towards the end of the day yesterday. We'll see if they come in hot or if they uh, if they sputter a little bit. But a, a lot of it is really just going to depend on those big heavy hitter teams. What are they going to do uh, tomorrow in that uh, in that pretty heavy lobby? I have a feeling that that Sonics will go big tomorrow. I think that if, we'll see. Yeah, I could see it. It's it's a Sunday, right? <laughs> Sonics do well on Sundays. Spam are fighting now with STK who have rotated into the circle. Spam I'd say with more than a foot into that grand final lobby. STK with a lot of work to do to make it in. RDS gets the opening knock. You've got Luke 12 providing Overwatch but Kerak is down in the low ground. Low ground. Kurt using this double grenade as well. He steps into the blue. Nice headshot dealt the other direction but Kurt's got to be careful here. Coming out of the blue Gabiri. Nicely done, as uh, while all that's going on, Bestia will take care of Old Guard. So STK now down to just Sparking and Luke 12. You gotta be down to two. That's a pretty scary duo to have to face off with. Kabiri has a grenade in hand, might go a little bit long. No, he goes right into his pocket as Sparking goes down. Now Luke 12 all by himself. Take a few shots down towards Karak. Does not uh have the ability to finish off the kill though thanks to brisa good shots from him and uh forcing luke to come back and heal yeah spam have been playing really well like really consistent over the two rounds they're on the 74 good day points for them, yeah yeah I, I think that uh they have pretty much got their way in the final mm -hmm. kill will be found by pichao who move up to sixth now with 57 points four players up
Still feel like they need a ton more to get themselves into that lobby, though. But that's a good start. And look at the shot. An arm shot onto Kerak, Kerak as well as they try to hold them out. And Yakuz has turned up the aggression. Okay. We'll see what Pichao decides to do. I mean, like, they, they are very wide split right here. They've only got a couple of guys. So they're not going to hard commit to any big fight with spam. If they can get something from range, they'll take it. But... Uh, other than that, they'll let spam kind of do whatever they need to do. Not a hobby makes their way into the south side of Millie and it pays off as the circle will cut down to the south and favor that military base. So spam and PCH bestia all have to find a way inside. I love these Millie circles though. There's so many places to find cover and hide and just ruin somebody else's day. Legacy can make their way through the planes, but gas cans might be... A bit of a problem for them, sitting somewhere in the runway. You've got not a hobby in a good spot. They've got, what, 19 points today, so they have a long way. Uh, a big amount of points to gather if they want to make it through tomorrow. Phase 5, though, 20 seconds until it closes. And I, I love the circle. Yeah, yeah, no, this is... I feel like the end game might be a little bit on the slow side here with 29 still alive. I mean, we, we've got the guys from the north side that has still have to make their way in. But there's just so many, especially with Billy, Billy Bates structured the way it is now, there's so many places you can hide and just kind of hang out. I mean, gas cans right dead center right now, although the mortar might make things a little bit scary. But uh, but yeah, gas cans, I mean, they, they've got a beautiful spot in the center of the zone. Uh, yeah, they just, just kind of hide right now. Nobody really taking shots at them. So we'll see where Bestia decides to go with PCH creeping right above them. Yeah, it's about time we've seen some mortars getting used. You, you can tell when Sonics are in the lobby it, or not, right? like there was many on the field today. Yeah. If Sonics were here, we'd have seen way more. It's just That's the true. way it is. Falcons, they have three players up playing inside of the melee base itself. Bestia, they've left Sharp out on the edge to keep an eye on what's going on around the the north side of the circle falcons are pretty much relaxing though where they're at nateo still has the arm he just needs that first head to appear right once he gets that knock you know the peach hour sending it right in on top of bestia i worry a little bit about peach hour though they've mm -hmm. hung out in this high ground position for a while now and they've been taking shots down down range at everybody everybody knows where they are and now they've got on their backs they're trying to make the push here while Bill Frost and the rest of Elevate see if they can deal with spam Shinboy is going to get spotted though by Brisa that's going to start things off here nice grenades from Vegas and maybe a smoke or two to slow things down yeah going to go for the res Bill Frost is making sure nobody from spam can push out that front door so there's a method to the way that they're making this push Bestia do get eliminated by 55 esports Huge. another knock as Bill Frost hits Pater with that need and RDS will move up to the top floor but this is big for Elevate now the problem is Pichao are moving this direction as well everyone's funneling here as we get ready for that next zone shift what's it going to be you can see Peach Owl working around the rusty sign, just kind of looking over in this direction to see if they can spot anything. Unfortunately for Elevate and Spam, everything was going on on the inside of C Block, but now Elevate creeps around and they are right in the line of fire, not from just PCH, but from not a hobby as well. So Elevate now kind of in that spot where it's like, okay, well, let's secure these points at least before we have to make this really, really difficult send. Yeah. They've got so many teams looking their way. Pichao, not a hobby, are there. You've got to deal with RDS, who is still playing up on top of the roof. You can see that he's prone. They don't know that, though. They've, they're have they only working with the information they have at hand. So it's time to focus on not a hobby. Bealefrost with a beautiful spray will find Arson. Turns his attention to back monster, but doesn't get the knock this time around. But that's the sort of opening engagement that you need when you're trying to force your way in. But Quicks with a good off angle hits him for 62. All right, not a hobby, just holding angles here. There's a, uh, oh. Elevate Belfast will go down Vegas and Shinboy still trying to push in. zolmok has been spotted out. He's going to spot Vegas though before he goes down with one HP. Won't even stop to get the flush on the Vegas. There he goes. Okay, Zolmox making sure he gets that point. Shinboy, back monster, almost had him. 
And you gotta figure they are just waiting for him to peek his little dome around that storage crate. Take a few shots and finish off Elevate for the day. Yeah, back monster. Look at the angle now. He's pretty far away. Sees Shin Boy. Has another look. Oh, he, must, he didn't get him this time. But they know exactly where he is. They'll deal with him. Their big problem is Pichao. Shilmox gets the kill. Not, not a hobby up to two. And I think we can all agree that is just confirmation that Elevate will not make it through to the grand finals just yet. Not through the front door anyway. They've still got the LCQs to work with. Yes, indeed. Legacy from the south side just trying to figure out how to get rid of what's left of gas cans. Fortunately, Adam has those happy feet and run around inside that ditch just a little bit. He's there, spots him at the last second. A few shots from the MK. Not going to be enough to find him as Adam managed to make the great escape out of the ditch. BL from Pichao spots out quicks, runs in behind the know the the building but i think that pichao they've got a lot of ground to work with now as well i think the pace will slow down just a little bit now with the amount of cover that a lot of these teams have to work with bl will peak though i think oh. that oh quicks is really lucky he's one hp Jeez. as that need almost took him down and that is why we always make sure we're fully boosted boys and girls as it keeps quicks alive for now and the rest of not a hobby trying to sneak over here find some more angles but nothing really revealing itself the circle will pop and goes down to the south so both of these teams will have to get on the move once again legacy still just gets to, to camp out on this southern side of the zone and just free farm shots onto everybody around them but look at the way they're playing too, Poro. It's a 2-2 two -two split with two players focusing on oh, east, yeah. two players focusing on the west, because they know that their south is clear, and they know that nobody's going to feed their direction from the north. So all they're doing is being a problem for all the teams on the edge. It's really smart play from these players, and it's the confidence that they're going with these peaks with as well. Well, the other thing, they're not being too greedy, right? They're not mm -hmm. saying, oh, if I if I just, if I move slightly forward here to this next hill, I can get an angle onto this guy. No, they're staying at the spots where they know that they're safe. They know they have cover. They'll just wait for these other teams to put themselves in a bad position, and then they'll take advantage of it. So 55 kind of in that spot right now. Not at all, oh, not a hobby. Arson is going to be spotted by Ikus. So Peach out, pick up another kill. Four kills so far for them. Zolmok spot from range nice shots from ikus doesn't get the knock they are getting closer and closer to that cutoff that they may just secure their spot in 55 esports are eliminated giving everybody one extra point as flood and snakers get some points on the board flood gets a good knock on the legacy but rello is going to get run over oh. by snakers and that could put a bit of a uh, a pin in the plan we don't like that but uh, fortunately, they still got time to get that res and get healed up and get on the move. Flood already just moving forward and staking out a claim here. Back monster will get spotted out by BL as the rest of Pichao just using every little angle they have up there. Zulmox will be taken down by VHZ and that'll be not a hobby down. And now we are down to our top four. Adam, the lone solo in here. But you got Falcons, PCH Legacy all vying for this last win of the day. 4v4, v3, v1. Adam is still prone, living his best life for gas cans. They're through to that next round. Snakers gets a great knock with that P90. That thing is just a menace in the hands of any player, let alone one of the caliber of Snakers, as he looks this direction once more. And you, you know, Pichao, they want to get the res. The zone goes against them. And look at the way Falcons are spreading now to take control of the north. Yeah, they, they are forcing Peach out to make uh, very fast, very difficult decisions. But fortunately for them, LFP is going to find the angle onto Snakers. And that'll put an ease to the pressure, at least temporarily. So now Peach out as he comes back on his feet, get him healed up, and they'll get on the move once again. They've got to make a decision, though. There's not a lot of hard cover for them to be found just south of their current position. They'll find Snakers again with BL and now BL. Ooh! Almost gets Rello, but Rello with the quick fingers will immediately turn onto him. Yeah, VHC gets a knock off to Nateo's oh, legacy dancing. Snakers is eliminated. 
now, so I'm, I'm assuming Rello will pick up the P90 <coughs> and see what he can do with that weapon. Flood just keeping tabs on everybody else, but Pichao are getting the opportunity to get everybody back on their feet once more. Four, four, two, one. And look at all, look at the amount of real estate legacy is taking over down here on the south side. They have the center of the zone. They have all points south. They are just looking for any angle at all. Pichao definitely in the hardest position right now as everybody knows exactly where they are and they have to make their way outside of these smokes to find their way into the zone and all of legacy is looking at them all of falcons is looking at them and adam well he's he's looking at the grass in front of him mm -hmm. <laughs> just just keep just smile and wave at him like a little lady little ladybug yeah like he's got a, he's got a need at the ready too so he wants to go out with a bang gizera catches out rel close so that one should be confirmed as a falcons drop down to one player left alive and Look, Falcons, they've still had an incredible day one. They're through to the next round already with their body of work they've put in. Pichau are getting held. A great utility dump. That should get one, oh. maybe two. There you go. Flood with the double. Nateo and Santa is, are alive. And you can't really go for these reses because if you if you get up to the crouch position, your head's going to be revealed. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Flood, Flood doing everything he can right now. 787 damage for himself right now. The blue zone oh. grenades will maybe finish everybody off. Nintendo, the only one that survives out of that, but he's going to be spotted by VAZ. And that's the legacy picking up. Actually, uh, I'm not sure how many of those kills went to who, but Adam gets spotted out as well. And now it's just collapsing on top of Flood. Legacy, they know exactly where he is. They're going to crash onto him. He's going to eat the blue zone damage, but that's two. Is that back to back legacy victories on military mm -hmm. circles? It is, and 23 points to boot as they have just put Yikes. together a great one. That's a real good rubber stamp on their two days in the group stages. We'll see them next. We'll see them in a couple of weeks' time for the grand finals, but we'll see Toffees right now. Toffees, oh. what are your thoughts on that? I'm saying if you want to build a legacy, that is the way to do it. Back to backs on the military. I guaranteed a good game. I'd expect it to be a good game for legacy again. But this is, I think, this puts them in a spot where I think at the end of tomorrow, they're still going to be a top three team, maybe even top two. So that's the conversation you talked about, Poro. I miss the days when it was more than just two top teams in the America's region. Legacy smells like it's time for three. Yeah. No, I mean, they look fantastic both days today. Uh, really, even in their even in their bad games, they were still getting points, right? Mm -hmm. And they were still managing to make it uh, f kind of far into the game. You know, they, it seemed like they managed to avoid most of the uh, the silliness. And, uh, and uh, like I said, Gizera absolutely balled out uh, in these first two days. LFP as well. Uh, it, it was it was a uh, all four of them really at different times uh, really displayed why they are such a successful squad. 126 points, Gibson. The nearest competitor, still pretty good. Gas cans is, I think, going to be coming around 86 when we see the scores. Uh, but that is just far and away stronger than anybody else in that group. Uh, and, and you just love, love to see it. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, Gas cans played really well as well. They I did. think, though, the, their style of play is really aggressive. And maybe in a grand finals lobby, they might need to tone it down just a little bit because I feel like Falcon, Sonic's Legacy, etc. would be able to take advantage of it. But in a lobby like this, have fun with it. Get as many mm -hmm. points as you can to secure your spot in the next round. And I also want to say something. You got to, you know, you said it's a two, you know, a top two in NA mm -hmm. in the Americas. Got to give some respect to remember the last two PAS events were won by the old Fumba roster and mm -hmm. won by SSG. Yep. So we have had a couple more teams put in and that's only going to make Falcons and Sonics and everybody else better because when there's more competition, the rising tide raises all boats. Absolutely. SSG finished yesterday with 37 points. Nothing to turn your nose up at. Absolutely. They're the defending PAS champions, as you bring up. So would like to see them continue to strive forward. Uh, and Legacy, I think, has been really looking good for a long time. And this is their due sort of coming up. So 23 points. Take it off that last game. The other story we have is uh, Pichao pulled what they needed to 11 points out of this match. The counter to that was Ace's crew also need to have a big game. They both went in at 52 to this match. And it seems like it's going to be Pichao that may be sort of that cut number we're looking at. They're going to be sweating tomorrow, Poro, because I think they come in at 67 after that game. Um, 
And I, and there that I think is going to be a lot better off than the Aces crew at 56. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, I was, it, like I said, it was really unfortunate for Aces that they ran into Bestia at the, the beginning of this game. Um, just, I mean, just the way it is, right? Mm-hmm. But I, they, I, I think they played fantastic all day today. Uh, we'll see if they're able to squeak something out. I, I doubt it. Uh, but, you know, they, if nothing else, they're going to be pretty hot going into uh, LCQ. You can say the same thing about Elevate as well. Yeah. So let's take a quick look at this leaderboard before we lose it. Remember, we are playing for top eight. Top eight, that left bracket group, goes straight to the grand finals in two weeks' time. Everyone else has to go to the last chance qualifier next weekend. We're predicting that cutoff somewhere between 65, 70-ish. Spam, not a great last game, Gibson, but they did manage to get themselves into that 76 spot. So it does, am I wrong to assume that that Spam Pichau is probably going to be where the wiggle room ends up being? I think Pichao might not make it because when you look at the teams below, Mercy are playing tomorrow. They're right. guaranteed to pass them out. Sonics are more than likely going to pass them out. SSG, they only need another day that's pretty much the same as what they had today. They'll pass out Pichao as well. You have STK that could make a run. You have Bestia who could make a run. I yeah. don't know if, if Pichao have done enough, but they've at least put themselves in the picture and it's a good sign for what they could do if they do end up in LCQ. That's a really good point, especially with Mercy making the moves tomorrow and some big teams coming up. I guess I got to ask, bro, do you think Spam is in a position where they can comfortably have themselves a drink and watch tomorrow, or are they going to be stressing the whole time too? <laughs> I don't know about comfortably, but you know, I think they can. <laughs> they, I, I think they can feel they can feel okay about it. I mean, I think they 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 did as much as they could. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's, it's hard to say, man, because even you look at yesterday, right? Like a- after one day, uh, right around average points was sitting right around, you know, 30 to 35. Like that's where most of the lobby was kind of sitting. And after today, really, it's kind of the, kind of the same. I mean, look, STK right around 30 points. That's not a bad day. Like wow. as much as we've been talking about like STK, oh no, like a horrible day. Like they just didn't light the world on fire. They didn't have right. the day that, that, that Falcons had, but they had uh, and pretty decent average day uh we'll see what they can put together tomorrow and see if they can secure their so themselves a spot they're going to need a little bit more than what they put on today obviously um but uh, it's all you know it's a whole new lobby so who knows how it's going to play out you know you brought up the idea that they may not have had the day the falcons had because who could have had the day that the falcons had besides the Legacy. falcons that was a yeah i still don't think they had a day that strong i mean falcons finished today uh, at 80 strong. 83 points. Uh, that is a huge number. I'll go in and calculate Legacy's day-to-day as well. But right now, Falcons were sort of the standout team in the lobby today. And as a result, we were like, let's get Rollo in here. We got to talk to him about Falcons, the new signing, and, and sort of the projection for the year. So welcome, Rollo. Glad to have you. Congratulations on what can only be described as a dominant day one. <laughs> Thanks. What's up, guys? What's Not up, much. What's up is is you guys in the leaderboards, uh, and I'm excited for that. Congratulations on the signing. That's a really big deal. Uh, I know you. something you guys have been hoping for for a while, so I'm glad to see mm-hmm. it. Now, I'm going to start off with the simple question, a little bit of fluff to get us started here. Mm-hmm. You got a kill today. You wiped a team using a Panzerfaust, and then you used a gun on somebody else, and then you got another one with a grenade. So I got to ask you, what weapon gives you the most pleasure to kill someone with when it comes to PUBG in general? Hmm. I feel like the pro player in me would say AUG. The AUG is just super satisfying to get a kill with and hitting like a long range spray or something. But the Panzer is just hilarious, man. And like, <laughs> there's no counterplay, so it's just hilarious. And, and I, does, does the entire, does the whole group in the Discord just have like a good laugh whenever you get one? Is it a, is it an energy booster for everybody? It depends on the environment. In a scrim, yeah, it's usually funny. And in a real match, it's like, let's go. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right, Gibson, I'm sure you've got a real valuable question, significantly better than my Panzer, but I had to ask. <laughs> Actually, the real question I have, being an esports player is obviously incredibly difficult. It, it, everyone knows that it is, particularly in, in titles like this where you're always trying to stay above the next, you know, the next best player. How much pressure does signing with Falcons and kind of securing your own, you know, short to long term future how much pressure does that take off you from a financial standpoint to just allow you f- to focus on just being the best version of you and playing the game? From a financial standpoint, yeah, it does add a lot of structure to my life and just security. But 
as a player, um, like regardless of, you know, org and whatnot, a long off season, a lot on, on the line this year. So it's definitely a stressful, it's, regardless of finances, it's stressful no matter what. Cause you know, you can always lose that. You can always lose that if you don't perform well. Is it my turn? I can't wait. Okay. Yeah. First of all, you gotta say, bro, uh, I'm, f I'm feeling the five o'clock shallow. I like this dark Rillo oh, era look, look. arc you that see, we're you going You see through. the white? Yeah. You see the white? It's, I have it vitiligo, so it grows in completely white. What? That's, oh, that's savage. That's deep. I, that's Poor, actually, Poor, do you have that actually too? makes it cooler. No, I don't. I'm just old. Um, <laughs> I was because, uh, you know, as IGL, right? You have a, you have a, you come in and obviously you're expecting them to do well. Then you have a game one where you just like go absolutely bonkers and bananas. How do you keep uh, like everybody on track for like the things that you guys are specifically wanting to do? Like, uh, whenever you know that you just had this bananas crazy game and like everybody's gonna want to go and farm kills now. <laughs> Well, I mean, surprisingly, we were pretty locked in and it's it's on us to hold each other accountable to stay in that, you know, that mindset throughout the day. Um, after such a long off season, you know, that kind of can be hard on the mental, yeah. not knowing what you're working for and still putting that work in every day. Um, but yeah, I mean, we were pretty locked in and it's just it's that's our job to just, you know, hold each other accountable in those moments. I love that. I love that. So let me ask you this follow up. I know that primetime mime time has been on the team for a little while now. Uh, he joined you right before PGC. There was some growing that had to happen. Now that you've had time together, you've had a couple of months to sort of train and get to know each other. What has he brought to the team that you guys are finding is really working? Uh, what's it like to have Mime sort of transitioning over? Because it's kind of the first big roster change for you guys in a while. Yeah. Um, he, the thing, the biggest thing he brings to our team, which has been a huge positive impact is like, he is so confident in making those really like super important calls. Like for example, game one, um, the game that we had a huge game, like um, we crashed the, the combo that we won out of. We were killed um, two of, I think it was Bestia with the Panzer. I killed two guys with the Panzer. You know, that's a super important compound crash and we probably wouldn't have done it unless he, he made that call and it's super important to do it while they're still split. And that's where his, you know, input comes in and it's super impactful. I love that, that, that quick moment call uh, is always nice to see. Uh, Poro, if, if, do you have a follow-up you want to give him or, or have you have we held Rello long enough? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I think we've held him long enough. I just uh, I just gotta say, I'm excited to see you guys play this year. I'm, I'm excited to see what you can do with another uh, year of, or another tournament of having uh, Mime on the roster. And now that you got the org behind you, it's, uh, well, I guess you had the org behind you before, but now with the new <laughs> org behind you, uh, excited to see what you guys can pull off. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys work. Yes, sir. Before we, we let too. you go, before we let you go, I got to ask you, give you a chance to do shout outs, call outs, a little trash talking if you feel like it. Uh, the mic is yours for a minute. Uh, sure, after I'll, a great day, you deserve it. I'll give some shout outs. Um, shout out to, you know, Falcons, big one. Um, shout out to my family. I'm assuming they're watching. Big shout out to my girlfriend. She's a big support system for myself. And then shout out to my guys. I love everyone. Awesome. Well, we love you, and I'm sure the audience feels exactly <laughs> the same way. Good luck. Get back too. out there and train, and, and give us another day tomorrow like today, because that was exciting, and we love watching it. Thanks for stopping by, Rello. Yes, sir. See you guys. What a day for the Falcons. They truly have come to roost at the top of the North American leaderboards. The question is, tomorrow, when the Sonics take the field with perhaps a chip on their shoulder after seeing the, the love that the Falcons got today, will that continue? Tomorrow... To me, Gibson, is a battle of the titans when we talk about A meeting C. Yeah, I think for C, they've got the points that a lot of the teams in Group C got the points mm. they needed today. But when you think about the fact tomorrow, it's going to be Sonics, SSG, mm. Falcons, Bestia, yep. Mercy, who have muscled their way into the conversation as well. It is going to be a very, very tough leaderboard. I don't know if 82, 83 points a day are, is feasible for any one team with a lobby like this one, which just means it's going to be even tighter. All I'm going to say is if you don't, if you've got any plans tomorrow, cancel them, cancel them <laughs> and get watching this broadcast. 100% I'm on board with that. Just You brought up the names and this is a reminder, Sonics and, and, and Falcons both in there, arguably the one and two, I won't even say which is which teams in the entire region. We've got... Uh, what was it? Bestia, Shoot to Kill, two teams with insane pedigrees who have the ability to put up massive days. Luna, Muscly Mercy, as you said, coming out here with some 
points already under their belt to make big pushes. I think tomorrow could be an SSG, the defending PAS champions who are irritated they didn't do better at PGC, ready to come in here and be even bigger legends. Tomorrow's going to be a walloping day. We're starting at this. We're starting a little bit earlier, but we had a weird day today because EMEA ran a little bit long, so we back at the normal the time tomorrow in the same place. Uh, but before we sign out, I got to do my final thoughts. Poro, final thoughts? Final thoughts. I, I mean, you've already touched on. It. I mean, it's it's tomorrow's going to be insane, man. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I'm I'm really excited to see if uh, some of these Latin American teams can really kind of step up. Legacy, obviously, the the big one. I think Luna is right there too. I mean, Luna put up 50 points in their first day. I, I'm excited to see what they can put off in this next day. Uh, it, it's it's. It's making things really, really exciting. And I think that uh, that top eight is definitely going to have earned their spot in the top eight by the end of this. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Gibson, final thoughts? Honestly, it was good to see a lot of the teams that aren't going to qualify for the grand finals through the front door at least put in a good performance on day two. You know, teams like Ace's crew, much, much better for them. I feel like it could be a lot of fun for them going into the LCQs. That's when you'll see teams maybe play with the fact, you know, I always say it's do or die at that point so we'll see the hopefully see the best versions of them and the final final thought i have is i just want to thank you guys for making my debut here hey. on on pas a lot of fun it's you guys have made it easy cannot wait to work with both of you again over the coming weeks thank you I, for, I it was all you i <laughs> forgot it was his debut until he just said that like they just mm -hmm. felt that comfortable so welcome to the team it's been great to have you guys it's been great to have all of you watching we're back tomorrow with another barn burner day of wild PUBG north america action because that is exactly what you get when you hang out here thank you so much for spending your evening with us on behalf of myself porosaurus gibson the cami d matrum and godsby as well as the entire production team and crafton we love you we can't wait to see you tomorrow and until we do play more PUBG.